All right. Testing one, two, three. Welcome, everybody, to another Boxing Podcast. Broadcasting to you live from the true north. This is your friend, Mr. BDA, flying solo for the moment. Thank you guys for joining us. Really appreciate it. Open phone lines Friday. You know what that means? It means open phone lines for the telephone if you're inside North America and also a StreamYard link in case anybody wants to come in. Uh, do keep in mind that we only have six spots for the StreamYard. It's not an open Discord uh, server today, but uh, we might be able to do it next f- couple of Fridays. Why not? But it is open phone lines Friday. So phone lines and the StreamYard link will try to rotate on the StreamYard as we go along. Fellas, before we get down to the fun, we have a lot to talk about. Don't forget that you can donate via the Super Chat feature during the stream. Keep the gravy train rolling. You can also donate via the Patreon page or the BDA PayPal page. But the most important thing, of course, and you know, already know what it is, is that you continue to support the channel. Continue to hit the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't already, and spreading the BDA gospel, especially in these times of darkness where people, more and more people seem to be straying away from the good flock. It is time for you to spread the word, so shout out to everybody. Hey, speaking of the flock, shout out to everybody in the chat room, man. I'm talking about Joel Upton Park, Friendly Fire, Joe Show, SSB28, Chris Gonzalez, Diego Bandido, shout out to Diego Bandido, shout out to Chris Gonzalez, shout out to Dead Game Boxing, Wayne Hennessy, Virtuoso, Wesley M, and many more people to come, I'm sure. Fellas, thank you for joining us. And speaking of the gravy train... See, we got One Foot Out The Door who donated. He says, no easy questions. Love the show. Well, thank you. Thank you, One Foot Out The Door. Really appreciate it, man. And I'm, I'm glad you enjoy the show. It's the least we can do to people for people out there. Um, so listen, without further ado, phone lines are open. You can call in. And I'm going to be posting the StreamYard uh, stream soon. I, I invite a couple of the regulars too on the panel, but this is mostly your show. You guys want to call in. It's your chance to finally call in and, and tell us what you think about anything. Because... The way we used to do it back in the day, three years ago, when we started the podcast was we would put a Google Hangouts link in the chat and everybody could come in. So we would always talk to somebody new every episode. You never knew who was going to drop by. And as time went on, we strayed away from Google Hangouts and we don't use StreamYard like most people. But I, I do hearken back to those old days of, of um, Google Hangouts where anybody could come in. And so that's, that's the spirit that I'm trying to capture with uh, with this type of episode so let's see what happens okay by the way keep in mind uh when you call into the show via the phone please do not use speakerphone and try to stay as close to you can to your receiver because or your transceiver rather because otherwise we have a hard time hearing you i think most people in the chat room can hear you because i'm boosting the volume up for that but i can't boost it for a panelist so just stay close to the, the the phone no, uh, like I said, no, uh, you know, vo- speaker. And oh, t- turn off your speakers too if you listen to the show. Otherwise, we get uh, uh, feedback. But other than that, be cool. Phone number's right there in the left middle portion of your screen, 1657-383-1147. And I'm going to be posting that StreamYard link right now. And I see we got Gonzalo too in the, in the, in the Discord here. Gonzalo, are you there? Hey, how's it going, Mr. BDA? I'm doing fantastic. Everybody. How about yourself? I heard you were having a little trouble with the uh, hired help over there in the Philippines, man. What's going on? Oh, yeah, man. It, a few things went wrong that one day. And I try to keep a, a consistent routine since I don't speak the language so people can pick up on what my, uh, not culture uh, necessarily, but what my routine is. So, you know, people can start doing what I do. You know, like I put a trash can so People can put the trash in the trash can instead of having to like dig it out the the, the dirt because I got a bigger home lot now and, and just little things like that and sometimes bigger things I that see. I have to keep a uh, a check on shit like I that. I got you. I got you. Listen, I think is it possible that these uh, workers are working with you and they're doing such a half-assed job because they keep looking at Lobito, at Lobito and your other dog, and they want to eat them, and that's why they're distracted. <laughs> I don't think so, <laughs> but maybe you never know. All right. Yeah. Listen. Let's be, uh, be, again. This is going to be mostly a show for the, for new people to call in on on the phone or on the streamyard, and we, we we're going to let them have their say. But of course, I want you guys to to jump in and 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 contribute as well. But uh, so far, no calls and no streamyard people. So I wanted to ask you: We have the pool of Joshua fight tomorrow. How do you expect that to go down? Because I see a lot of people saying 
there's two camps. One that says this fight is a mismatch for Joshua. But then you got the other people saying Joshua's fragile. Uh, he's going to lose any day now. In fact, Bob Arum, who I believe co-promotes Pulev, has just come out for the, in the last press conference. And he, <laughs> he was very bold about it. He said, uh, look, we're not... Uh, I'm not too optimistic about Fury Joshua happening because I don't think Joshua makes it past Pulev. That's what he said. And and then he said, uh, I'm talking to Tyson Fury about some other options because I don't think uh, Joshua's going to beat Pulev. Do you think this is just trash talking from Aram, who I believe co-promotes Pulev? Or do you think this is really true, that Joshua is fragile and he's about to lose any day now? He probably will lose, but not to this guy. I don't think he'll lose. To Pul Pulev's a solid dude. He's a little bit on the older side now. He passed up the fight, I think, three years ago because of a injury. I think it was to the rib cage. He will lose, but I don't think it'll be to this guy. He, I mean, he throws nice straight punches down the pipe, like a one-two, a one-two upstairs, and maybe you know a good jab to the solar plexus. Mm -hmm. And those are the things uh, that uh, Joshua's going to have to look look for. I mean, fighting. I guess that's what would you say, BDA? Seventy-five percent conditioning. Absolutely. So if. Uh, I mean, if, sometimes you can lose to a guy that that you, that you might be better, but he beats you just because he's got better conditioning. But, like, this guy's older, so I don't think that he, even though he's strong, I don't think he's going to have the the advantage in that department, so to, so to speak. I mean, I, Anthony Josh is a big guy. Yeah, he might have trouble down the stretch if, if Pulev attacked him to the body. But this is why I think that Joshua will knock him out because he don't want to keep him around, especially a guy that's hungry that's been waiting for the title opportunity for many years. He don't want to mm -hmm. keep him around. All he has to do is look for the straight punches, and he's not necessarily going to get hit with that Reese hook on the inside. I mean, Pulev also throws hooks. Everybody throws hooks, right? But they're not going to be so so fast that he's going to get caught with. Uh, he's going to get surprised with one of those that he don't see like that. I think he can tie up and clinch on the inside like a Klitschko. He's just a bigger guy and try to rough up Pulev to wear him down since he's an older guy. But he just, he just basically has to watch for the straight punches. And since he's got the advantage in length, he can, he can, he can take him to a, a fencing, a fencing a fight, you know, when he's right. fencing with him and try to get the better of him as far as that. Because he's going to stretch out his arm with that, with that jab to the pit of the stomach. Pulev will. He's going to, like, he's going to fence from way out there and try to touch him up to the body. So... He's got to come up with the stretch, with the with the game plan, and he will not come out. I think. You know, I, I've yeah, I've asked this question it. before. I've asked this question before: is why most heavyweights don't go to the body. Um, Pulev does try to go to the body a little bit more than most um, heavyweights, but I like just I'd like to like you said. I want to see him really work Joshua's body. I know Joshua's muscle bound type of fighter, and when you look at him, you think, okay, I'm not going to be able to hurt him. But every punch, look, if you're a heavyweight, you're a 200 plus pound guy. You can hurt anybody to the body. It might you might not drop him with one shot like Orlando Canizales used to do, but you can still create some damage down the stretch, especially which with uh, Joshua who has suspect um, stamina, right, Gonzalo? I mean, I don't see why not. Yeah, for sure. And, and He's you know, a big I, I, lumbering guy. I yeah. see we got somebody on the phone too, by the way. But I'm, I want to. I'm going to get to oh, no, drop down. But I just wanted to ask you a question too. People keep saying that AJ is is fragile. Because he's been stopped and wobbled before. But I got to ask you, the heavyweight division, who isn't fragile? I mean, Wilder's been stopped. He's been wobbled. Um, Pavetkin's been dropped a couple of times and hurt too. Fury's been dropped and hurt. I mean, like, this is a heavyweight division and it's boxing. Who isn't fragile in this division, right? There's, there's a couple of, of, of solid dudes like Marcus Watch, the guy that's fighting this weekend. He's a giant. I think I don't think he's ever been stopped. And, mm. and fighters like Joe Joyce that... Obviously, look like they're, I mean, they're just big and just strong. Maybe a Parker. There's just guys that can take a punch, but it's not to say that they won't ever get knocked out. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, man, these guys are throwing big, big punches. I absolutely, man. It's, it's, it, but, but I disagree. I think all of these guys, if you took, look at top, most of the top fighters in the heavyweight division, they're all, you can, you can look at weaknesses and fragility in all of them. I mean, it's, it's, I don't see anybody that's really, I mean, okay, Marius Wack, yeah, you're right. He's tough, but he's not a, you know, top 10 heavyweight. By the way, I see we got uh, Mark on on the Discord. Mark, are you there? Greetings. How's it Seasons going? greetings. Absolutely. It's going good, man. How about yourself? All good. All good. All good. 
Listen, we're talking about the the Joshua thing because I keep bringing this up because it, it, the, the, the narrative interests me. I'm looking at the comment sections in, in message boards and all that. Uh, Bob Aram also just coming out and saying he believes Pulev's going to knock AJ out because AKA he's fragile. Or I should say, quote, not AKA. What am I talking about? What, what do you think? Why, why is it about Joshua being fragile? Do you agree with that or do you disagree? I think like most heavyweights, he's susceptible to being hurt by anybody who's like 250 pounds swinging at mm-hmm. you. And it doesn't, even with poor technique, if a big fat guy at a Walmart runs at you and swings a punch, he's probably going to put you through a shelf. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> it's true, man. Yeah. But now, as so, to. Yeah, go ahead. So, do I think. I, I do think, like, he can be stopped and stuff like that. I think it's a tall ass for Pulev right now. Um, Pulev. Has been a consistent fighter through the years. Good job and everything. My whole my whole thing is, if AJ's fragile, so is Pulev because he's been mm-hmm. knocked out himself, and that was by Klitschko, but that was a few years ago. But most recently, he didn't look the best against Booker. He didn't look that good against Booker, and previously to that, everyone forgets Bogdan Dinu for the first three rounds was beating the crap out of Pulev. Wait, is his name Dindu? Yeah, Bogdan Dino. The Dindu, Romanian bin man. So you say he didn't do nothing after the third run? Uh, Dino? No, Dino didn't. Pulev did. Right, Pulev right. got back into the fight, but he had to fight fire with fire. If that's someone like AJ, who hits a lot harder with better timing, he's out of there. Hmm, that's interesting, man. That's interesting. Yeah, because Pulev... Uh, why, is, why are people so high? Some people, not everybody, obviously, but why are some people high on Pulev? What, what is it about him that... Is it because he gave Klitschko like about five good rounds or something? Is that? Well, first of all, he's consistent. Um, he's a solid boxer. He's got a very good jab. We all know that. He's got a good straight right to the body, which is a good thing to have against Anthony Joshua. But he does overextend his head when he throws the right. So he'll lean his head down and he's susceptible to the uppercut, which may be, in my opinion, Anthony Joshua's money punch mid-range uppercut. Um, that'd be a bad idea. So... A lot of people may be just high on him because of the Vlad era. I, I, I'm not particularly high or not high on Pulev. I've always just thought he is what he is, a top 10 guy who's solid. Will give you a tough fight at elite level. Um, but that was about four years ago. He's a different fighter now. Guys, do you think Jenny Sushi is going to be rooting against or for Pulev? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's an easy question. Against, I mean. no? I think maybe four, man. I think maybe she's she's still thinking about that kiss from a couple of uh, years back. And I think she's still obsessed with the guy a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Well, if if he loses, it doesn't matter. But if he wins, she can claim that she was more like she can claim like his stardom now because he beat Anthony Joshua. And it That's raised true. her profile. That's true. That's a good point, man. Now let me let me read you the quote here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what makes me laugh about Bob Arum, man. Uh, hold on a sec. Because he's a, he's a shit talker, man. You got to give, give him credit. Uh, he says, um, let me show it to people. And I'm sharing, by the way, the screen with you guys on the Discord. He said, I will greet this victory with the joy that comes to me. On the other hand, it will disappoint one of my other guys, Tyson Fury. I talked to Tyson on Wednesday, in fact. We were already making plans for other opponents. Fury agrees with me that there is a great, great chance that Pulev is going to upset the apple cart and beat Joshua. I was like, he's, he's the, why is it? Okay, why? Wouldn't he actually, as a businessman, wouldn't he actually want Joshua to win so that him and, and, and his guy Fury make a shit, oh, I shouldn't swear, a ton, loads of money in a mega fight, man? Like, why is he talking yeah, so he much? Yeah, he probably crap? knows that. But he wants this fight to sell as well, right? He That's has true, to sell yeah. this fight too, man. <laughs> he's a businessman. That's true. That's absolutely correct. By the way, we got uh, Recognize in the house. Uh, recognize, are you there? What's up? How you doing, man? Uh, listen, I'm asking everybody because w- the, 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 piggybacking up the... No, he just left. What the... F- how impolite. Um, all right. Meanwhile, we got Virtuoso on the stream yard. Virtuoso, are you there? But hold on. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. All right. Um, yeah, I mean... I feel like this is the last big fight for Pulev, man. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see him, you know, getting any much, you know, bigger pay this or this. I do think proceeds of of this uh, person is gonna go to Jedi Sushi's, you know, cash app. That's for sure. 
<laughs> okay, but <laughs> you know, why, why do like I asked the question? Isn't any everybody oh, to a certain extent in the top ten vulnerable? In the heavyweight division, like why, why, why do people keep saying Joshua is is he vulnerable in the sense that he's mentally vulnerable? Is it the chin? Is it the stamina? Or is it a combination of everything? He got beat up, so everybody sees. Everybody's got that image still that he that he took a beating in the first fight against Ruiz. Now recognize you've been around the block a couple of times. You know you've seen a little action. That's what they say. That's what they. That's say, what they yeah. say. What can a guy do? To fix that image, because you know he he running around the fat boy Luis, which was a smart thing to do. Nevertheless, people still criticize him for it, and it didn't help his tough guy image or or the the tough guy image that he would like to have. So, what can he do to to change the perception that he's a fragile fighter? Keep doing what what Lennox Lewis did, right? Lennox Lewis got chin checked um, by McCall early in his career, right? And became a world beater. Started going in there against every top opponent. Took some hits. Never got knocked out and still won the fights. You know, he fought Ray Mercer. Where he got hit a lot. And he took that well. Who else did he fight? Uh, Vander Holyfield. Vander Holyfield hit him with some good shots. You just got to keep, you know, doing what, that, what, the, what a guy like Lennox Lewis did. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. That's a great strategy right there. What does everybody else think? Yeah, that's yeah, you know, definitely. plausible. But uh, I think, I think to to me like uh, to revitalize, I guess that tough guy image. You got to knock him out, you know, make people fear you. You know, you got to rule the division with an iron fist if you're if right. you're unified. You know, uh, heavyweight champ. Well, that's the thing though, because if you were if you were fragile, wouldn't he have? Wouldn't he, we have seen that fragility against the guys like Brazil and Charles King Martin and um, you know, like a guy like Joseph Parker? It's like okay, he got dropped Look, against. I'll say this. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll say this. If you're truly fragile, Vladimir Klitschko knocks you up. That, hey, great point, man. Great point. Yeah, it's all those Povekin. It's all those Povekin. They both mm -hmm. will knock you out if you're completely fragile. You can't win yeah. those points if you're fragile. He got exposed, but he didn't get exposed for being a bad fighter. He got exposed to, yeah, there's kinks in the armor that people can exploit. But, I mean, Klitschko knocked him down and he got up. It must take a lot. For a big guy to go down hard and pick himself, you know, like the saying goes, the harder they are, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. He, mm -hmm. he scraped himself off the canvas. And Ruiz, one last thing, his style, it was very wrong, real quick hands. And he was still like able to get off his feet where the referee called him. So he got exposed to a certain limit, but he can only do uh, is improve from this point on because he's got taken to those deep waters and somehow has been able to survive it throughout by, by taking the rematch and not losing by getting knocked out in the first fight, but we saw how he can be hurt. Mm -hmm. so, but it, it, it seems like there's a few things more unforgiving. Well, actually, the, the only thing more unforgiving in boxing is quitting. Uh, and some people actually do feel Joshua quit in the first AJ, I mean, the Luis fight. Did he, in fact, quit? If he would have quit BDA, he would have stayed down in the first knockdown, but he scraped himself off the canvas four times. So there must have been some really, I want to do this, but I just don't have the solution in his heart. I don't think he quit. I just think he misused some of his, the, his, the tactics that he uses. I don't think he was in condition to continue for you. That's the first thing I'll say. Mm -hmm. I think he wanted to try anyway. Um, because if you watch AJ, you know the way when he was in that corner and leaning against the ropes when the referee stopped him and he's spitting right. the mouth guard out. He's used that tactic in the UK a couple of times, like even in the Klitschko fight, and he got the benefit of a doubt with the referee. But in the US, he didn't get the same benefit of a doubt. Huh. That's it. BDA, he was concussed. He was concussed. It's like that drunk uncle he having a party that gets beat down, but he wants to keep going at it. <laughs> Let me have a piece of him. Like that, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, wait, a, that's a good analogy. Wait, wait, when you're saying drunk uncle, are you the drunk uncle at the party, Gonzalo? That's what it sounds to me, man. <laughs> it sounds like that to me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I identified like really, really fast <laughs> with that. No, but it's true though. <laughs> I mean, you guys make excellent points. I recognize what do you think? Do you think he quit? Do you think he's got some bitch in him or? Man, I don't think he's quit. He quit. He was. It's like when you're getting swarmed on. You kind of back off for a second, like holy shit. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you. Doesn't mean you're running or quitting. It's just you're confused because you're getting you're getting hit with big shots and you can't stop them from coming. I don't think that's you know. I think that if he would have went down the third time, right, 
he would have just said, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I can't. I can't do it, but the, the fact that he got dropped twice and he got up twice, I don't think he quit. All right. Well, that's it. That, that's one. Way. Listen, I'm I'm trying to get all the opinions here because I remember when we, uh, you Gonzalo and myself were rewatching the the first fight or clips from the first fight, and it was quite clear that after the knockdown, he just fought the wrong fight. He tried to exchange with Luis to put him down again, and he fell into Luis's uh, hands those big fat hands of his and he just got tired too spent all his bullets so my thing was that they you know they have that saying that uh, that goes something like uh, fatigue makes cowards of us all when you're fatigued and a guy's whacking you over the head it is the worst place to be in the world and I think maybe Joshua felt tired he felt those shots things weren't going his way and it's possible that he said you know what I can still get up and g g keep going but I'm probably gonna get my ass knocked out or beat up. So he probably said, "You know what? Screw this. I'm I'm bowing out." And he gave the body language indicating that's one possibility. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm, you know, I lean into that possibility sometimes. Now you guys are saying that he didn't quit. Fantastic. He did get the win in the rematch. So now we look at the possibilities of what happens next. And what what happens next also is he's taking on Pulev. Does he need to look impressive in this fight to make a statement? Is, will it be unforgivable for him to fight again the same way he fought against Luis in the second fight? I think so. He'll get a lot of criticism. Not for me, maybe also, but from a lot of people for sure. Definitely in this damn YouTube age. They're going to see everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it's... From, from my perspective, it's like I see a lot of fans when it comes to fighters that they like. They'll set the bar really, like, in my opinion, low for them. And then you'll see haters set too high. So, like, Anthony Joshua's haters will be like, Pulev's an absolute bum. He needs to knock him out inside two rounds. And his fans are like, oh, inside 10. Me personally, like, I think somewhere, like, I think mid-rounds probably, like, five through seven. Right? That's oh. that's my own thing. Right. Yeah, I think he'll stop him five to seven. And I think he should stop him in five to seven. This is a faded Pulev. He should be able to, if he, if he is what he is, he should be able to stop him. If he does, like, if he goes the full 12 and look, does it like Ruiz and he boxes well, it's like, yeah, okay, I know you can box, but I, I need a statement from you. Because I, I, I don't want this to have to tune into pay-per-view fights to watch you dance around the ring for 12 rounds. Absolutely, I, especially if heavyweights. I, if, if I want that, I'll get a time machine and watch Mayweather. Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to throw me under the bus on this show, man. But by the way... No, like, I'm, so not, I'm not throwing him under the bus. No, because yeah, you are. I actually liked it. I liked it. No, I liked it. I liked it. Because oh, I'm actually complimenting Mayweather because I would rather watch Mayweather do it than him because Mayweather was better at it. Mm -hmm. That sounded like an Irish compliment to me, which is like a backhanded compliment. But anyway, uh, Mark, I, so Mark, <laughs> you're saying then that uh, from what I gather from your answer is, yeah, he does have to do it, man, right? Because like you said, old Pulev and, and he wants to be this big pay-per-view star. That ain't going to work out if he's dancing around a 39-year-old. So if, if indeed that does happen, let's say it's a not even a boring performance. Let's say he gets wobbled or something and it's a harder fight than you expected. How much credit are you going to take away from Joshua or how much credit are you going to give Pulev? Well, first of all, let's say he gets wobbled and he right. knocks him out. Cool. That's happened a lot in Joshua fights. It's happened a lot. That's, that, I don't care. Like, I don't expect Joshua, if he's aggressive, to be punch perfect. If he goes to full 12, if he does it because Pulev made it that way, I'll give Pulev a lot of credit and probably not much from AJ. But if AJ is just doing what he did against Ruiz and throws a couple straight rights every round and just mostly on the jab, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, I don't care. That? I need you know, to see some. And what you said, BDA, is probably what the fighter's thinking too. What we're also assuming the fighter must be thinking is he really damaged goods? Because after he lost, fighters are thinking to themselves, well, we got the blueprint and they're going to be more brazen to take that extra step to, to go to, to put it to give to, to, to do something to knock him out because he knows they know he can be hurt, the fighters. Mm -hmm. So Pulev, he knows maybe I can hit as hard as Reese. Maybe I'm not that fast, but I'm probably more heavy-handed. If I land that shot, I could get this guy out of here, or I can knock him down because he's been hurt in the past. I see. I see. Listen, that, that's an interesting psychological perspective on it. It's true. It's it's like um, with Deontay Wilder, probably. There's a lot of guys that are probably going to try to push him back now that the blueprint is out. The question is, can they pull it off? Um, I see also we got G-Boogie 
on the StreamYard. Guys, don't forget, uh, open phone lines Friday, so StreamYard is link in the description, or I mean in the chat room, and of course the phone number is up there. Jibu, are you there? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Listen, we're talking about Anthony Joshua and the fragility around his... his um, Q rating. Well, not Q rating, actually. I'm talking about his, his fortitude. People seem to think that he's a delicate little flower that's going to crumble any day. Now, what do you think about that? And what do you think that is? He's a pansy. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go ahead and say it, man. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nah. Uh, just like every fighter. Every fighter has his pros and cons. It's, it's up to the natural ability of the fighter. And, and I think his mental, he, he proved already in his career that he's mentally strong because he came back from ass whooping from, um, Majin Buu. And, you know, so mentally he's strong. Um, his attributes are there. He changed up his way of his style of fighting when he lost to Ruiz the first time. So, he can adapt. He's just like every other fighter in the world, you know. I got you, man. Just, I, and, and he's got firepower. He, he's got yeah, the firepower. He got firepower, power power, especially if you stand in his mid range, his mid range to close range. And Pulev is more a uh, long distance, and he's got the disadvantage because he's shorter than Joshua. So, yeah. <laughs> listen, when you see a guy as big as Joshua, and you know he can whack hard. Uh, People expect big things from the guy. No pun intended with the big. So uh, it's the same thing with Klitschko. That's why a lot of people dislike the guy because they saw this big monster and he fought like he was uh, a midget. So actually, that's not fair to midgets because I've known plenty of midgets that, that fight hard. Um, listen, let's go to the phone lines real quick. We got a f caller on the line. 314, you're on the air. 314, what's on your mind? What's up, guys? It's Wesley. Hey, I, I just wanted to say, to me, the more interesting thing is because I think Joshua wins regardless, but it's it's how Joshua wants to win. And if he wants to go in there and box to the victory, then you're looking at a new, like, dead age for heavyweights. Because people are going to say, hey, look, this guy is just going to box everybody now. And the weight he came in at, uh, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be able to bull rush Pulev. Pulev's no pushover. Guys, what do you think about what uh, Wesley just said? Agree, disagree? No. I agree. He's I got a box on, but he's also got a punch with them. Yeah, I, I will say he's he has a better attributes than Pulev. Pulev, eh, he, he, he got speed for the first couple of rounds, and then after that, he his speed diminishes, and then uh, Joshua have the better timing, and he's going to catch him. Well, there you I kind of disagree with that. I think Pulev's that. actually got better. I, I, I think Pulev's got better timing. I'm just saying if he doesn't get that guy out of there like I i'll watch regardless but like the cat like the more casual fans are going to abandon the sport again if he's not putting people out is what i'm saying uh screw the casuals and by the way mark just said that Pulev has better timing you you, you said you disagree with uh, the, the what's going on here there uh no 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 yeah no, no, mark, mark 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 i said mark i like, said mark <laughs> caller hold on let me yeah. let me get mark's oh, point of go ahead mark yeah, I, I kind of disagree with it because I actually think Joshua's actually the faster fighter and I think Pulev's got the better time. Which, the last time it was the other way around. Joshua's got better time and Pulev's faster. I don't think Pulev's faster. Pulev's regular based. Hmm, that's an interesting got faster hand speed. Well, yeah, I mean, Joshua's got good timing too, but I think what Mark's trying to say is that, that Pulev relies more on his timing where Joshua... He relies on his timing, but he also got the speed. So he's not always just necessarily timing. He's just throwing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what I said. Joshua has speed for a younger guy, but I'm saying that Pulev, his timing is a little bit better because, you know, the age, the experience, and he, he'll sit on his punch for a little bit to he can, you know, he lures you in. I understand that. Yeah, because like he don't have the speed. So he, in other words, he, he don't have the speed. He just relies on the timing because that's all he has. So he uses it more often than because I don't have nothing else to do. You know, I don't got the speed, so I'm just going to use the timing. Okay, I got a question. In terms of stamina, what do you, what do you think, if a fight goes a distance, what do you think that benefits more? I don't know. Because, like, you guys keep AJ. saying Pulev is 39. Well, okay, AJ, recognize. Yeah. Go ahead, recognize. Recognize. That's the reason why. And I like the last, at least for the last two fights, 
he's down to you know he's roughly around 240 so it, it it's it i could see where it'll give him more stamina you know i think that it, it'll benefit him i think he has the better stamina the, uh, the longer the fight goes i was I who was... kind of fights at a slow, low pace sorry bd that's okay man i was watching some of the uh, uh, joshua's instagram he looks about to be the same musculature i don't see him. has anybody well anyone around confirm? the shoulders bda you can see around the traps the shoulders he cut off some muscle i mean it still looks lean but it's not as uh as bulk as it was before right yeah, I like the him. first time he fought Andy Ruiz, he was at, uh, I believe, 250-something. He was too heavy. And that's why, that's why I was saying before he needed to lose weight. And then when he came in with the, with the weight loss, you saw how he was boxing. And he had better stamina. He, you know. Yeah. Well, Wesley, Wesley. So, what do you think? Do you think that the fight, if the, the longer the fight goes, it favors Joshua, or does it favor Pulev? I mean, Joshua, I think, is kind of a burst fighter. Like, you go back to, like, the Klitschko fight, you know, if, if he really goes for it, he's kind of spent for a couple rounds. So it kind of depends. On, but if you watch the Ruiz fight, that, that's what I was trying to say. Like, he's got two styles. He can come out firing or he can just box you slowly. That's and true. That's kind of, like, his two speeds. And they're pretty too. Hey, it's pretty two good speeds to have, man. So in case you're in trouble, he can always dance around. Like that's what he did against Klitschko. Remember in the first fight, he got tired. He danced around, got his second win, and then he took Klitschko mm. out of there. So that's one thing that that favors him. Now, Wesley, uh, we got to move on. But before we do, can you just say for me? Can you just say, you boys ain't from around here, are you? You boys ain't from around here, are you? No, 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 no! Come on, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> give a little something more, man. Come on, go ahead. You boys ain't from around here. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine your car breaks down. We don't imagine, take care of uh, people like you around these parts. Imagine your, I your car breaks down. Joshua, like, Joshua. If your car breaks down and some guy steps out of the woods and says that to you and he's got like a crossbow, you're in trouble, man. You are in trouble. Anyway, listen. Yes, to yes you are. Yes. Like, you, 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 need to, like, you need to get that thing turned over quick. <laughs> hey, by, by, by the way, Wes, right. I forgot to ask you, though. I forgot to ask you. Uh, so, final prediction then for Pulu Joshua. Points, Joshua. Points? Huh. Yep. I Actually, have my points too, but like up until that, 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 that confrontation. And, uh, uh, to hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let Wesley explain and then we'll get to Richard. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, Pulu will survive whatever rush Joshua has and uh, hug him as much as he can and. Uh, get to points and lose on. And I think Pulev lose on points, hugging. No, that's gonna be boring. Anyway, I, I, I don't. I don't well, I, I think I think that's what's gonna happen. I don't think he's gonna go through the uh, knockout of the year recipient like he did last time. Right, right. Well, listen. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your prediction. Hopefully, you're wrong because I want to see a good, good shootout. So uh, I, hope I, I do too. I know you do. I know you do. All right, listen, Wesley. Thank you for your call, man. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. All right, man. All right, bye -bye. Hey, BDA, hey, BDA. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. real quick. Just yeah. uh, I forgot to uh, super chat here from. Hold on a second. We got a super chat from. Ah, what is this? Hold on, give me two seconds here because I really do. I fell behind on the. Okay, shout out to Tony Boswell, who says uh, much respect to BDA and the chat. Happy holidays to all. Peace and prosperity. Okay, shout out to you, Tony, by the way, as well, and Wesley M who just put a, a GIF there. So shout out to Wesley M and Tony for the contributions. All right, Gonzalo, keep that. Don't forget what you were going to say. I wanted to get to Virtuoso first, and then we'll get to you, right? So Virtuoso, what were you going to say? You still remember? So yeah, I I, I, I was picking Joshua by decision, but then up until the, the, the confrontation they had in the face-off and the weigh-ins, I figured, like, you know, Joshua could be more inspired, you know, to really get this guy out of here sooner. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, probably, man. Probably. Uh, Gonzalo, you were going to say? Oh, no, no, I was going to say uh, with the Wesley uh, joke. It's like, he's Wesley, you know, his family captures you and takes you into the backwoods of West Virginia. Then <laughs> the only way you can get out, the only way you can get out, you have to answer a boxing quiz. And if you don't get it right, they're going to fuck you up. <laughs> That's a listen, it's a not all I, I like the guy's accent. That's why I wanted him to say that. But now you're, you're, you've 
venturing into deliverance territory, which is an ugly, stereotypical movie. You know, a lot of people like to, to complain about, oh, stereotypes of this, stereotypes of that. But when it comes to hillbillies, oh, it's, it's, it's okay to make fun of them, the mountain folk. I disagree. I think they're good. No, I tell, I, tell you, I tell you the accent sure you're got afraid a pretty of. pretty mouth. <laughs> I tell you the accent you got to be <laughs> afraid of. If you're in a big city and you hear, hey, yo, where the fuck you from? Oh yeah, that yeah exactly. That's even yeah, that's dangerous, man. I ain't from that's, around these parts. A BLM ain't gonna help you out if you know what I mean. If you hear that, uh, you, you th that then, then rec recognize. Then this is the next thing you hear. <laughs> that's that. It, that's all she wrote. Okay. The all second right. you hear metallic clicks, you better run and zigzag. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can outrun mm. this. Um, you can outrun those those thugs though, because they got their pants all, all, all down to their knees, Sorry. so they can't run after yeah, you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't got to worry about it. As long as you run in a zigzag or run yeah, the opposite <laughs> way, they don't know how to shoot. Oh yeah, that's true. They shoot with. They turn their hands sideways, like in the movies, and they, they try to no, shoot. They, they, what he does uh, when he's about to squeeze the trigger, he'll turn to the he turn behind him and then he starts shooting. Foul! <laughs> Look back. <laughs> turn back, uh, boy. Uh, uh, foul! G boogie. Okay. You know, I just wanted to point out, like a like a. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just say he'll kill his boy by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. How many times has that happened? How, how many times has that happened? A lot, a lot. <laughs> you know, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the famous, here's the famous uh, excuse. Yo, he had a gun too. He started shooting back. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, how many times have the cops heard that one, man? Oh, <laughs> he had a gun too. Yo, it wasn't me. Anyway, listen, I wanted to ask you, fellas. Now that we're talking about uh, other oh, some. The, the, imagine from the, if you guys in the Discord can see the, the the screen I'm sharing. If these two guys walk up to you, do you think they have guns, or do you think they're gonna try to poke you with something else? Uh, I'm getting the fuck out. I'm not trying to find <laughs> out. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right. Anyway, listen. I, I wanted to ask you, fellas. I think I think they're loaded in another way. I, you think they're what? Loaded in another way. Oh, geez, Luis. All right. You know what? Let's get away from these conversations. I wanted to ask you, fellas. Uh, by the way, everybody in the chat room, call in. Open lines Friday. There's a link in the description for the phone and for the stream yard if you want to jump in. Friday, and bro. Friday. Friday. That's right. I wanted to ask you, fellas, because I wanted to ask this the last time. By the way, we got Jimmy. I forgot, but Jimmy on the Discord. Jimmy, are you there? Jimmy. What's happening? Oh, hey, I Jimmy. How are you, man? So, Jimmy. Every day, hey Jimmy. It's a good day, man. Nah, Jimmy. I can barely hear you. It's not a good day. I can barely all right, hear you, man. All right. Let me let me let me call you right back. All right, fantastic. I heard, I heard exactly what Jimmy said, man. Yeah, I know you did, but you barely did. Right? I I speak Boston, all right. I speak Boston. Now, come on, get the fuck out of here. All right, listen. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you fellas this question on paper, because I know he's got to get past Fury to for the marbles, blah blah blah. But is Joshua in the ring? Forget paper, in the ring in terms of skills and talent, is he the best heavyweight in the world? No. No. He has the best resume yeah. in depth, but no, he's not. The most skilled. Yep. He's got a combination of a few things that maybe Fury doesn't have. He's a good boxer, but he's got better power in both hands. Definitely yeah, not the best plus, chin, and and maybe Fury. Well, obviously Fury the better boxer. Not maybe. Mm -hmm. Fury can still and fight. Joshua Fury has could a better be inside game than Fury. If Fury could be consistent and move the way he did at 270 pounds. He he's he's an overall better fighter than than AJ. He's kind of frightening. Yes, yes exactly. Totally agree. I think that I think that Fury will beat the shit out of uh, Usyk. I know some people might disagree with that, but I think he'll kill Usyk. By the way, Precise in the chat room, shout out to Precise, aka Fight Film. Fight Film. He says no. So I think most of you guys are in agreement that uh, Joshua is not in the ring. On any given night, he is not the best heavyweight in the world, and it's in, I'm, I'm interested in that because, like Mark said, you can be the best, you can have the best resume, but that doesn't necessarily make you the best, um, the best uh, fighter in in the division. And also, don't forget what Stu said in the last episode. He said, "Look, he believes Fury's win over Klitschko in his adopted uh, home of Germany is actually better than anything Joshua's done." Do you guys agree or disagree with that? Um, I agree. 
I agree with it. Um, I think, I think it's way better than anything Joshua has done. Uh, he dethroned Klitschko in Germany, um, and he outboxed him. That's the main thing. He outboxed him. Joshua outslugged him. Klitschko can lose in a slugfest, but outboxing him, not easy to do. And he kind of neutralized him. I kind of look, even though it was boring. And that's the mm-hmm. thing. Joshua's fight was more entertaining. But what Fury did was he neutralized an all-time great heavyweight. Completely neutralized. You never felt like Klitschko could really win that fight after five rounds. But with Joshua, you always felt like he had a chance. Interesting take. Interesting take. So, in other words, he didn't stop Klitschko, but because he's already been stopped, to you it's more impressive that Fury actually did something no one else did, which was take away his game. Beat him at his own game, essentially, right? From long range, yeah, fainting. And- from even even the tactics with the ring, the mental games, the whole thing that Fury did with Klitschko, to me, was really impressive. Really well, impressive. I mean- but it was, right, guys? It was a very boring... I actually, when I remember before the decision was announced, I was thinking, oh boy, since nothing of note really happened, I thought they were going to give Klitschko the decision. I, I have the sense I had the sense that, that Klitschko had been around for I don't know how many years, many title defenses, that it was time for him to get replaced. I don't know that don't make sense, but like I had the feeling that there was somebody that was going to come in and beat him. And, and Fury beat him in a boring fashion. So it was kind of expected to be, and at the time, I don't know if he was changing promoters or he was getting a divorce, but he didn't look like he was up for the fight. Similar like, like when Pacquiao fought Horn, I had that feeling. Well, wasn't that around the time that his wife was talking about she, she wanted to snuff their baby or something? Or was that afterwards? I forget. Abort? Not you abort. Snuff their baby? You said yeah, snuff? she had postpartum, uh, what do they call it? Postpartum depression. And she actually, oh, wow. I think she oh. fantasized. Didn't, didn't she, didn't yeah, she yeah. say like... Oh. Like, he got her off, I think. Like, she would rub one out thinking about murdering her baby. Or am I making stuff up? I don't know. I, I think I heard of it. I've not, I, I, I would have had a what shot. What are we talking about? Hayden Panettiere? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Psycho uh, women. What is oh. <laughs> Chibugi says psycho women. It's like, I'm not saying... Like, I heard that she had postpartum depression, that, that she, had, like, she, she wanted to... Like, like she didn't know if she wanted to live anymore or her, have her baby live. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah, it's like sympathy pains that women have, or they say to their husband, "Oh, look at me, I'm fat. I got a big stomach, and look, you look so perfect, uh, honey." Well, then after you get the baby, lose some fucking weight, you fat cow. No, wait a minute. You can't say that. She's upset. She had. She's upset. She had those little <laughs> elf hands. What did you say about Lesbos? No, he said she was upset that she had those little elf hands. Oh, well, she listen. Like, uh, she was like, kind of a weird shaped bitch, man. She was only four <laughs> foot eleven. You know what I mean? Seriously, she had those little fucking yeah. creepy hands. I mean, his. I don't know, man. Ugh. She freaked so me what out, you're dude. saying, Jimmy? She had Floyd Mayweather crack baby hands. <laughs> Uh, at at the time I was I wasn't bo- watching boxing at the regular I was doing other things I was up in TJ but look Clarisco got a little stagnant and I felt like man I just had the feeling that the people wanted to maybe like see, this is in my mind have like another heavyweight champion and then Fury stepped in and to where when he fought Joshua Clarisco actually got up for that fight he was the older guy but he had a challenge and he had something to prove and those belts to recover. So he says, I'm not proof to this young man who I am, Vladimir Klitschko. So I actually thought he mm-hmm. came into the Joshua fight a little more with a little bit more enthusiasm. Hmm. Right? Yeah, with more I don't know. Uh, like we say, con gana, con huevos. Con gana, si, con huevos, absolutely, man. You know, I wanted I wanted to ask you guys this is like if that, you know, that version of Klitschko would have fought, you know, Fury, you know, again, would he have been, you know, successful this time? Because looking back at that fight, I, I saw him, you know, fighting a bigger guy that he's never done before, and he looked befuddled. But I think, you know, he was inspired to, to, to fight him again. You know, that's when he got that, that rematch, you know, that yeah. uh, title shot against Joshua. That's what he was trying yeah. to prove. Yeah, you know what? But, like, like now that we're throwing uh, around Spanish expressions, it's also what, what happened with Klitschko in the Fury fight is he was he, está mamando. Se está mamando means he was fucking jerking off. That's what he was doing. He was just jerking himself while watching Fury. All right. Uh, sh- sh- shout out to Chris K for his contribution to Super Chat. He says, y'all forgetting you, King, the bronze bummer. Oh, come on, Chris, a.k.a. Undercoveration. What's the matter with you? By the way, I appreciate your, your contribution, man. Really appreciate it. Shout out to uh, Undercover Asian, a.k.a. Chris K. By the way, I, fellas. Yeah. Oh, somebody was gonna yeah, say I didn't forget about bronze bummer. He's still knocked out or what? 
<laughs> Come on, I'm, uh, hey, BJ, can you hear me now, dude? Absolutely, yep. Jimmy. Absolutely, not uh, loud and clear. Well, I was gonna say about Klitschko. Listen, Klitschko is an awful lot like. Well, it's that Eastern European train style. Like even with Triple G, it's all you know under that same umbrella. Where if you can, I, I best put it like you know when like a um, a fucking aircraft carrier jet comes in. If anything's the slightest off, right, the mm -hmm. pitch, the yaw, anything, they'll tell them to pull up, right, and then they'll they'll come around. Obviously, eighty million dollar plane. It's the same thing with those guys. The minute you set anything off, if their feet, I noticed that a lot with Jay, when I was there live with Jacobs. I saw it for the first time. He had to get that left foot in a certain position before he'd throw his right hand. Mm. And if you got him off that, even the slightest, he would have to come around and set up again. And Klitschko was the same way. And Fury knew that. He obviously studied film and just, just kept fucking with him, keeping him off balance, fainting, throwing jabs. The fight fucking bored me to tears. It took me three times to watch it because I fell asleep twice, swear to God. Because I was watching on YouTube and yeah. he passed out. It was horrible, but he did what he had to do. But anyways, that's my thing with I those guys. That's the biggest problem with the mm -hmm. um, same thing with the, yeah, um, I, the kid that Crawford I, 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 No, I just wanted to add, I mean, I remember saw that fight live, man, in glorious 244 p pixels, you know, over the internet. Jeez. And then later on, I saw the replay on, 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 on HBO, and I walked out in the middle of the fight. I just walked out because I was just bored of it. I mean, Fury just, just basically got in his head and, and just basically outclassed him and beat him pillar to post, man. But you know what? I do respect that about Fury, the fact that outside of the ring, he was able to get inside his head. Because Klitschko, I always got the sense. Now, this is just me. Maybe I'm bringing my own psychological baggage into this. But I always got the, the feeling that he thought he was better. Than, than his opponents in boxing. Like, oh, I got a PhD, I'm six foot seven, he's probably packing down there too. So he probably thought that he was superior to all these guys. And then once Fury came out and said, you know what, you ain't shit. I don't give a fuck about anything about you. I'm going to beat you up in the ring. I don't know, maybe Klitschko was bullied as a child or something and, and Tyson Fury reminded him of that. I don't know, why do you... Because, listen, I asked the question, is AJ fragile, which is what some people think. You want to talk about fragile? Wasn't Vladimir Klitschko fragile? I mean, if one guy was fragile in both terms of chin and mental mentality, mentality that it seems to be Klitschko, right? That's a good. That's a that's a good person to bring up. I don't think he was that fragile because he was able to come back from that, right? Right. That's true. And, 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 and I get what he knows. Like he was susceptible to getting knocked out. Like that could happen to him. But I, and I definitely agree with what you said about him thinking he's better than people. I mean, his brother, they're involved in politics over in Ukraine. They're ha hanging around with the oligarchs and the billionaires. Like if they were hobnobbing with their societies. So, of course, yeah, he, he, was, he, would, he would go slumming, make his money, and come back out. You know what I mean? Just the way he dressed, the way he carried himself. I totally got that impression from him, too, bro. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if he got to him, though. I think he almost thought he was kind of a clown. In, in a way, but he just didn't take the fight serious enough. I just don't think, I think he thought he was going to catch him with one shot and fold him. I don't think he thought Fury was going to be able to like, stay on his toes the way he did for that long. Because it is impressive. That's the one thing about Fury, for a man that big, how long he stays on his toes. That's I agree with you and, 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 and Jimmy, BD, uh, BDA, and I agree with Jimmy. Also, but I think this is also, the, the right hand... He is vulnerable, but the right hand is as real as it gets with, with Klitschko. That right hand is no joke. Nothing to mess around with. And if you combine it with the jab, that one-two, that's a deadly combination. But also, when he reinvented himself and was the one that was landing that right hand and jab and tying fighters up under Emmanuel Stewart, that's when everybody started saying that these giant of a heavyweights, the six five foot five and above guys, are going to be really hard to beat. Because if you incorporate that tie-you-up style with that one-two, that's when you started thinking, man, these fights are going to be boring. But it's going to be hard to, to solve this guy mm -hmm. with those two things implemented. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what I think was point. the deal with him, that too. That's a great point. By the way, I like how you said Emmanuel Stewart's name. You said Emmanuel Stewart. Like, what is he, from fucking Guatemala or something? What are you doing? But look, <laughs> My bad. It's, it's true. Um, Klitschko was a puzzle to solve, and boxing is not all about slugging it out. But I did like the pre-Brewster uh, Klitschko, the guy that actually went out there and, and threw combinations. And yeah, he got stopped, but I mean, nobody wanted to see him become the Ukrainian John Ruiz. I mean, I hated his style with a passion, that guy. And somebody was actually trying to get into it with me one time, a long time ago. It's like, no, actually, he's, he, he was entertaining. I said, How, why was he entertaining? And his whole thing was, well, it's because if he wasn't entertaining, he wouldn't have drawn so many 
people to his fights. I'm thinking, but it's that, that so many people went to see uh, Mayweather fight too. That, that like subjective, objectively, does does not make somebody entertaining. A, a jabbing gr a grab guy like Klitschko ain't entertaining. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure there's a couple well, of. Yeah. And by the way, the, what the Germans find entertaining. You know, in Germany, they don't have sitcoms. They got no comedy over there. They're, 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 uh, they've been shell shocked since uh, 1945. So let's forget about what the Germans like and fo focus on what normal people like. All right. Sorry, sorry Jimmy. Go ahead. I was going to hit. Well, no, I was just going to say, you have one. facts on your side, bro. The sport objectively went down greatly under his reign as heavyweight. That mm -hmm. was the one thing. If you had always had a popular heavyweight champion, you know what I mean? Like that could, the, the heavyweight championship and a popular one alone could keep the sport survive like no other class. He just turned people off. You just you didn't hear kids mentioning because there weren't fucking too many kids. And you know, I seen walking around with Klitschko T-shirts on. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah no, it, uh, it just it was it was it wasn't entertaining know, I, at all. You know, Jimmy, I, I wanted to add to that. It's like Mayweather gave himself way too much credit for saying that uh, he put heavyweight boxing out of business. That's taking way too much credit from Lennox Lewis and Vladimir Klitschko, <laughs> the Klitschko brothers too. Yeah. Well, listen, it uh, w with Vladimir Klitschko, uh, he he got the job done, right? Plenty of title defenses, a couple of uh, championship reigns, but uh, when it comes to actually showing, like he, whenever he got hit, that's the other thing is whenever he got hit, he would turn away or he would react funny. It's almost like he was relieving his stoppage defeats every time he got tagged up, and that was what I think he got shell shocked from from those. Um, Loss, KO losses or stoppage losses. I also wanted to bring something up about Tyson Fury that he said in 2015 before the Klitschko fight. He said that Klitschko was a devil worshipper. He says, to be honest with you, I know Klitschko is a devil worshipper, he told the Daily Mail. You can go on YouTube and watch him playing with magic and all that sort of stuff. Vladimir and all these rock stars and singers and these famous people. It's common knowledge that they're all involved in a cult group of Satan worshippers and all that stuff. A man who does evil things and worships an evil one, how can he win over a man who wants to do good things and preach good stuff? I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm, I like Tyson Fury. Now he says that, that. Yeah, but then he, didn't he go on? Didn't he go on to fucking snort a couple of keys and bang a bunch of prostitutes? I mean, it's well, he it, preached it, but he didn't. <laughs> he it sounds didn't, like he, he was walk, he, he talked it, but he didn't walk it. That's. It sounds like he was doing a couple of lines before he said that too. I mean, what the fuck? I I've never seen. Have you guys seen a video of Klitschko practicing magic? I'm curious, man. I'm gonna ch search wow. it while you guys. No, never. Ne no, that, that, that's just him trying to make him look, you know, self look good, you know. I mean, I, I, I kind of liked him, you know, when he started dressing up as a Batman in the press conferences, yeah. man. Mm. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't hear the joke, Jimmy. What was the joke? All right. Well, listen. Hey, I, I, can you guys hear me? BDS, I can't hear you. No. I can't hear you. Something clear. happened, though. Something happened. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, it went dead on me. Yeah. That, that, can I, you I'm hear me? That. Yeah, we can hear you, unfortunately. Now, listen, recognize. Hey, recognize, hey. are you on the job right now? <laughs> no, no. I hear a lot of echo. Are you in a mansion with a bunch of devil worshippers? No, no, I'm in the... Say again, I can't hear you. Are you in a mansion with a bunch of... Oh, wait, are you fucking with me or... No, I hear you fine. All right, you are you me? in a mansion with a bunch of devil worshippers? No, he's doing a free yeah. nation uh, ritual. <laughs> So, you know, you, something crazy happened last night, BDA, here. What People, happened? People, the vendors, the vendors, so I got this big home lot, and I covered the front. The, I put some steel bars, but I covered that with some, um, I covered it. So, so like, people sell from, like, one, uh, from, from one, from eight in the morning to five, like, vendors, they'll sell corn, there's so many things, and they'll drive by. But yesterday, 9 p.m., somebody was ringing a really faint bell. And there was, they, they said, popcorn, popcorn. I was talking to my wife here in this little kitchen that I made. And I guess they could barely hear my voice when they said, sir, sir, popcorn. Then my the, my wife's uh, relative was here. She's like, man, they never in 13 years that I've been living here, somebody ever come around this time of night after 5 p.m. selling things. So, like, after they left, the, the, the lady texted us when she went home. You guys need to be careful because that was really odd. Somebody's casing your house because who's going to be going there at 9 p.m.? saying popcorn and when they hear your voice they say sir it was just really creepy jeez louise that's a scary really weird. you should you should turn that into a creepy pasta or something man why not 
Somebody selling the BDA. The, 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 oh. whole, the, the strange tale of the popcorn of the midnight popcorn seller. That's a good uh, title for it. <laughs> Gonzalo, you want me to? Can you hear me? me? To send you a pro system. A pro system. Uh, uh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like you're going down an elevator like ninety. Can you hear me? All right, <laughs> this is plumbing. that's enough, man. Hold on, uh, real quick. Shout out to Tyson uh, jo, 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 Julio Ochoa who says Tyson Fury is of Jesus. I love him. The word is the world is of the devil. Tyson, though flood is of God, the one God, Jesus Christ. Absolutely, Julio. Thank you for that amen, quote, man. Amen. Uh, absolutely. Th you know what? You shouldn't even have donated. That quote was enough. Uh, that um, worth a lot more than five million dollars, man. But thank you anyway for the well, contribution. We'll, we'll, we'll take. We'll take it though. We'll take it. Thank you. We'll take it. That's right. We'll split it up and buy some Doritos or something. Shout out to Julio Choa. Uh, all right. So you know what, fellas? I finally found. I think I, I, this is the clip that um, Tyson Fury was referring to. It's a. It's a video of Klitschko like playing a magic trick a simple magic trick but I've seen those type of videos from hardcore Christians who say that any type of magic and that's magic with a C by the way the simple high slide of hand type magic that is demonic yeah so what do you guys think is this proof enough that uh, Klitschko is a Satan worshipper or do you think it was more of Tyson Fury just trying to get in his head trying to get in his head yeah yeah I agree well, then that brings me to another question that I got for you guys. They say AJ is fragile. Who Tyson in... Fury has a PhD in manipulation. Manipulation, but not sexual manipulation like I do. But my question to you fellas is, who can get inside right. AJ's head right now? Who's the biggest shit talk in the heavyweight division? And if it's Tyson Fury, can he get into AJ's head and make something happen? <laughs> Uh, my story right now, without a doubt. And I'll tell you why, too. Why I would think AJ could be fragile. Now, look at, take, you know, to zoom out, look at the big picture. The same time uh, Joshua got slept by Ruiz, fucking Fury steamrolled Wilder. Right? Nobody, like, a lot, most people didn't see that coming. I mean, I personally said I thought he was going to put him away in the fourth just the way he was talking. But, anyways, I'm telling you right now. Fury, it, what, that added so much confidence because I think he could have always knocked out. I think he could have had naturally a bigger, um, a higher KO ratio, which I think mm -hmm. it's 68%. But But you know his confidence in knocking people out has grown. He's, he, I bet you he's probably going to come in pretty much the same game plan. Why try to eke out, dance around, and jab with this dude who's got the power? And I think I, at the I, same I'll token, like he, he was just put away, so... He was just knocked out, too. So that's like, wow, okay. So this dude hits harder than I originally thought. I mean, so much has changed in which in the, the past couple of fights. It's I look at it like this, Jimmy. If big baby Gerald Miller can get into uh, Joshua's head, Tyson Fury will be living there rent-free. Hmm. That's an, that's yeah. interesting. What does everybody else think about that question? Do you think Fury can get inside AJ's head? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, like, okay, but like, yeah. let's spec, let, let's delve into it a little bit more. How do you think he can do it? Why can he say to get into AJ's head? I would say to him, remember that that overhand punch that you got hit by at the, at the top of the skull by Dries. Look at what I did to Wilder. I did the same thing, but I, it doesn't have to come from from underneath. I'm tall. I just gotta swing my hand and clip you at the top of the head, just like. Like like I did Wilder and what look at what happened to you against Reese. And, just call on you it. big dosser. You lost. <laughs> fat ball. I'd be calling it the dent maker. I'm gonna be fucking play I'm gonna put it one of those divots in your skull. Hey, what <laughs> if you think, I, think I, I think I think Fury is gonna be attacking Joshua in terms of his accolades. How he got the belts, man. It, it's gonna be like, oh, you you basically won my belts, you know, that I that basically I lost, uh... you know, on the on the scale. You know, right? So I'm gonna win him back. You know, that's a good one, man. That is a good one. Yeah, that yeah, the attack him, attack his worth as a fighter. Yeah, wasn't that the same punch BDA that that Joshua got hurt by the one that Fury landed on Wilder, a right hand to like the ear to that top side of the head, right side? Uh, yeah, it was. Now that you mention it, you know what? Uh, Fury could do though is 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 play some some like Max Cady type uh, 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 mind games with him. The guy he could say, "Look, people are accusing me of cheating against Wilder. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't." Joshua, you're gonna find out. 
you know, letting him know, like <laughs> keeping on his toes and saying, maybe I'll cheat on you. You never know what I got in my gloves. Could be, could have a lot of surprises up my sleeve, literally. What are you guys thinking? Would that be a good good one, good tactic? Well, no, because you know why? I wouldn't oh, say on. that publicly because it would be feeding too much into you don't ever want to give the LDBC and that, you know, you don't want to give that any any credibility, even jokingly, because that's all, you know what I mean? Like, I just would stay away from that. He, can, he has enough ammunition just with the, like the, you know, the other dude just said, fucking, dude, you've been just keeping my belt warm, dude. Nobody ever taken my belt from me. I've never mm -hmm. had a hand my strap over like you did, having to look at a man after he knocked me out. Oh, yeah, he could fuck with him just with that shit. All right, so, Jimmy, let's say you were Tyson Fury, all right? How, how would you go about it then? Like, Virtuoso gave us a good one, and do you have a good one? Ah, uh, fuck. I thought Come I just on. gave it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no you're really like with the, with the belt. I mean, that's pretty much for me. I don't, because that's not my personality, dude. I know you have oh, a lot in this, but I'm like, I'm no, no, I'm just not that dude. Like in a fucking, I'm a once I, if you're my enemy, dude, I'm just gonna sit and stare at you, and I work myself into a mental frother. I don't, I don't care. I just shut shit off. So that's just how I am. I don't like that fucking yappy garbage. My personal self, but right. So, no, but I I, all right, I'll think of something. Go to the next dude. Hey, okay. How about this <laughs> one, guys? How about if if uh, Fury goes up to him and says, you know what, Joshua, you look like a male cheerleader. Like this guy right on the screen, on the on the left side portion of your screen. That's I've said it before and I said it again. That guy that, that male cheerleader from the NFL, he looks like Anthony Joshua. Or rather Anthony Joshua <laughs> looks like him. If you guys look up at the screen, they you can both see do. him. Oh, they both do. No, yeah, the other you guy can looks go at him, brought him shaving his arms and chest. Go, please let your arms fucking here grow out that night. I don't want to feel like I'm rolling in with my lady. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Is it I think I, I, think I know what uh Josh, uh, Fury will say to Joshua, he said, remember when I saw you that day and that girl that was in your arm? No, that was a man, right? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, that, that's, that's really good. Yeah. That would fuck with me, though. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would not be 100% during a fight if, if somebody told me that because it would be in the back of my mind like, all right, he's probably bullshitting, but there's like a 20% chance maybe he knows something. And and that would screw up, would screw with my head, absolutely. Just, just have it to work. Fury... He's fighting Joshua like Muhammad Ali did Ernie Terrell. And then Fury's showing Joshua the, the magic glove. You, you see the patty? Now you don't. No, you see the patty? Now you don't. And just dab him up to the face. <laughs> hey, you guys are coming up with some solid gold here, man. Solid gold. And we're recording all of this, so we, we're going to be able to use it. Uh, recognize, you're Puerto Rican. If a guy like AJ is going around shaving his body hair, is that uh, a bit on the homo side? Or like, what, 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 what do you think? <laughs> That's all. Right. I mean, I do the same thing, so I can't really, can't really knock. No, but but hold on. There's a little difference between a little landscaping and just fucking shaving it all, isn't there? I mean, come on. I mean, well, I think like Fury shaves too. I, I can't really knock him because then I'll be dissing myself. Oh no! Nah, you know what? You should have just stayed quiet and not answered my questions because now we know the answer. <laughs> it's it's gonna creep us out for the rest of the night. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was muted. <laughs> all right. Listen. Uh, Anything else we want to say about... Hold on, let me see if I had more subjects about this. Partic uh, so is he fragile? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know what? We're done with AJ. Tomorrow night, I suppose. Is everybody, both on the Discord and on StreamYard, are you, so you're all going with AJ, right? Oh, yeah. yeah of course. He has no business in, like losing to Pulev. All right, there you have it. So everybody's going for... Uh, Joshua, and I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you're going with Joshua by stoppage, and that if he doesn't stop him, there's gonna be hell yes, to pay. Good. And by the way, if if Joshua looks bad, whatever, you know, it's boxing. Try not to give Stu a hard time on Sunday or Monday or whatever we do the show, because look, this type of stuff can happen to anybody. All right, so I want you fellas to be nice to Stu. <laughs> all right, that silences it all. You're not going to be nice. I mean, to do you think, I, mean, think, I mean, we're mostly cool with him, you know? It's like, you know, I think he's mostly behind, you know, Tyson Fury. He, he doesn't really seem to be that that all cozy up with Joshua, you know? He's, he's been critical, critical of him in the past, so. Nah, nah, you don't understand. He's, he's, uh, he's British, which means he will root for the Brit no matter what. I thought you guys had figured this out by now. How dare you? Well, it's true. I mean, what do you want me to say? How dare you? How dare you? 
Go ahead. P- Pulev is a Pulev is a good fighter, but like Walter P was saying, that Joshua got two styles where he can be consistent and fight you like that, but he got them bursts also where he's expl- the the burst and the explosive the, the explosiveness. Not everybody can have that. I mean, yeah, that's gonna gas you out. But not everybody can do that. That's just like another level that certain fighters have. And after you get that explosiveness off, that burst, yeah, there's a certain vulnerability that you can get countered that you exhaust yourself. But not everybody possesses that. So when you do have it, that's that one level that Joshua has that he's got to utilize uh, sparingly, not all the time, but just to like rattle the, the, the very uh, good but kind of basic uh, puller. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's an excellent observation. I'll tell you, my analytics on this fight is simple. This fight is a joke. If fucking Joshua <laughs> loses to this old dude, his career's over. It, it just depends if he knocks him out or not. And let's get on to the fucking Tyson Fury fight. It is, I mean, let's be honest. If he loses, I mean, we're talking about it because it's a fight. But mm-hmm. it's like, you know what I mean? It's like trying to talk up a Toyota Corolla. There's only so far you can go with it. You know what I mean? It's just... You know, it's, it's brand new. Come on, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean, dude? It's got fucking, it's got masks. You know, come on. It's got, it's got a fucking, fucking nice leather seats in it. Come on, bro. <laughs> okay, well, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Recognize. What do you have to do in Italian? Fucking, come on. Recognize. What do you have to do in Italian accent? Why do you have to do an Italian accent when you're selling, doing the sales, car salesman thing? Come on, come on. Go and buy this fantastic product. I'm oh, sorry to oh. my Italians, all right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. Hey, by the way. I love Italians. They're great people. Something we didn't talk about last episode was, or maybe you guys did while I was away, but uh, Spence versus Garcia does 250,000 plus buys. Um, a far cry from the reported 300,000 he did versus both Mikey right. Garcia and um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Porter. So I'm not I, wh- surprised. That's pretty good. From I, I didn't think they were going to do that. Well, to be honest. Can I, listen, I, that's one of the reasons I called in tonight to talk to you guys about what's going on with that shit. Bob Arab came out with a fucking interview actually before the fight. He actually quoted, cited his sources, like talking to different, you know, people in the industry who know. I mean, they, these people know and because it's deeper than that. And like he said, Bob said from the people he talked to, they'll be lucky if it does 120. And he said oh. straight up and he said, David St. Cruz was even worse. He said, this, they're full of shit, these 250s, 300s. And he says, it's only coming from um, Donald Trump of boxing media, Mike Carpenter of the Atlantic, because he was a paid PBC employee. Hmm. He, when, when Al Heyman finally burnt through all the money, he was on the verge of completely got out and left. So it wasn't for that last minute infusion by Fox. He was able to pull that out. But it's, it was an objective failure. Like Bob says, everything he planned on doing, getting boxing back off of fucking premium cable on a free TV is complete opposite. You know what I mean? It's now the, you know, pay-per-view, pay-per-view. And he said, listen, and he's the reason why he's speaking out about it is because it's getting old. Because now it's like a regular thing. And when the provider doesn't say what it is, there's a reason for that. Because they would have to pay tax. If they said, no, you know, we, are, we did 250 but they paid tax on 118 that You know, they could get fucking screwed for that. And on top of that, and like he's called it out for what it is. This is the PBC having him fight fucking in-house schlebs and then saying, oh, 300,000, 250,000, he's a star. Crawford only did 110. And, he, and like Bob says, it's bullshit. But now he's going to pull their card. If they want to negotiate, they're going to have to bring the numbers to the table. Oh. Not, not, not like something written, not, not written on the back of a napkin. Like he's going to have to show fucking tax numbers on how much those fights actually did. The, and now I was told the reason why probably the PBC isn't coming out and shitting on Bob's take or even Mike Carpenter as last I checked on Twitter, isn't even coming out, you know, going against Bob because they're probably like, fuck, if we push this issue, we might be able to negotiate with them and part of the negotiation. Okay. Yeah, great. We only did this much, but keep it on it. But if they start trying to embarrass Bob and say shit, maybe Bob makes it public, but I'm telling you right now, as God is my witness, that fucking fight didn't do 250,000. No fucking way. No oh. way, my, I bet my life on it. Well, wait a minute. So you're saying that if, so, so, okay, so that's very interesting to hear. So if they, because they always talk about Errol Spence being the A-side, do you, so is this something that if they do make a Crawford-Spence fight, like they're well, negotiating? Well, that's what, a, yeah, that's what A-side's based off of. It's all based off of popularity, what you bring to the table financially. That's how the whole A-side, B-side, that's how Canelo gets it all. He just, everybody sits there, whips their dick out, I knocked this dude, and he goes, blah, blah, blah. 
he's he pukes out his fucking numbers mm -hmm. and everybody shuts up at the table and he gets his diva head blows up a little bit more. That's when you go sit down those negotiations. The lawyers are going to say, all right, dude, you've been lying though. This dude hasn't been selling these numbers. I sell and, five million. What are you going to do to top that? <laughs> and then you got fucking, you, you know, your sycophants pumping out video after video, trying to create a narrative. I mean, it's like something that honestly, it doesn't surprise me anymore. I mean, we've seen it in the Jimmy. mainstream media. Put, Jimmy. Take a lie and they run with it. Yeah. Now, let me. I let Jimmy, me this, million, is my chest up. this is Bob Aram here. All right. I owe you my chest up. you my chest up. very much for Thank I you very much for explaining all this. Hold on, hold on. Give me sucking. five million up front, asshole. I want five million. Yeah, they, he shoots. I mean, like but... a bunch of different shit right now. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we continue, fellas, let's go to. Uh, I gotta like, juggle a lot of things here at the same time. Let's go to Give seven one. We got a phone call here, fellas. Seven one nine. You're on the air. Seven one nine. What's on your mind? Hey, hey. Who who's the guy that's talking about the pay per view numbers right now? That's Give me Jimmy, five brother. million before we speak. That's Jimmy. Well, actually, Jimmy was talking about the pay per view He's numbers. He's talking for me, Bob Arum. Jimmy. All right, hold on, hold on, fellas, one at a time, please. So, and I was repeating what so was that, read that, in that a conversation that Bob said, and Bob put up the numbers. And listen, dude, I know you're gonna sit there. Listen, before you go off and rambling, because I want to get my words in now, because he doesn't let people speak once he oh, talks. Oh, come on, man. Those, listen, it is what it is. All you're gonna be able to do is say, Mike Koppenjinger. A guy who works for fucking Al Heyman, who's promoting this fighter, is saying it. That's the only thing you got, is what he said. You don't have the provider. You don't have nobody in anybody in any capacity who would know other than what was leaked to their in-house journalist. So, yes, Adam has his fucking point of view, but it all comes out in the wash during negotiation. And there's one person not wanting to go to the table right now. Bob's the one saying, let's go to the table. He's saying in every interview, I think everybody knows that now. And they want the Pacquiao fight. Side note, I can understand why Al wants the Pacquiao fight because he wants to get some of his money back for the taxes. Okay, now go and tell me how I'm fucking stoned and it probably did half a million. No, hold on, hold on. Let's let Brother Who talk about it. Go ahead, Brother Who. Did, did you take that all that in? Right, this dude want to put work. He want to put words in my mouth before I even talk. Fucking oh. weirdo, man. Any, anyways, uh, the, so that's your source. Your source is Bob Aram. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, the the most prominent man in boxing. Let, let's not let's not forget the fucking contacts the dude has. You know what I mean? You're saying a Bob Aram like it's the guy who parks the cars. Short. You know what I mean? It's just your your fucking bias keep, keep is it so short, you thick. Said enough it's by insane. Now, not called in. All right, so Jimmy, I don't think he wants to hear anything more you gotta say, man. I mean, it, it yeah, seems no, like of course he doesn't. I you know really what I mean? Like, I yeah, because really he's don't. been following because he's been following with box in eighteen months. So let me shut up and listen to his fucking acumen. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got D, at the, hold on, hold on. We got D, D. You gotta wait for me to jump in and introduce you. Uh, thank you for being on D. All right, take it away, man. You want to say something? No, I just wanted to say hello to Brotherhood. What's up, Brotherhood? What you talking about there, brother? Uh oh. What's up? What's up, DJ? What's good? What are we Man, talking all, about, brother? All, all, all I'm going to say is, uh, this is all I want to say. If if Bob Aram saying uh, Mike Coppinger is reporting that Earl Spence and uh, I guess do you, you he's saying Earl Spence did way less than what Mike Coppinger reported. That's what you're saying. Now you you think the Charlos did less than what he reported as well? I don't remember, but I don't. I, I I know. I know he. Listen, it's already, He's already been caught. This isn't even that dude. Go follow if you're on Twitter. The question, go follow man. ego. The listen. Question. Go follow ego. He has it out there. He puts it out there. On um, um, that dude Carpenter, at least three different times has given um seventy five thousand, hundred thousand more. At the end of the day, when it all comes out in the wash, that's back when Showtime used to actually print it. So no matter what, you got to ask yourself, why isn't the carrier? How come Showtime isn't tweeting out like they did historically, forever, for years, have always tweeted out their numbers within three to four days after a fight? Why suddenly nothing? They don't even talk about it. They don't even retweet Carpenter. Bro, I would say this real quick, brotherhood, about Carpenter. This dude just came out with some fugazi information that didn't have anything to do with numbers not too long ago. Hmm. That dude credibility is in the toilet, fam. Not just on box numbers, but aperture 
I, he ain't one to follow. I wouldn't suggest nobody. Go to Box 24 or Box Scene, Michael Benson, something like that. Stay away from Coppinger because if you think that dude's credible, yeah. <laughs> I, I, this is, you got to talk about something, bro. Thank you, Gabe. I just, I just, exactly. I just checked this. It's, it's, it's well, athletic, you know, uh, um, article, to make a and he's, he's, he's. All right, go ahead, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that every, off, but... every number Coppinger reports is really lower than it, he's saying it is. It's a simple question. Absolutely. I would, I would go further. Okay, I would go. So that mean that would further. mean you said you can I? Oh my God! I'll call in to talk. Can I talk? Yeah, go ahead, brother. My bad. Go okay, ahead, then. Brother. Okay, then. I'm saying this same motherfucker reports on top ranks numbers as well. And your source is Bob Aram. So if your source is Bob Aram, that would mean Mike Coppinger reporting Crawford's numbers too high as well. That Mike, would mean he's Mike, doing Co even worse. Coppinger, than, can I Coppinger re reports him. Know, him. He doesn't. No, Mike, no, listen, bro. get your story straight. If you're going to oh, say something, be factually died, correct. Man. Cop doesn't well, come I'll out with those numbers. Later, Somebody else I'll does, and later, then he retalks about it. I'll call back later, man. Yeah, call back when you have your facts together, dude. I'm not. I'm not in the mood to sit back and listen I'm to somebody fucking talk bro. stupid. I'm asking questions. Y'all saying, Mike? Y'all say y'all won't even let me. Why don't you call back when you got your shit together, huh? Jesus listen, Christ, listen. Uh, he, he just uh, said. He just said. Uh, uh, no, because he makes he makes all statements right, of right. facts. Hold on, hold on, so hold on. This isn't this hold on, hold on. who fucking reports top ranked numbers. No, he Jesus doesn't Christ, report top bro. ranked all right. numbers. I hold on, he now. tweets hold on. them. Hold on, hold on. All right, everybody, everybody, calm down. Because I, I think this guy. I think I'm this really conversation. Of hold you, uh, on, brotherhood. I think this conversation <laughs> has the potential to be a nice, fruitful subject. All right. So let first of all, I think Virtue also wanted to say something. So while everybody cools down. Let Richie also say something. Go ahead, Richie. Go ahead. So yeah, so I was just I was just checking out the athletic article that Mike Carpenter put out, right? What the fuck? You, why does he just say okay? Go ahead, and then he starts talking. Brotherhood, you gotta come down, my friend. Go ahead, Richie. Also, I think you've been. So yeah, I'm like I, I, I'm just ch checking the language of the of what the words that he's using to sell, you know to report the numbers. Mm -hmm. He's saying that the the, the pay per view is sold in excess in excess of two hundred and fifty thousand miles now. Uh, call me like call me crazy, but when is two hundred fifty thousand uh, two hundred fifty hundred thousand pay per view buys is a is an excess number? Like when has the benchmark got lower? Since when? Well, since uh, we've lost uh, the, the 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 big pay per view stars. But I mean, listen, listen, listen. Jimmy came up with some exactly. facts here. Jimmy came up with some facts. And brother, who you 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 say you don't believe that uh, what Bob Iron said? Fine, it's Bob Iron, right? He's a promoter, Bro, and I didn't you, you, that. you're I correct. Didn't get to say anything. Yeah, you did say a lot, though. By the way, but now my question is: That's not what is, I said. Okay, so what's your what's your contention then? Because you you didn't make it clear. I yeah, because I can't fucking finish my. Thing. All right, stop complaining and uh, listen. There's no second places around here. You either take the spot or you get burned out. So go ahead, speak now. Okay, come on, brother. This is Bob Aram. Man, I don't speak. You done, bro? All right, if Mike Coppinger is reporting on top ranks numbers as well, and I've seen him tweet about Terrence Crawford's numbers versus Amir Khan and Postal, then if y'all saying every number he reports is actually lower than what he reports, then that would mean Crawford's numbers are fucking terrible. Does so, this uh, fucking dude have a head injury? Yeah, uh, I guess that's what I mean. Yeah, Didn't I just express this? I doubt Bob Aaron would agree. I doubt Bob Aaron would agree with that. So that Jesus like fucking, fucking Christ, Christ, dude. Will you pay attention? <laughs> Didn't I just, <laughs> Didn't I just address this? Oh, man. Jack Coppinger doesn't report all right, top ranked right, numbers. Fellas, fellas, Listen, I'm going to say it one more time. He doesn't report top ranked numbers. Somebody else does. He just retweets them or writes an article on what he has heard. He doesn't report those numbers. Will you stop fucking saying that? Look, look. Let me say this right quick. If Brotherhood's still on the line, look, Brotherhood, <laughs> it's it the reality, fam. All of these fucking numbers are inflated. I don't give a fuck what report or article you read. Because. Uh, especially like some PBC numbers. Only a select a few people are privy to the numbers, and some of them are never the actual numbers. The actual numbers are never even really reported. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand the some level. All of these numbers are inflated. I don't give a fuck what source you go to. For marketing purposes, these numbers are inflated. So if any of us say that Mike Carpenter 
been deemed incredible, uh, not credible on many different occasions. Fuck the numbers on other things. I, I found him with some fugazi ass uh, reports just from the research that I do. But hmm. all of these numbers are inflated, so we can easily say that Mike Carpenter's numbers are inflated. Yes, we can say every fucking report. I can comfortably say that about Carpenter. Well, D, yeah. oh, D, I was going to say, D, the only time the only time I believe it, like straight up usually, and it, it, they don't do it anymore, is like Showtime. They used to do it to the number, you know what I mean? Like 1,344, yeah, yeah. because, but, but again, they have to pay tax on that. So you know what I mean? It's like showtime reports. You know, no, exactly. I understand. You. I understand right. the difference. You're saying reporters. Yes, I'm just yeah, saying for the future. Really anybody who does that, but we never really get the numbers from the sources. You don't see the zone coming out with a fucking report. You don't see ESPN Plus coming out. We don't get those. So we only get in articles and reports anyway. Let's be honest about this shit. Right, exactly, and 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 the brotherhood kept saying, "Oh, does uh, do, do, does Bob Arum lie about his numbers?" Absolutely, that, that's what precisely yeah, they saying all too. Lie. Exactly. That's what so I'm saying they all lie for hey. well, marketing purposes. You think if they report, you know that brotherhood is just mis- mis- brotherhood just misunderstood. Watch. That's all it is. Yeah. It, and and but like the, the thing is like they, in that article with Bob, like they actually put out the they they wrote the you know, the different cable provider and the sources he has. And never mind, think about the people Bob knows, right? Be honest. I mean, he could call any fucking major cable provider and get the information himself. And Bob's like, listen, he's going to, he could fudge shit, but at the same token, he's not going to say something so bizarre that it's going to blow up in his face and make him look like a donkey later. I mean, he's got a prideful guy too. And believe me, there's a lot of shit about Bob that pisses me off. But I, when I don't know somebody, I go by their track record what they've accomplished. And again, I think the dude's a fucking, politically, I think he's a fucking douchebag. But anyway, that's side thing. But um, he's accomplished more than any promoter in the history of this fucking sport. That's not even, that's not even up for question. The connections this dude has is immense. And so when he says these things, he's saying it for a purpose. And again, because like he said in the interview, or he, I forget which one I said it, uh, maybe even a Benson retweet, one of the reasons he's bringing light to it it's not just because he's being like sour grapes, because 250 on its own, standing on its own, isn't fucking impressive. Let's just say that. But he's only bringing light to it because he's tired of hearing that's the reason why Spence needs to be the A-side, which I still will give him 55-45. But all I know, too, is if they don't go to the table, Bob won't ever see those records. So if they push it too hard, I don't know, maybe that might keep them separated, too. Because they have to bring that shit open the books up to negotiate. Yeah. yeah, you hear that, brotherhood? I got connections up the ass. No homo. You know what, man? I mean, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. you don't have all the answers, brotherhood. If you're listening, you don't have all the answers. You know what, man? I'm I'm juggling two things at the same time here. I think we got brotherhood back on the line. I think. Hold on, let me, because because he he got uh, frustrated. Let me talk to brotherhood. Let me talk. Oh, yeah. just go to stream, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good idea. But anyway, let's, I think we're having on. 719, you're on the air. 719. Let me talk to you. Bro, so y'all just said it. I, y'all just said it out your own mouth that even Bob Arum himself <laughs> lies about his own numbers. Yeah. So your source is a fucking liar. You saying your source is a fucking liar. Like so he could, be, he could be fucking lying about what he thinks Coppinger is doing when he reports his numbers. But no, we're going to... Hey, what's your source? It suits your narrative. We're going to be hey, what's your source? Brother, to be That's fair, to be fair, we said they all lie. You just admitted it, bro. But hold on, hold on. D is yeah, making a... Brother, what's the brother, brother, you just admitted it, Hold on, hold on. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Come on, come on. Hold on. D. You don't have no source. It's so fucking, it's so childish. Go ahead, D. Brotherhood, to be, to be fair, ahead. brotherhood, said that they all lie. We didn't just exclude Bob Arum. Mm-hmm. I said so it, before you before you got angry and jumped off, brotherhood, or whatever happened, Listen, fam, they're all inflated. These numbers are all inflated. You got to understand that. So if we say comfortably, Bro, they're comfortable. But, but D, D, before inflated. you get past it's that point, truth. before you get past that point, D, that's exactly what I was trying to say. I said if Mike Coppinger is lying about PBC <laughs> numbers and he, he's lying about top rank numbers as well. I'm, sit, I'm sitting here looking at the fucking tweet he put out about Crawford versus Khan. So you're basically agreeing with what I said but arguing with me at the same damn time. 
What's well, the, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, but, let's but, say... But, but Bernard came out and said he only did 90,000. When they tried to actually report that it was more, it was actually Bob who corrected people with the Postel pay-per-view. said, no, it only did 90. I'm looking at it, bro. You sitting here, you sat, after I got off the phone, you sat here and said, you sat here and said, Coppinger don't tweet about um, Crawford numbers. Uh, he don't report. Oh, my fucking numbers. God. You're looking at it. Oh, my God. That's not what I said. Brotherhood. That's not what I said. He said Crawford. That's not what I said. I said he does. He's, he's oh, dude, it's to him. Let me on, speak on, on, calm down, fam. So, uh, I know, I know, I know. Hold on. Yeah, all, right, all right, bro. Brother. All right. Brother, brother check, check it out. He said, what, what Jimmy said is that he retweets what he's heard. That's what he said. He doesn't tweet out the numbers because he doesn't have the number. He retweets the information he gets. That's what he, he doesn't he announce like, them. And can we still, can, listen, can we just, uh, let's approach this too. Mike Coppinger is a paid PBC employee. The motherfucker is a company man. For Jesus fucking Christ. The fact that they would have an in-house journalist tells you everything you need to know because he, the guy refuses to talk with anybody in the media unless they were a sycophant. And even then, the YouTubers, he still doesn't pay no mention to. He just a handful of guys, and Cop was one of them because Cop has been kissing his ass since the off the fucking word jump. So he he rewarded him with that with his little PBC fucking game shows and all this other shit. So I'm gonna trust the guy who's working for Heyman promoting the guy. And on top of like D said, this dude has been fucking, and this guy's been exposed as a fraud so many fucking times. He has zero oh, yeah. credibility to begin with. Never mind the employee. Okay, boss. And then he always says with his little smiley faces, sources. Okay, why don't you, who's your sources, Mike? Because you know who it is? He waits by his phone till his PBC handler calls him. Okay, this is the number fucking Al's telling you to go with. Okay. Sources, say. All right. All right. Let, 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 uh, listen, Wait, how, brotherhood. How, bro, can I ask a question? How is More questions, your geez. in-house journalist when he got all this interest in reporting other people other people's numbers outside of the PBC and he's not because he's you not think a boxing journalist them. would go he's very far just writing about the PBC he, he's actually inflating it for the other side too why if he was an in-house journalist why would he be inflating numbers for the opposition well, what sense does that fucking make Maybe why, he's why, why would an in-house journalist not write about other? Okay, so what would he do? Just write about the PBC, and all you have to do is just read his articles. Just listen. The counter, counter. Want to see hyper diction? I mean, uh, counter fucking bullshit with him. That dude ego has him. He has fucking tweets of the exact same numbers. Actually, Lomachenko beat Davis's numbers right across the board and cable right through, all across the board. Just the way Coppinger wrote it out disappointing when he talked about Lomachenko. He used phrases like disappointing and then fucking lower numbers for Davis going surprisingly well. Uh, it, it's just so fucking obvious what side his bread is butted on. But if you he can't said, see that, you Jimmy, he said you. that the, he, that the was an actual 250,000, bro. Like, that's not, that's not, that's no, a low not, number. Because I no, have a little brother at 400,000. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's, uh, yeah, again, the, the point of contention, it all started because we said, uh, Jimmy said that the, the numbers were fabricated. And then Brotherhood, call, you called in, you said, well, every, what about this guy? What about that guy? Let's stick to the facts here. Or what they're saying is our facts. 250,000. That's not exact. People were saying Spence was the next big, big star because he made 300,000 against, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sporter. Okay, Again. Yeah, 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 and Garcia too. I, you know, we're living in the era now where three hundred thousand means hey, pop up in the champagne bottles. That's a success where it used to be a million before. Two hundred fifty thousand. That's disappointing. Could the pay per view have performed better had they priced it a little bit uh, more economically or more frugally, or did they have no choice and have to price it at seventy five? Pop, pop, you know, a pop. To cover the net, to cover the paychecks, they had to. So y'all can't figure can't out why figure. a guy who has a welterweight who's been doing shit numbers would have something bad to say about the other what's way on the other side and them shit numbers huh y'all don't fucking register y'all don't register what's going on but Bob brother hey, we're hey, talking hey, hold on hold on hold on jimmy 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 hold on hold on hold on he's trying to jimmy jimmy he's trying no jimmy he's trying to he's trying to jimmy we got to stick to the subject Two hundred and fifty thousand. it it poor numbers i don't care about what crawford does we're talking about uh, Spence right now, 250,000. I don't think, Brotherhood, Spence is the big star that some people were trying to make him out to be. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Not. 
Tyson came out of retirement, blew that shit out the water, bro. But if you think about, if you think about everything, not bad at all. It is bad. Hold on. Hold on. The fact that it is bad. It is bad. Maybe the shit's that kind of number. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, hold on, everybody's hold on, talking at the same time. Hold on, well, brother. You, you're you're talking a lot. Hold on. I want to let recognize. I want to let recognize say something because he's he's been quiet for a while. Recognize. Go ahead, please. I wanna I wanna agree with. With Brotherhood, two hundred and fifty thousand, I think, in my opinion, is not bad. When you consider hmm. everything that's going on, that's not bad. Yeah, I, it's, remember, so. it's also easy to watch those fights without paying pay per view. They're easy. So, but yeah. then the question becomes: Then but, it, so COVID decreased the pay per view yeah. buys by fifty thousand. No, it shouldn't do it. In fact, exactly, COVID, bro. if it was an interesting that's, fight, yeah, it'll actually do better, bro, because people are bro. home. And on top of that, listen, you're the 850,000. Remember, listen, on, on top of that, too, Bob Allen, not to, and again, I think he could be a douchebag, but he was straight up honest about the Tyson Fury shit. Remember that big fucking thing with him and um, PBC? They were pissed because he announced the numbers. They were going to lie about fucking what Wild and Fury did. And he was honest. He said, no, we didn't hit our goal. That was Aram saying that. So, like, no brotherhood wants to sit there and say how much of a fucking liar Aram is. And he could lie, but he was on enough to, on enough to say, nope, we didn't make our fucking goal of 850. We, were no, sweet. No, we didn't hit it. Check it out, Jimmy. Uh, there's a flip side or maybe some elements that's left out because I actually kind of agree with brotherhood here, too. Um, and just the fact that you said, no, it's going to be more numbers because people are home. The element I think you're leaving out with that is the fact that people are home. They're not at fucking work, fam. So they don't have... Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I forget that. I forget about... The, know what it is, dude? I'm older and I've done it right enough where I'm not... Yeah. You know, the money thinks so. I, you're right. I'm not putting myself in the right uh, mindset. Look at, that isn't a factor. But even still, though, right? Jimmy I mean, bragging. Fury did 800. I'm not bragging, dude. Yeah. Please, come on. <laughs> don't too fuck I'm, I'm, I know, I'm not going to go it away from fucking... Suck a dick for beer money. Give me a break. Let's be honest, though. <laughs> this, boxing, this boxing with the people that's paying the money, it's the working man sport, right? Let's that's be right. honest about it. If the working but, man ain't working, hey, but you get 250000 in this in this environment, this atmosphere during boxing, I think that it's fair to say that that is pretty decent numbers. I, I would have to agree with Brotherhood here. Yeah, right, but that, that's question. hey, but yeah, listen, and that's that the that reason why they lied and said it was two fifty. If, if it wasn't no COVID <laughs> pandemic going on or anything, he would obviously have more pay per views and more people wasn't out of work, you know. So it would be right, right with his average pay per views, which is three hundred to three hundred fifty k. He did three three fifty with Mikey. He did three hundred k or three twenty five with Porter. And he, I'm pretty who? sure if this pandemic wasn't going on, it would land around Says that who? same low average three hundred k, which is good. If the, All right, Jimmy, Jimmy, let's not get into it. John, Jimmy, Jimmy, let's not get into it. Views back to back to back. Jimmy, let's not get into that. Jimmy, let's not get into that. All right, listen. Oh, yeah, 250,000, yeah. 300,000, 300, those are the numbers, you know, Marco Antonio Barrera and Morales were doing back in 2004. So I, I, all I'm saying is Errol Spence ain't exactly the biggest star out there. But if we're going to talk about him and Crawford, uh, you know, they're going to be battling it out in negotiation to see who the big dick is. So all I want is that, that fight to happen. I could care less about that. Uh, does over, that does over 500 easy. Yeah, easy I, I over 500. Hey, by the way, I'm Brotherhood, that's we, we got one million. Well, that, I don't know about that. Dance, I don't know about with that. The right dance part, yeah, with the right I, dance I, I agree. I, All right, listen, with listen, this is what I'm talking about. about it's over 500. Too much beer goes on. Even, even, even Pacquiao, even Pacquiao, when he don't have the right dance partner, I mean, in his latter part of his career with Broner, he didn't sell that much. But, you know, Spence is not on the level of Pacquiao as far as a superstar. He will sell when he got the right dance partner. That's true. Think about that. That's true. That's absolutely true. Now, Brotherhood, we got to move on, but Brotherhood, we got to move on, but anything else you want to say before we let you go? Yeah, like that's what I was going to say. If he had the right dance partner, then his views are only going to go up. And <laughs> actually, he did, he did similar numbers to Canelo versus Laura and Canelo versus Smith. Now, you see the two Canelo opponents, our, our name weren't, you know, they weren't huge names. As, as well as Danny Garcia and um, Porter, you know what I'm saying, or, or Mikey Garcia. They ain't huge names. But when Earl Spence do get that name, he could be doing numbers like Canelo. Who fucking knows? Mm, we'll this, see, man. But he's not, do, he's not doing like himself any favors when asked who's going to face next. Same type of numbers as Canelo. So all right. we, we just got to see. 
All right, listen, we got to move on, Brotherhood, but thank you for your call. Very incendiary, as always, and I will be depositing a couple of shekels in your account in, in return for that. Shout out to Brotherhood, man. Take it easy, man. All right, we got uh, Precise and, and, and Jay on the Discord. Fellas, are you there? And thank you for being on, man, if you are, if you can hey, hear no me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. What's going on, Jay? How you doing? What's up, Precise? Oh, hey, Jimmy, fellas. Precise, Jimmy, uh, D, how oh, you guys doing? Uh, they're doing great. Right. I'll answer for them. I'll, they're doing great. And let me just real quick, real quick, read a super chat here. It's from Mystery. Oh boy. All right. He says, Mystery gave a super chat. He says, Brotherhood sleeps with Johnny Boy is what I heard. All right. Come on. Listen. I, come on, Mystery. I appreciate your uh, donation, <laughs> but you, you don't have to stir the pot uh, more than it. It's already been stirred enough. All right. We got a stew going. You don't need to stir oh, anymore. God. All right. Fellas, thank you for being on. I, I, I got to drop out for two minutes. So I'll give, I'll leave you to it. Uh, you can police yourself. You want me to handle this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, but I'll leave you with a with a little quote here from uh, shit. You know what? Let me put the article so you guys have something. Don't to worry look about at. it. Let me take care of this. All right. Yeah, you, you take go do what now, you gotta do. This is an article from uh, De La Hoya. No, that's not the article. Not what the fuck? The, this is an article from Oscar De La Hoya who says that he's actually sort of he was heartbroken. That's the word he used. Heartbroken. <laughs> by these Canelo split. Um, I hope he's talking about financially hard. <laughs> he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and just, a couple of, uh, just a couple of quotes here before we go. He says, uh, you know, I've weathered the storm like you have no idea. I had trying I have had people trying to get us out of the game. It's a constant fight like where it was when Al Heyman tried to take over boxing. But we have a strong brand. We have Ryan Garcia. He talked about Virgil Ortiz, Jojo Diaz, Jaime Munguia. He says, you never really want to part weight uh, part ways this way it literally hurt my feelings i remember when top rank uh bob Arnold once told me never make it personal and i've tried to do that he says the big issue is many fighters have some experience is that they all whisper in your ears he's talking about people outside the ring and then he said the problem is fighters are so accessible so they some there's always somebody talking to them telling them the grass is greener on the other side he says the grant isn't greener on the other side and we've proved that over here at golden boy and uh, he's, but and this is where he sort of starts throwing Canelo under the bus. He says, uh, <laughs> "He says I love boxing. I'm a fighter first. Canelo is the biggest name in the sport right now. There are some big fights ahead of him. He's dangerous fights. You have to recognize that he's not a young thirty anymore. All the wear and tear, all the operations he's had on his body. So that already takes his soul. Okay, so now he's throwing, he's throwing Canelo. I know under, what he's I, saying. I don't think, uh, I, I, I don't think he's lying about that. He might be throwing him under the bus, but I don't think he's lying about that." That's the yeah. three uh, knockdown interview, right? When he was on the three knockdown room. He probably he no, probably no, no, dressed no, no. as a Question woman and got on his knees. What's he gonna do since Oscar can't buy the judges anymore? Oscar De La Hoya. He dressed as a woman and he got on his knees. Please, Canelo, don't leave me. Listen, fuck Canelo. <laughs> Canelo, Canelo is it, it, I, he's a victim of the he's the victim of the far left in boxing. Okay. He's not, <laughs> he's not invited. He's not invited. He doesn't realize it. it but, it be him. but, Jimmy, I will say this, Jimmy. I do believe everything he just said about his injuries and him being an old 30-year-old is all oh, yeah. true, bro. He's been, and what he meant by accessibility to BDA was, um, like, with other sports, like, if you're on a baseball team, a football team, I can't slip to mind um, the actual terminology uh, you can't approach the you know under contract. You can't have another team approach you. They can be sued. It's you know, and it's in every sport except for boxing. Anybody can they're accessible. You know what I mean? Anybody can be whispering in the rear. It's not even illegal. So that's so, like, um, I meant that too. Yeah, I, I just, I just read about that. that, that uh, no, go ahead, Virgil. You were saying? No, no. I just wanted to say because like they, the WBC, they're they're at it again, man. And this is uh, we blow Canelo. Uh, they basically passed over uh, Abney Witherum, and now they're going to make the fight between <laughs> him and uh, Callum Smith uh, <laughs> a, a vacant title for the WBC uh, Super Middleweight. WBC, <laughs> we blow, we blow Canelo. That's, that's those, big, man. those bigs that, those bigs, those bigs that 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 Canelo got somebody speaking in his ear. Those are digs to uh, Eddie Reynoso as well, because Eddie Oscar De La Hoya has never given Eddie Reynoso any credit. Uh, Eddie Reynoso had Oscar and Chololo Larios. He was a he was a champion for many years. That was his first world champion, and he was signed with Oscar De La Hoya. So Oscar De La Hoya and Eddie Reynoso they've had a, a partnership since a long time back, but he never got the credit. So those are digs because their relation is so close between Reynoso 
and Canelo that he can never drive a wedge between those two guys. That are, those are things that area rain also. So if I can jump in, sure. Go ahead, Jay. So uh, recognize you are the one that said uh, the the old thirty in regards to Canelo, right? Yep. So uh, history proves your point. Let's look at Chavez, thirty-one years old, eighty-eight fights, one fight with Pernell Whitaker, fell off the wagon. Yep. Mark Antonio Barrera, 60-some-odd fights, 30 years old, fell off the wagon real quick. Marvin Hagler started fighting once a year at that point and only had maybe three or four really good years of the million-dollar paydays before he lost to Ray Leonard, fell off the wagon. Yep. Canelo's 30 with 65 fights, you know? Yeah. I mean, these I, long I amateur think, careers can catch up on some of these guys, but the pro career, it's just a different story. You're fighting grown men at a young age. It, it catches up with you. Right. By the way, it's all how you do what, what's up, guys? Right. Hey, there were there were rumors of uh, Canelo having like these semi-pro kind of pro, like many many more fights actually that never got sanctioned. So yeah, yeah I heard he's that got too, a lot bro. of miles. He's got a lot of miles. Well, I mean, some some of these fights, like what happened with Barrera when he was young and he was underage, he lied about his age. But they just never un- they they were sanctioned fights with a wide age, so they're kind of nobody asterisked them, but they're technically asterisks because he was. He was only like 13, 14 years old, but they lied about his age. That when when Fredo Benitez, Benitez started, uh, he turned pro at the age of 15. I can yeah. honestly say he was done at 28, 29. He was world champion at 17 years old. Yeah, yep. 17 years old. And I don't think Puerto that could ever happen. He was amazing. He was. He was awesome. But, Everybody you know, after precise, that. Kind of- really quick, Precise um, has talked about this in his videos about... Canelo slowing down technically, like footwork getting a little worse than what it was with all the injuries. And I've and and I've been like following that, and in some of the way in, in some of the ways he goes about um, signing a fight, kind of last minute. And I think Oscar De La Hoya, you know, kind of like throwing him under the bus. It's just like true. In other words, he's spilling the beans on what's wrong with Canelo, basically. Exactly. But, I mean, yeah. in all fairness, when Floyd hit his 30s, he was coming with injuries also, but that's why he was only fighting once or twice a year. It, it, he let his body heal longer. And Canelo right. could possibly do the same thing if he picked the right opponents, which on paper, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge Mayweather fan, but I'm not a total hater. On paper, they looked good, but they, he knew that there were people that he could exploit weaknesses with, and he let his body heal for six to eight months at a time in between each fight, so that benefited him. But Canelo could probably, possibly do the same thing. You, you also have to reinvent your style. Sorry. You have to re- go, ahead, up, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Gonzalo. How are you doing, my yeah. man? Uh, no, yeah, I, 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 I didn't step over. the type of fighter that will, that will change your career. You know what I mean? And then the extreme case of that is someone like Brooke, who's obviously small and not as strong, not, not as durable as Canelo. So, like, Canelo's a tough dude, and, and he can take it. But, but it also has an impact. It's just much, much smaller. And he had two 12-round fights with Triple G. And that second exactly, fight, like, say what you will, man. He took a fucking beating. Golovkin I, took a I beating agree just with the that. same. But, but Canelo and took Cutting to make weight takes a toll on your body when you get older also. And he's been doing that basically since he was 19. But the, when, yeah, I, but when the I precise, listen, but what Precise is saying is 100% on the point. 24 rounds with fucking Triple G. That'll leave a mark. And I, and yeah. I noticed, you want to know something? I noticed, look... I, 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 there's Triple G fans that have a kind of like a hatred towards Canelo, but the same is, is in reverse, the same way. Uh, Canelo fans do have a hatred for Triple G because Canelo hates Triple G. He hurt that because, look, you got to understand something, and, and, and it's out of the realm of boxing. It goes into the, the political side of it. Triple, Triple G, uh, excuse me, Canelo was given every single chance to clearly beat Golovkin. He was... My opinion, he was enhanced to the gills. Oh, right. While Triple G had to play it fair, okay, and that fucks with your head, especially if you're how you say it. If you're one of these type of guys that have a lot of the machismo in you, you're saying to yourself, "Wait a second, they mm. gave me all this shit, and that's all I could do is go twelve rounds with him, lose one, and get like sort of a gift decision in the second one." That fucks with your head, bro. Hey, he might be slowing man, down before, a little bit. Before we continue, sorry to interrupt, man, because I just came back. Uh, did Guerrero get info? Have you gone already, or no? He just left. Sorry, but... Go ahead, Gonzalo. Go ahead. He might be slowing down, but he's still thirty, and every great fighter, like 
every every good if you want to consider Canelo great, that's up to everybody's personal point of view. But he he's reinvented himself. Like Foreman, Muhammad Ali. I think what Canelo's doing now, aside from working really hard on that on that neck, which gives him like a gallant neck, really strong, mm-hmm. he's really been very mobile with his waist. It's really hard to connect them cleanly. So I see him adjusting the style to be more successful, where he's not relying on his legs like that much. He's just like dancing in position, like dancing in your car. Fucking, you're not moving your legs, but you're still moving around. That's, That's why a good so point. Hard to, to hit. Yeah. That's an excellent point. Now, my I wanna, question I want to add to that. I want to add to that. You know, you know when um, he used to put out videos of him dancing, right? But he's usually moving like upper body. He doesn't really move his leg. He tried it out salsa, and he's like, he's he's just moving his upper body. That, yeah, like a that's woman. all he's doing. Like a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen. I wanted to say something real quick. Um, you guys were mentioning the knees and that he's got bad knees or something. Maybe that's because he's been hanging around with the lawyer. But if I like got a question in oh. terms, because we all know he's using, we all know he's he might be using like most top fighters. He might be on like recognize say supplements. Do you think the fact that he's a short dude packing on so much muscle is that could could that be playing havoc on his joints or something, or am I exaggerating here? Well, he's not putting on that right. much muscle, bro. <clears throat> it wouldn't affect his joints. He's okay. not putting on that much. No, it, no, it would but- be. It would, It'd be other ways it would affect them, but not joint wise. You're on the money, well, right? BDA. With all the cardio. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. All all the, the, Jimmy, the don't, gal- don't the drugs like change his chemistry and shit and fuck up his joint chemistry? Joints chemistry. Well, what, well, I, yes, but it, well, see what happens with what steroids is when it, most injuries occur is if you take so much oil, like depends, you take a lot of estrogen, and your mm-hmm. muscle becomes faster. I mean, stronger, so much faster than um your white tissue is used to it, and sometimes it just snaps it. Um, what it does do is cause some author, um, bone hardening, and it can cause um, some joint problems, but that's usually associated with the heavy lifting associated with the juice. Uh, okay, that's interesting to know then. Okay. Uh, I got a question g- for Jimmy on that one. Yeah, just Hold on, let me just get a little right. info in here before. Yeah, get a little, go ahead, man. Okay, sorry, guys. Uh, hey, I just want to say you're right on, right on the money, BDA, because... These guys, they take these uh, performance-enhancing drugs, and then their bodies, they, they, the muscle memory, and every, it throws everything off, and their bodies break down. We've seen it. We're seeing it with Canelo, I, and I also think uh, Marquez, his knees. I mean, it seems like the knees are one of the first joints to go out after heavy uh, steroid use. A-Rod, um, A-Rod, a baseball player, He that's, the, that's, that's what like kind of destroyed – his career, like towards the ending. I mean, he was old too. But one of the things that, that fucked up A-Rod's uh, uh, career, the steroids, um, hmm. that fucked up his body, it attacked his knees. Because he was, uh, was kind of lifting heavy, uh, doing a lot of workout, you know, a lot of work- workout regimens with weights when he was on roids. That's interesting, man. Yeah, but those guys usually inject, like, th- th- it's all about muscles for them, right? More than the boxers. Well, I mean, the same, right, same yeah. thing for any athlete. If you, well, if you're speed, you're trying to get speed, recovery, and uh, right. aggression. Recovery. Yeah, in aggression, like a, a halitestin, that's a steroid that does absolutely nothing but give you crazy amount of fucking aggression. Barry Bonds, any his weight. Knees. It doesn't do any water retention. Barry Bonds it, missed one whole season when he got older and he was, like, everybody kind of knew he was on roids. It, it was because his knees, it, so he had to get surgery on his knees. Hey, what about Canseco? Did the steroids turn him white, or what was that? <laughs> no, Canseco, Canseco was just, I, I don't know what happened there exactly, but he basically was letting it known what he was doing, and he just got banned before he broke well, down. Yeah, he, oh, he I'm sorry, it, it wasn't Canseco, it wasn't Canseco, sorry, it wasn't Canseco I was talking about, I was talking about Sosa, Sosa, Sosa yes. Talking about <laughs> oh, no, Sosa, Sosa just yeah, broke he, down. He <laughs> believed <laughs> himself. But yo, like, people, people will call me a, a Canelo hater, which is a bunch of nonsense. Like just just be objective. Look at it for what it is. In mm. the first fight with Triple G, Triple G pushes him back, and there's instances where Canelo is running or he's shook and all that stuff, right? And then he gets popped a couple of times and uh, comes into the, the second fight looking great. Triple G complains about being tested 17 times or some shit like that, and all of a sudden, Canelo is pushing Triple G back. So is the logical conclusion that Canelo got so much better in, like, what, a year and a half or something... Or was he just much, much stronger and the other guy weaker? And to me, the answer is fucking simple. I'm just a boxing fan looking at the shit, analyzing it for what it is. And people just get into you know, their fucking feelings. All right. I, I think I Jay, to Jay had you, a, what, what, what was that, what was that thing that, pop, that pill he popped in the weigh-ins before the, you know, before the rematch? 
It's probably a salt mm-hmm. tablet, so they yeah. don't get cramps. Oh. I went to a gym. You dehydrate like that, you can pop salt, salt tablets. It'll just keep you from cramping. Oh, sorry, real quick. Right. Jay wanted to ask Jimmy a yeah, question. Yeah. Jay, go ahead. It hydrates you. So, so, Jimmy, you're really big with uh, the the training side of uh, of muscle recovery and everything else like that from our conversations. This drying out that he's had to do, that takes, if I remember correctly from when I was doing what little activity I used to do in my life, uh, that also plays uh, hell on the muscles and the joints and the ligaments. Could that have something to do with some of his injuries? Because he's been, like I've said before, he was cutting weight a long time at 154. And when you get to be 30, you know, you may be able to do it when you're young, but that damage still catches up with you when you get older. Do you think that has a factor with some of his inter- in- injuries? I, I th- honestly, the, the injuries, I think, with boxes, like most athletes, it's just the constant pounding, dude, hitting gloves. It's not a natural thing to whip your body. I mean, they, when they hit pads, even just because they have gloves on, it's a false sense of security. You're still putting a ton of pressure on your elbow joints every time you hit a heavy bag and your shoulder joints. It's not a natural motion, not a natural thing to do. A lot of these guys used to run on cement which is a terrible thing to do too, oh, but yeah. they're poor kids and they, they don't have access to good tracks. So that starts it out at a young age, bad on the joints. And then um, when you lift weights, I've talked about before, athletes in the 60s, 70s, they'd drink beer and smoke cigarettes after the fucking game, but they didn't have half the injuries, especially the white ligament injuries because of the, it just makes you stiffer. You know what I mean? And, and just more, you can crack easier. No, poor kids don't have a track to run on. Why don't you just go to your backyard like I do in my mansion and build a track there? See, we just stop feeling sorry for people like that, uh, Jimmy. Come on. All right. He's cutting weight. He's cutting weight, but he's not six foot four like Callum Smith, or he's doing it like Errol Spence, who's also 30, going down to 147. He's five foot nine. He's like my he's my height, and I'm fat, and I'm like 185. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's got muscle. Yes, he's got muscle, but he's not having to have to cut a whole hell of a lot. Hey, but Gonzalo, I've seen you yeah. hitting the. I've seen you hitting the bag. You have a, like a strong back. Did you used to do a weightlifting back in the day, or is it, you just have a naturally strong core? A little bit, a little like eight months. I did weights. I, I, cho- I told him everything he knows. <laughs> Gonzalo yeah, got a classic what? wrist. <laughs> <laughs> you can never forget too. He's a fucking ginger with fucking freckles, man. Those they have like retard strength. They really. Okay, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you talking about, man? No, no. What are you talking? He's not lying. He's not lying. BDA, you got to look up this this documentary that Gonzalo 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 White child, right? You ever heard of the red-headed black kid? Hold on, hold on. Somebody's you revving up the their red, engine. You ever heard hold of on. the red-headed black kid? Yes. Mm, he the is the craziest black. motherfucker you ever want to meet in your life. <laughs> I heard that. Go story. meet a red-headed black dude. He is crazy. He is insane. I don't care where he's from. He's a crazy motherfucker. I, I guarantee you that. Malcolm X is a redhead. Yeah, I was going to oh, say. Okay. Yeah. Y'all see how jacked up fucking carrot top got? <laughs> yeah, but he was yeah. He was, he was, he was BDA. BDA, real, well, BDA, real quick story. Wait, real quick story. When I grew up in Low, right, tough town, fight town. It was this kid. We were probably only like twelve, thirteen. It was this redhead kid, right? He would ride around on his bike all day, making siren sounds. So we kind of thought he was retarded, but he was a fucking white skinned freckled redhead kid woo, 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 up and down the street. So to make fun of him, and um, one day, dude, he got off his bike, dude, and he went. I'm the Hulk. And he screamed. I'm like, this kid's a fucking mental pit. Dude, he went and whooped these four kids. Like, just throttled them. Was whipping them off this dimension. We're like, holy shit. Corky's got skills. This dude, like, licked these fucking yeah, kids up. Cool. And it, it and it stuck to me ever since that fucking day. Wait, wait, wait. Was that, the guy, was, was, that, was, was that the guy you said he beat up a bunch of cops in an apartment once? Or is that another guy? The rest? Oh, no, no. That's Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan's got freckles and Irish boy freckles, too. Yeah. And what was, uh, wait, wait, I mean, wasn't the rapist in your story, the guy that was like six feet eight or something, wasn't he a redhead too? No, 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 no. That, that oh. six foot, t- that was the guy Mickey punched, the fucking guy who owned the brick of Holly Davidson. No, I'm talking about the rapist. You oh, no, no, no. And then it was that other fucking, yeah, the redhead kid. No, you're 100% right. He was a redhead. O'Brien, he killed well, his own best friend at 13, stabbed his best friend's mother 91 times. Jeez. But he's a retard or something. Listen, uh, I think we may be onto something here. About the uh, the redheads, I, in the beginning I was laughing, but now I'm 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 actually I got my hand on my uh, chin yeah. like in a pensive pose, and I'm thinking, hmm, what's going on here? 
You know who's also a beast? Our souls. The redhead. You know who's also a beast? Ronald McDonald. <laughs> yeah, <it's> facts. <laughs> Ronald McDonald. <laughs> nah, Pennywise. Hey, BDA. From, uh, BDA. Did, did you know? Did you know also when you were talking about people going into what well, Delahoya going into Canelo's pockets that he was like mm -hmm. really sad? Did you know that that since you don't follow the belts, but anyhow. Uh, that they're putting the belt that they took from Benavides, uh, they're 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 putting it. It's vacant and, and they're fighting for it. Yeah, I heard that. Who called it? Who called that WBC would blow Canelo? Who who called it that? I was listening in when somebody said that. That was me. That was <laughs> that's a pretty good one, man. Now, if I if I can say something here, I went into the cesspit that is uh, boxing scene. Ninety seconds. Oh, hold on a second. The cesspit. <laughs> Hold on. All right. uh, yeah, I, I was in there because I wanted to read some comments about that, about what the lawyer said. And some guy goes, <laughs> "This is so funny." Hold on, let me find it first because I want to put it on, on the on the score. I mean, on the in the screen here. Uh, okay, yeah. So, some guy goes, "Oscar was a great fighter, but I can't stand him as a person. Now he's just a coke sniffing, corona drinking, cross dressing puto that apparently likes having butter knives inserted into his ass." Now, how did we go from? The rumor that supposedly he likes kitchen appliances. Hi, <laughs> to fucking shoving butter knives up his ass. <laughs> I mean, these people are insane. But yeah, dude uh, was sharing some inner feelings there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but Dang. the other Dang. comments. Yeah, and you're, you're telling me precise. Uh, somebody else said because uh, he's he's banking right now on Garcia, Ryan Garcia, that is to be the next big star. But then again, there's been trouble you know between those two lovebirds so you never know if ryan garcia is gonna bail out especially since he's got uh canelo with him as a training partner and somebody said that somebody says i don't know man you got to be 147 or bigger usually to really cross over to the casual fans so he's saying ryan garcia as, as a lightweight might not be able to cross over historically that's been the case he says maybe ryan is something new and we're in a new era now i kind of disagree with that guys but what do you think do you think ryan garcia whether he's a lightweight, featherweight, flyweight, whatever. Don't you think now that with all the social Ryan, media attention he's got? I think, go ahead. I think Ryan Garcia need to keep his chin down before he gets his head knocked off. Yeah, you well agree. Said. That's a good, well said. But they're definitely yeah. they're building him well, that's for sure. They're promoting him well, and he's promoting himself. He's getting out there. They're grooming him. Nothing else. He's got a lot of fans. Yeah, I agree. Oscar, the only thing Oscar, gonna you gotta you gotta give uh, Oscar credit. He's got gonna be at one thirty five, uh, but that kid's gonna get bigger. He's gonna move up. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's gonna be a welterweight. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, the only thing that Virgil Ortiz too. He's uh, he's good. The only thing yeah, that I think with the way they're training Ryan Garcia with with Reynoso, he's dipping a lot. He's going down for a top fighter that's five foot ten. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go down like Canelo moving my waist on the swivel trying to get under punches because you're a tall guy. Now, him moving his head back, you can do it. Not like he Thurman where you're going to get knocked out like going backwards. But you know how Muhammad Ali used to pull his head? He's tall. He's got long arms and he's got quick reflexes. By him pulling his fucking head back, he could actually counter fighters. Yeah, you got a lot of talent, man. That kid, Alex, I haven't watched that video. Hold on, hold on, fellas, fellas. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. Can you guys just hear me okay? Was my mic really low? Your it's mic's really low, man. I can barely hear you precise. My yeah, yeah, mic I, is I low, know. yeah. Maybe it's my Bluetooth headset. I don't know. I, I get rid of Bluetooth. I get rid of Bluetooth. That, that, that's why sometimes I'm shouting and I know I sound like an asshole, but it's yeah. not that I'm like that. Like, because Gonzalo, even when you're not... I gotta buy the high quality ones, man. All right, listen. Let's not. This ain't uh, the, the 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 technology hour with the uh, BDA. Let this. Let's talk. About, okay, precise. Go ahead. You were saying. I think Garcia's got a ton of talent, but he's saying, you know, he he better keep his fucking chin down and and do do diligent and work and develop himself because he's he's not ready for the. All right. So you. He's breaking up for me right now. You're, you're yeah, breaking, breaking up, up a little bit. Oh, my bad. <clears throat> but I, I, I that's it. what he's saying is he's not ready for like the Tia Fimos and, and those type of guys. Oh, God, no. But his it's his his, 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 his right. speech for real. Goddamn right he's not ready for Tia Fimos. But, and but I'll tell you. Right. Not but but right, I don't Haney. think he's ready for any of them. But I'll tell you right now, that kid Garcia, that kid Ryan Garcia, his hand speed's for real. That kid's got really quick hands, man. He really does. Yeah. But he's precise got quick hands. Precise is precise. 
not, not, not to play that pun, but I mean, he when he throws that hook, his chin's just right over his shoulder, waiting to be hit by someone tall enough to reach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I've often he kinda, said... he, he, he shrugs his shoulders a little bit though. He's protecting the side of his chin, and if he leans back a little bit, that punch that's gonna get that's gonna swing back. He's gonna be able to graze it off the top of his shoulder because he shrugs his shoulders yeah. up a got, little bit. He's still green. If he got he's somebody that combinates. And that could come in mid range on him and come in like go for body shots and then slip a overhand. Yeah, he's gonna get caught. He well, he just needs to keep his range. Well, that's interesting well, you mentioned that because he uses he's... it. He says he uses it as a technique to, to to suck people in. It's like a trap. He sets it for them. He leaves it up there. He's, uh, he said he's uh, conscious he's of Floyd it. Mayweather. I'm curious to see if he does that against if he's able to change when he has to. I was going yeah, to say, I, listen, I, I, to Ryan that. Garcia right now to me is one dimensional because he's been uh, uh, taking advantage of his height a lot, which, hey, listen, if you're a tall guy in that division, that, props to you, use that to your advantage. But I, I see him as one dimensional right now. I want to see if he can fight on the inside. I want to see if he can throw, like G Boogie said, if he fights somebody that's going to be throwing combinations and isn't afraid of his one punch counters, it could be problematic. Now, before the, you know, we, one punch at a time sometimes, if you hit hard enough, can work. But this Luke Campbell fight is going to tell us a lot about where he's at. I don't, I don't think Luke Campbell is finished. I don't think he's, uh, maybe he's slowing down a little bit past his peak, but he's still a very dangerous, the best opponent by far that uh, uh, Garcia's fought. So if Garcia ends up doing something impressive against Luke Campbell, I think he's ready for everybody. Give him, put him in there against fucking Teofimo Lopez. Put him in there against oh, yeah. against you know yeah. what everybody, all the top guys. Or if he wants to move up, move up, whatever. But he needs to make a statement because if he doesn't live up to his Q rating inside the ring, then the lawyer's got, got problems on his hands. BDA. BDA. I don't care if he does beat Campbell impressively. Elfimo Lopez will beat that ass. Well, we'll he, see, he, man. He's getting ready. I, I wanted to say one thing. I, 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 see, I see him tilting his head up high. Like that because he's tall and he's got good reflexes to where he's peering, he's peering down. That's why he's held his tilted like back. He's peering down, trying to, you know, when you're driving a car that you just bought and you're trying to park it and you're trying to gain the distance between you and the front hood. But sometimes you get it wrong because you hopefully not because you don't want to scratch your car. But when you get <laughs> it down, you, you, you understand the distance that the length of your hood is. That's why he's tilted because he's gauging the distance and he's peering through his peripheral. To gauge how far he is for me to land those long arms. Hmm. Was that well, his last drive. knockout? An, uh, was that an uppercut? No, his last drive. knockout? Oh, sorry, <laughs> go, brother. No. Can, is this any better? Are these headphones any better? I changed up. A little better. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's much better. All right. That's it. Sounds like you're right here in the room with me. All right, listen. Uh, I wanted to say, man, <laughs> if he, Fuck if you. he. That I'm just saying, if he beats uh, Campbell <laughs> impressively, I think stop it's a big... His leg. All right, <laughs> I'll stop. No, but seriously, I mean, if he stops Campbell, I mean, it's going to be fantastic, maybe, because we really do need uh, all sorts of stars in the game. We need crazy guys. We need the big stars, crossover stars. We need the pretty boys that everybody hates, like some caller was saying last episode. So, uh, you know, Garcia needs to make it happen. But, uh, you know, and they'll all, yeah, I, the thing that somebody said this, the guy that they should be pushing, though, forget about Q rating and, 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 and Facebook followers, Virgil Ortiz, that's the real diamond that he has on his hands. What do you guys think about that? Should he just push Agreed. that guy better? Yeah, well, he, he, he talked about him on the show Crawford. the other day. Oh, sorry, brother. Go See, ahead. Virgil Ortiz is his diamond in the rough that you could basically say he promotes himself through his fights. He's not he's not uh ducking or anybody. He wants to fight. That's man, a that's kid, a man. You could put him you could mold him the right way. He could possibly in a couple of years, three three, four years from now, beat guys like Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, bro. If you oh, if man. you craft him the right way. Oh, I, I give him much he's ready already. That. Do we think he's already uh close to ready? Because he's ranked high enough. Now that oh, he, he's at that cusp where he's going to be mandatory pretty soon for some of these guys. Oh, yeah. No, I, I agree with you there, brother. I think I think we could be by the end of 2021. I would put him in with him. I'm one, telling you. He's 147. He's that big. He's that strong. Yeah, um, he's, yeah. he's, he's ranked number two or three high. for Crawford's belt. It, he, oh, he's really? powerful. Oh. 
and what funny. I like about him is so he, he tweets a lot, and he's actually very um, he has yeah. a good social, you know, media. I think he does, like you said, promote himself well. I like that kid a lot. I hope he does well. He he's put him in the raffle, but he hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. With... The precise, you oh, you're cutting off, man. Right. No, I won't no, like, still. Precise, right, you're cutting off, it. man. I'm you're cutting know. off. Jump back out and jump back. Jump out and jump back in, man, because I think it's it's the connection again. Uh, yeah, he's at the welterweight, by the way. And the, the, the welterweight division is a fantastic. You got some up and comers, man. You got uh, Abdukara Korov. I'm not even going to try to spell his name correctly. Yeah, Abdukara. 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 yeah that, you got Elis. Elis. You got Yelisunov. And you got uh, my man, J-Ron, J- Jaron Ennis. You know, if anybody's right, I think that guy, like Virgil Ortiz, that's, you your, boy. Say, that's your boy, huh? Jaron Ennis. Yeah, he's, well, he's really he good. is because really good. I, he is because I came up with the nickname J Ron, which I think <laughs> I've tried to contact him on Facebook Let's and I said, "Let's hey, both of them fight." Oh come on, it's yeah. too yeah. soon, man. Yeah, he, he's yeah. been fighting yeah. a lot, but is, if I'm not mistaken, though, BDA hasn't his uh, competition been for as many fights as he had been very lean. You talking about J Ron? What's that, brother? I said it's, it's been good. absolutely garbage. <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask uh, BDA. Um, you know, like what what makes him think that Jerron Ennis is was it was it Fernandez, Iobal, or or Abreu that makes you think he's uh? <laughs> it's hey, yeah. Man, it's listen. I I I, I get I basically the eye test. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm, I'm trying to look for the the name of that Ecuadorian or Colombian guy he fought, because he gave uh, what's his? Yeah, he gave he gave uh, the Mean Machine a very tough fight, and I mean this guy's a tough uh, gatekeeper, man, a, t- a tough level gatekeeper, and and uh, and is just absolutely demolished him. I know I don't want to toot my own horn here, but I mostly know talent when I see it. I mean this guy can 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 uh, slip punches. He's got he's good very, defense. Yeah, he's very talented. Very talented. Yeah. And, and he's he very to good too, cool, BDA. He's tall. And it's 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 not everybody. What's that? He was talking boxing, not strip club. When you gave him talent. I think besides, oh, do you back? I didn't hear what you said. Can you hear me? Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear I can't hear what, everybody's talking at the same time. I can't hear everybody. Hold on a second. D, what did you say? Nothing, man. Three times not a joke. D, you broke up for me, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm having a real hard time hearing D too. I'm sorry, D, if I've been talking over you, bro. Anyway, listen, 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 listen. I think N is 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 is, a, is the goods. Now, if people want to disagree, that's fine. But I'm not here to talk about what I'm saying. Is Agreed. you you got talent coming up? That's what I'm saying. This because when people start complaining about oh, there's nobody next, no, nobody else. The, the welterweight division is is filled with a bunch of undefeated fighters coming up, and uh, I, I'm not saying yep. no, not all of them are gonna live up to the hype because I I still remember the class of 2000 when you had. Kodo and Bojado and all those guys coming up in, diff- in similar divisions and only Kodo really made it out of there being an all-time great. But the fact is we got potential. We got potential. Yeah, and right. absolutely. We got, there's going to be some good fights. Sure. Absolutely. Well, if they make it. He right. <laughs> passes the eye test, BDA. Like you said, that kid Ennis, he passes the eye test. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks no, like I like, everything I like right. I like both sides. He, he can fight. He can fight. And, and recognize, I just want to say to you, dude, seriously, go to YouTube. I don't know if you saw all Virgil Ortiz's fights, like get to ser- seriously watch him. I think if you watch him, you'll see he'll be ready sooner than three years. I'm telling you, just rewatch a couple. I think he'll adjust that assessment. He has to fight a ranked opponent, though, because he's knocking out guys that are usually smaller than he is. You don't well, have to fight a thing. ranked opponent when you're already ranked number three without fighting anybody. Well, I mean, if you want to gauge his, how, how ready he is to become champion, you got to face like a Keith Thurman or something. Okay, I, not, I fighting like the Colombian saying. kid, fighting like the Colombian kid's not going to prove anything. He's knocking out fighters that have been knocked out before. Some that haven't, but they're usually smaller. Uh, well, how about I, saying for, I thought you were saying things. for him to get a title shot, he needs to do that. And not, Who are you talking not, about, Ortiz or Ennis? We're, we're talking, talking about Ortiz. 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 Okay, I, I, I lost Ortiz. to you talking about. What about the two of them fighting? Josecito Lopez. Why don't they fight each other? Why don't we get like Dubois Joyce? You know, that that kind of a fight. I would love to see that, but I would love to see it. But that would be the smart thing to do, dude. That would be for the benefit of boxing. That doesn't happen. And their benefit, (laughs) and then they can have a rematch down the line when they get better. You know what I mean? Like yeah, but that's just too. You're bringing way too many IQ points into this, dude. Uh, I think those days are over. 
I so, apologize. Actually, 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 like Nakatani fighting Verdejo, that, that's a good fight. I mean, Verdejo lost, but he's on the comeback. That's the type of power, fight that, fights that I like. But yeah, absolutely, have him face somebody dangerous at a crossroad. That's right. That's yeah, cool. and look, listen, Virgil Ortiz did look extremely good against Mauricio Herrera, who nobody stopped him before. I think, right? Hold on, let me see. Was he the first guy that? No, I don't think him? he's ever stopped before. Yeah, there you go. So what I'm saying is, with, with, with but then again, Herrera was definitely past his peak. But it just lets you know what I want to see from Ortiz is put him in there against a, a slickster, like the guy that uh, Boot Ennis fought, who's very awkward. He'll make you look bad. If you can stop a guy like that, then that tells you, okay, these guys no ordinary offensive fighters. Like he's got Ray Robinson. Ray yeah, Robinson. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's an excellent matchup to see if he can handle a, a mover and a southpaw at that. That he, would be an excellent. He was past his peak BDA, and he was a 140-pounder, wasn't he? But continue on what you were saying. I want to see him fight a bigger guy. That's all. Well, you know, the problem with Mauricio Herrera was his ears. Uh, he's got big ears, like like elephant ears, and I think that sort of like aerodynamically slows him down or something <laughs> when he's coming forward. But so ma- si- <laughs> BDA. Since we're talking about Herrera, um, I'm just going to put that out there because I'm so pissed off about this. Frankie Gomez, man, we, we often talk about like wasted talent. Oh, but, yeah. Bro, that was one of the, like, I don't know, better talents that just straight waste I've ever seen in my life. That's he all. He just decided to eat himself out of boxing. And people. That dude could have been making millions, bro. Like, what's wrong with you? Ah. <sighs> You know what? Some you know what, that, I... dude, you know what I say to that dude? It has to, right, dude? It's so, his talent was so obvious, like what you're saying, pre- uh, precise, right? That makes me say, myself, he, his heart must have been in it. And I think he told himself, like, maybe he had a dream that he was going to get killed in the ring. Who knows? Because yeah. if your heart isn't really in it, like, I was a talented boxer, but I just, my heart just was never going to be on that same mentality playing like. Yeah, maybe he couldn't catch. You know what? It's, There's another it's people on the rise, BDA. When you said uh, who should the fight, fight, you asked me a few shows ago. There's another people coming up. It's Isaac El Pitbull Cruz. He fought Jesse Magdaleno. Keep an eye on that guy. He's got the similar dimensions as this guy. He fought, they call Isaac him the, the mini Mike Tyson. Isaac, Isaac Cruz. He knocked out Magdaleno. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought in the. He, didn't he find a PBC card or was it a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he knocked out Magdaleno. He, he's really good. Yeah, this I'm guy. looking at him now here. He's uh, 22. Whoa. Okay, so he's a, he's a young fighter from the Distrito Federal, DF. Is he from Tepito or he is actually from within the Mexico, within the city? Um, anyway. I think oh. Mexico City, they divided the uh, the districts, but I, right, yeah, he's right. from the city. But listen, the, the thing I'm saying with Frankie Gomez, just real quick back to him, because even Freddie Roach said that this guy was... <laughs> Out of the the roaster he had, and you know he's got an excellent roaster, maybe one of the best, if not the best. Uh, he said Frankie Gomez had the most potential out of everybody. That's what he said. And, and Frankie Gomez did beat up Herrera uh, when he, Herrera was taking O's from these uh, prospects and all that. And Gomez just fucked him his face up. Dude, that guy, that guy was like a quintessential Mexican fighter with a lot of like Black American slick skills and punching power, and like that dude was just. Man, I've never seen anything like that, to be honest. But you know what? You know, Jimmy said that his heart might not have been into it. I think what happened to he might have had options outside the ring or something, because that's usually the worst thing. They usually say that when a fighter has options, it's over. His his heart's not going to be into it because he's always got one foot out the door. And I mean, who wants to train? Listen, people forget the, the, the schedule these guys th- go through, the training. It's harsh, like Jimmy was saying, hitting the bag over and over. That can just that alone can fuck you Jones. Now start talking about the road work, the sparring, the, the 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 weight cutting, taking punches, although some guys like taking punches. It's not for everybody. That's why you only see a few select guys making it to the to the very, very top because if not everybody else and would it, be and making it. It's your social life too, dude. We don't think about that a lot. You miss weddings, you miss funerals, you Christmas. Don't, you, know, you don't go to ball. You know what I mean? You you lose yeah, exactly. You don't you lose a lot of family events friend events type of shit too it's a very su- uh, isolating sport because you gotta yeah you, you gotta Some remember kids. these guys that are training for the january fights for example they got no christmas dinner man no turkey no stuffing with the works you know the cakes and everything no forget about that it's they're, they're weight cutting while everybody's out there stuffing their fat faces so with frankie Gomez, they're he, miserable too they're miserable, they're miserable. to their family because they're starving <laughs> you know what but it's interesting thing because 
so you know precise said this guy had so much talent what happened sometimes guys are and it happens some guys like a guy can be so talented at something that he never wanted to do in the first place like every time we talk about frankie gomez i talk about another sporting guy named the uh, fuck what was his name it was a guy argentinian soccer player crespo something from the 90s this guy was one of the best at, at the time of, in soccer and it turns out and bucho was the one that told me this this guy actually wanted to be a basketball player because, you know, basketball is pretty big in Argentina. He never wanted to be a soccer player. He wanted to be a basketball player. But he was so good at soccer, he said, no, I'll go with it. But his heart was never really fucking, you know, he, if he would have, he could have chosen, he wanted to be basketball. So maybe Frankie Gomez wanted to be like a plumber or something. And, oh no, Batistuta. Yes, thank you, Kibucho. It was Batistuta. Bro, when, but BDA, when he was in that ring, it, look, it looked like his heart was in it. <laughs> and I'm just saying. Some guy, I, I think know, he was a gang member. Yeah, I think I he mean, had something to do with gangs, man. Yeah, that could, that could, that that's yeah, something that could really fuck life. someone up with a fighter, especially a guy who's a fighter. So if he's in, he's involved with gangs, I mean that could really that could really just Is stop it, his motivation. Was he the one associated with was it him? Um, you guys would know, uh, like Gonzalo. Is, did you hear rumors that he was involved with coke? Like something like money, yeah. like they had he owned some uh, car places. Yeah, drugs, cocaine. That's what you. Uh, so I heard that too. So that's you heard that too, brother. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's the next. Come that's the next step. If you look at if you look at gangs and you look at like guys that are they t they take their violence to the next level. Coke is usually involved. All right. You know what? I I'm reading the boxing scene uh, thread here, and somebody says somebody said what happened to the guy, and somebody says I think somebody uploaded a pic of him that was fairly recent. It's fair to say he's not coming back anytime soon. He looked over two hundred pounds. Imagine that the guy's like Whoa. five feet six or something. He's over two. And somebody said the rumor is, and that's all it is, a rumor, is that he's on the run after a drug situation. So yeah, I think there's like some gang thing going on. Yeah. Well, that sounds like Madonna. Uh, this is Madonna. Uh, yeah, no. that's the thing. How are you gonna go this on the is, run if you're fat? The last thing you want to do is get <laughs> fat if you're on the run. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> What's this yeah, guy doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what that's what happened. Yeah. Fucking, uh, that's what ended this guy's life. Uh, Camacho, man, that dude got fat. He couldn't run the gunners. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the thing he, is, got, he got set up. Yeah, he got set up. Sweet. Camacho was such a Camacho was such a fighter. Like that dude just didn't fear nobody. Like that's not it's not an over exaggeration. Yeah, the kid. Yeah, who we talking about? Camacho. Camacho. Hector Camacho. Hector Camacho yeah, didn't in, have the 80s, no, he, in the eighties, in the eighties, in the beginning when he came Edward out and like, he oh. was in the Golden Gloves and stuff like that, he was fearsome. He didn't believe in. I had that same mentality, you know, back in those days. Um, but as he got older, he like uh, what's that one movie? Uh, uh, Walker Walking said, "Oh, you guys got that." Walker. Well, yeah, Paul, King no, of New not York, Paul King of New York. Yeah, there you go, King of New York. He said, "You guys got fat. We starving over here." You know, <laughs> that, that's what happened to Camacho, especially when he started well, Camacho, messing with the. You, you, when he got busted listen, for that. Do you guys know? You know about Camacho? I'm sorry, my my talking with people. Fuck. Right. Camacho, Camacho was a. You good? Was a was a. He was a spur of the moment kind of guy. That's the that's who he was. Well, you know when he yeah. went down to Puerto Rico to fight his big coming out party. That was his big party. I'll never forget. It was on ABC Wide World of Sports, right on a Saturday afternoon. He went down to uh, Puerto Rico. It was so popular they almost couldn't get him into the ring. He was being mobbed. His mother walked in with him. Come and find out later, years later, the night before. The fucking announcer of ABC News was out driving around Puerto Rico with his manager and someone else trying to find him. And when they found him, he was in a corner covered in sweat in the fucking throes of a cocaine <laughs> fucking induced like hallucination, Bro. dude. They had to talk to him. The night before. Rico, look. The night Yo, I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to sh throw any shades against anybody, but like I just want to give the some props to the modern day fighters because... The way, way we talk about all these guys back in the day, just like being fearless and fearsome and, and just going for it in the ring. There's one thing you got to take into consideration. Like there was no drug testing after like, and not any like reasonable drug testing. Of so course. these guys were on stimulants inside the ring and that's not throwing shade against them. Cause I wish that was still possible today, but I'm just trying to put it into perspective. Why some of these guys were just 
fucking killers and beasts. It's because they were, and that's why they were also into stimulants outside of the ring because that's, that's that was just their thing, stimulants, speed. So I can't comment you know, you know, too much on what happened I, with him. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I, it's like the, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, like, you know what? Fellas, 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 I don't want to. Everybody's talking at the same. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, fellas, fellas. Yeah, everybody's talking. I think Jay's been went to say something. Go ahead, Jay. So um, I can't speak to the, uh, to Frankie too much on, on what other than what we pointed out of he's got some game related issues. When some guys lose it, they, a lot of these guys have long amateur careers. And um, I just had the guy's name. He was a light heavyweight, Marvin Johnson. By the uh -huh. time he turned pro and got to the title level, he was already burnt out of the sport. And some of these kids that may yeah. get burnt out start to fill themselves with other stuff like gang running with their friends and stuff like that. Um, and to occupy extra time to keep them stimulated because they're burnt out on the sport. Uh, I, I, from Augusta, Georgia, there are a lot of guys after Vernon Forrest that were highly ranked that none of them made it because they just they got burnt out. They were done. They didn't want to do it anymore. Well, yes, well, that's, that's true. Dude, did you know well, Camacho was a full blown like his mother caught him doing and selling cocaine at thirteen. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Holland. Listen, well, Camacho, Spanish Holland yeah, in the nineteen seventies was like Camacho like was like, like, like. I'm sorry, yeah. brother. No, yeah. I was gonna say Spanish Holland like recognized us all the time in the seventies and eighties was off the hook. <laughs> and here's, yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. He was a. He was. Um, remember, the kid was like always in trouble. He was a street fighter. I mean, he used yeah. to look. This is. This is. Okay. He also. He, he was raised in Spanish Harlem, but he also had family in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I know a lot of people over there, and they know him. And the kid was a street fighter. That's what he. Yeah. He was doing it at twelve. Like he. If oh. He was, if he was an eighteen. Hold on. Hold on. If he was an eighteen. Who did it? Who fought once in a while? He'll fuck you up at 12. He'll beat your ass. Isn't there a movie coming out of him recognized? He yes, came out, I think. It's a documentary yeah. last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember when he, he, I remember when he fell apart in a ring after. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember. Oh, you guys are too young. But we're talking to Merchant. I mean, no, who was it? Merchant. Everyone's already anyway, so, the fight you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, dude. After the fucking, he just like, he started crying because it got to him. He's like, I just want people to like me because it's, he started playing the heel then. And you, he was an emotional fucking, you know, obviously, like most of those kids. Uh, he was on a lot drugs, of drugs, especially. He exactly. Was it was just... But, but wait, 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 wait. Now, the Edwin Rosario fight, like Jay mentioned it, a lot of people that pointed to it. that fight, which, yeah, that's the fight that supposedly, that's after that he became a runner because he got mm -hmm. hurt in the fifth run, I believe, with the left hook. But yeah. He yep. claims that he had a bad night because he was fighting with his mother. Now, that just goes to show you this guy had, <laughs> he was fighting with everybody, apparently. And even in, in before and, the before the Rosario fight, they were doing a, a promo on the guy. Well, not a promo, but a video package on him. And they said that he actually had to move away from New York and back to not back to. I think he went Puerto to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah. I think he went to Puerto Rico to yeah. train for that fight because it was there was too much commotion in in. Uh, but then in, that's when he started messing with the nietas. What the hell? Well, Wait, Julio, Julio Cesar Chavez said BDA that that Edwin Rosario hit him the hardest. Rosario, he, he was like he, he was like getting hit by a bat. That fucker could crack, man. It won Rosario. It could yeah, crack, it could, but he yeah. didn't yeah. Chavez one bit. Yeah, that didn't bother Chavez one. But I mean, Chavez no, he had like, a great chin. He had a great Chavez. Had, unlike Camacho, but, Camacho, legendary chin. But wait a minute, Camacho, Camacho was maybe might not have had the best chin, but he was tough. I mean, he took a beating. He took oh, some no, bumps. He, oh, oh, Camacho had a fucking crazy chin. He had a great chin. chin. He, he, he never got knocked out. Yeah, I forgot about that, man. Yeah, dude. Hey, Chavez, you know he never got him, Chavez gave him a fucking. It, it was almost like fucking. It was sad. He, he beat him stupid. In regards to uh, Camacho's comment about messing, uh, his mom messing with him, uh, then he must have had the same thing with any Pazienza and uh, Boom Boom Mancini. Because well. after the Rosario <laughs> fight, those those performances were all very similar. Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, that, but that's what I'm, I mean, it's something weird happened to the guy, because not for nothing, but the amount of movement he used to show in fights, that takes a what? lot out of you, man. He was Camacho he, before, his, before he became famous, that was the best Camacho. That, yeah, I guess Bazooka Limon. Before, exactly. I guess yeah. Limon and yeah. I guess yeah. Lamides. The yeah. early yeah. 80s, uh, I say mid 80s, when it got to the 90s, that's when he started falling off, because he was... Oh, he was a shell of himself by the 90s, brother. Yeah, Coach by the 90s, he was... He his mother, you know, his mother gave birth to him at 13, so that's why he had that weird relationship with his mother. Because it was more, almost close to, you know I mean, 13. She's like a sister. It's, 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 it's a Latin It's one of the fastest fighters of all time. 
Remember when he used to do the shoe shine? The shoe shine when he told the flurry ah, before the start Agreed. Of the he would get in the ring, right? Yeah, he would jump in the ring and do that shoe shine. <laughs> I, I, I used to imitate fast. that. Jimmy, I used to imitate that. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, he, he, listen, he, the reason why his jab was so crazy, he didn't turn his fucking fist over. He would throw a hammer jab yeah. almost. It was yep. weird. Look, I'll put him up against the, what, Camacho speed, the, world. the the speed that he had back in the early 80s when he came out, or late 80s, I mean, mid 80s, uh, when he came out, dude, Something came he, out. Uh, people underestimated his speed until they got into the ring with him and they was like, holy shit, this motherfucker just hit me with an eight punch combo. And yep. I ain't even no, get to lay exactly. a hand on him. Now, as good I, as he I, I, was, in though, his prime at 130, I would put him up against anybody, including Floyd. I'm not saying he beats all of them every time, but not a single one of them takes him to school and like owns him in that ring. At 130, he was a beast. Well, it's he was, when he was younger, and, when he was oh, younger, wait, BDA, and he had when he was fought. younger, BDA, he had and a fight, had right? Fought. And after the fight was over, after the fight was over, he said, "They asked him, um, you know, they were, whatever they were asking him. He's like, this is fun to me." I used to fight in the streets. I used to fight in the streets. This is fun. <laughs> remember when the, when, yeah, remember yeah, when he beat a record at all? I don't think. Remember when he, he beat Lamidas? I think it was Jose Luis Lamidas he beat, and then he goes, uh, "I want them all." Tracy Patterson. I think he said Tracy Patterson, uh, Pendleton. You know, like Whitaker. And then he goes. He says the N word. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? It's like, I think because he was <laughs> oh, Puerto Rican from New York. I think because he yeah, was a Puerto Rican from calling everybody out. It was. I, I, I don't remember. It was that one thirty-five. He called everybody out, including Pernell. Yeah, he's right. black too, though. He's 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 bounced black. Right, but I'm, I'm saying it's because black. he was because he was from New York and Puerto Rican. He had that N word pass, I think. But uh, you yeah, know but what? No, he caught a lot of shit for that, though, dude. He used to catch a lot of shit for that back in the day. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do a show on, on just on Hector Camacho, and we're gonna talk about all the shenanigans because there was also anyway. I'll save the story for later. But speaking of Pernell Whitaker, I've been trying to get at the bottom to the bottom of this um, legend because I heard that he and Pernell Whitaker sparred. And that uh, Whitaker got the best of him, but I've never been able to find anything more than hearsay. Yeah, I heard about that too. Right. Well, Pernell Whitaker's right. a lot younger than him. He fucked him up. And now, what have you heard about that, that D? Because I can't, right. I, I hear different versions of it. Well, I mean, look, seriously, it's uh, around because I'm from Virginia. Seriously, it's just like hearsay, even in Virginia, even NBA. Like nobody knows the truth, but the majority of the stories I hear. Sweepy, Sweepy did it, man. You know what I mean? And it, you hear all different kinds of ways that it happened. And Sweepy, he just couldn't catch Sweepy. And Sweepy fucked him up. We don't know. We don't know. But I, I, I'm just saying that the consensus is no, that Sweepy fucked him up. And uh, did, okay. did, uh, did, did, did uh, Camacho call him the N-word after the sparring session? or? <laughs> well, you never know if he's pissed off and he's saying it when he's yeah. happy. Maybe, you know. And by the way, we got uh, new people in the stream here. We got a guy named Adolf. All right, they know themselves. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Adolf Hitler. Uh, no, nah, but he's got, a, he's got a he's got a the Mets. You know the the New York Mets. New York Metropolitan. They suck. Dude, the Mets <laughs> suck. Now. As, long, as long as it's not a swastika, Adolf, it's okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, all right, then we got another guy named Jeremy Vzvop Jalton. Jeremy, you're on the air, man. What's up? Jeremy. Virtuoso, can you hear me, by the way? All right, it's a big... Yeah, it's, a photo of a it's a photo of a guy with an erect cock. <laughs> I'm glad you guys can't see it, man, because <laughs> it's a pretty Photoshop cock there, man. All right, that's enough of that. All right. Uh, I'm done with StreamYard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. So I was gonna say, I uh, our, see, so I'm glad. <laughs> all right, we got Adolf. All right, he's playing audio, man. What the fuck? All right, um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so moving on from Camacho, oh, yeah, okay, you know what? We were talking about the lawyer before that. The lawyer, I always used to give him crap for a long time after he be, fought, fought Camacho because I said, ah, oh, come on, he fought a lightweight, blah blah blah. But man, he looked good against Camacho, he was landing some bombs on the guy. Sp spreading sweat all over the place, and Camacho took that man. He took it and he moved around the ring, and and, and he did what he had. Camacho to. welched on his bed, though. Remember the tale? He said, "Yeah, if I beat you, I get to cut that off." <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. You got you got to see the ending of the fight. He goes, "Come on, man." Oscar De La Hoya goes, take up, my to man goes De La Hoya goes up to him and goes, "Come on, man. A bet's a bet." <laughs> I think Camacho thought he was going to win that fight all the way up until he got hit in the first round. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that usually happens, right? You go in there with a plan, and it just it just goes out the window. Uh, uh, some guys, they're not going to win before they get in young. there. Yeah, young. Yeah, but it, listen, it happens to everybody's career because he did the same thing to fucking Sugar Ray Leonard, remember? That's the, that's the night we watched Sugar Ray Leonard become an old man, beat him, yeah. the fight was stopped. Yeah. That's what got him the De La Hoya fight. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that true. He was that That fight was at 160 also. Jeez, one six. Just think of the names he fought. Fucking Hot Chavez, fucking Rosario. Look at that sugar I mean, he was past his prime, but you no, know, Oscar Dale, he fought. He brought some yeah, good dudes, man. Good names. Yeah, he hey, fought by the way, too. By the way, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Vinny Paz before there. Uh, Jimmy, I know you don't like the guy because I heard the story you told the other day about um, what happened with him. But yeah, he's a douche, but he fought him and he lost. I agree, he lost that night. He thought he won, but I thought he lost. Yeah, but I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention uh, what's his name, Vinny Paz. Was he? Maybe he was being a prick because he was juiced to the gills when you met him. Oh no, he was drunk and coked out of his head when I met him. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I thought, well, he was doing juice. It was just to keep his dick hard. But it wasn't. Like, he wasn't no hard boy. You know what I mean? He didn't walk around all jacked up. Right, 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 right. right. I, I, I met the. Yeah, he was a mess when I saw him. I met the recovery pez at the Hall of Fame, and it was '07 when Duran and Whitaker got inducted, and uh, obviously he'd uh, cleaned himself up. He's a lot nicer of a guy than the one Jimmy met, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure, man. Yeah, I'm sure. Probably, yeah. Now, also, the other thing about... Uh, what was it? All right, guys, please mute your mics if you're not going to talk, man, because I hear a lot of uh, background noise there. Vinny Pacienza was a tough dude, man, for sure. And yeah, but that's another name that Camacho, yeah. Remember when Camacho threw a tampon at the guy? And he said, here, you're a bleeder. That, that was during a press conference, I believe, for, for that fight. That was, <laughs> that was a good tactic there. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he said that. I don't, I don't remember. But uh, fuck, where was it going with the Vinny Pacienza story? Ah, I forgot. So anyway, yeah, we 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 can all agree that uh, Camacho was a good fighter. Uh, but then again, it took him four times before he got in the Hall of Fame. He wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer. Did it take him four times? I don't know what the fuck that was all about. Yeah, I mean, two thousand twelve, he got inducted. Vinny Paz. Yeah, no, um, Camacho. Uh, Hector Camacho. I think he got passed up on a few times. I don't know if it was well, he, because, because he was related. Yeah. He was active though, right? Wasn't he? Keep, well, I, I don't know how boxing does it. Boxing. I think you you have to be out for two years. Is that what it is? Yeah. Now it's two and a half, for, I think. Yeah. For Camacho. Camacho yeah. Has three is now was was twenty ten. Back in the day. Hold on, hold on, hold on, fellas, fellas, fellas. One at a time. Go ahead, recognize. No, I was gonna say Camacho kept fighting. Um, I remember he moved to Florida right before he went to Puerto Rico, and he told a bunch of people that we that I know. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be fighting again somewhere in Florida. And um, that was like right before he got killed. Oh. Yeah, I pulled out on it because of the weight issues. Yeah. So he, yeah, he, he, fought, he, he fought, his last fight was in 2010 against Duran. No, not that Duran. Right, Saul that, Duran. Makes, that makes sense. 20, so 2010, Duran. he got yeah. killed in 2012, I want to yeah. say. Uh, yeah, 12 or, yeah, 2012. 2012. Dude, that was the fight. He was getting ready for the fight when he told his fucking best friend, childhood friend, he, he looked at me in the eye and he told me he was a junkie. Dude, you know he, he didn't yeah, fucking... I'm a great boxer, but I'm a junkie first. And that's when he... You know that... He stopped training for that fight. You know he Jeez. died on his weight. He died He died a couple of days later. And, and, and here's the reason why I brought, bring it up. The motherfucker got shot in his throat, his face, and his Whoa. chest. Yeah, he still... He survived for three days. Whoa, he was a fighter. At point through, blank. Man. At yeah. point blank, too. Point dude blank, walked yeah. right up in the car and pop, pop, pop. Because if you see, if you see the uh, point blank. if you see the crime scene, you see um, you don't see Camacho. You see the guy that they killed, the other guy that they killed, because they killed two people that day. Mm-hmm. The other guy that they killed, you see him slumped on the floor, like right on the uh, the driver's side. He slumped on. I guess they like yeah. took him Camacho out of the car, was and on shot him the passenger up on the side. Yeah, Camacho got out of the car and walked a few. Camacho walked 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 before he he fell out of the car. You didn't see his body. You didn't see, well, obviously, he didn't die right there. So, you didn't, of course. Hey, well, speaking of other fighters. Speaking of other fighters. He, other had, fighters, he had a great spirit. He got a great spirit, man. Yeah, he he's got the Corazón de León, as they say. But Werner, Fo- yeah. Jay, you brought up Jay, uh, Werner Forrest. That's another guy yeah. that died uh, prematurely and obviously outside the ring. Yeah, he yeah, had too. a lot of trouble with yeah, the shoulder, would... right? After the, the mayor. He had a lot of trouble with one of his shoulders after the Mayorga fight. Yes. But that's that's another no, guy before that, that Oh it was before that. Okay. That's another yeah, guy that he, look, he he beat Forrest in the amateur I mean mostly in the amateurs and did it again 
in the in the professional ranks when when Mosley was beat, considered beat by Mosley a lot twice in the amateurs too. Well, he didn't just beat Mosley; he beat Stevie Johnston and uh, Lamar Murphy and um, I forgot the other one's name, Leah Vander Johnson. He lost to Teron Millette first round knockout, but he beat all the others. You're talking the he amateurs. Even Ro- he even beat Robert Frazier. You, yeah, you're talking amateurs. He didn't turn out to be much, but all those guys turned out. To he win has. Titles. See, you could tell he had problems with guys like Teron Millette and Marioga. Like, okay, Mar- Millette. Teron Millette was in a wild swinging puncher, but he's one of those looks. guys that dipped on. He kind of dipped under you and hit and caught you with like overhand hooks. Mm-hmm. Well, for the record, what happens when he got hit with a hook? He got up and he got in the corner, and the referee never said walk to me or anything like that. So he stayed in the corner. The ref counted with him on his feet to ten and waved him off. Oh, he was on his feet. So that it was kind of it was. Uh, I think it was either a Golden Gloves. I think it was a Golden Gloves because they said that they announced Vernon being from the South and Millette being from the West. And I oh, just watched you, it the other day again. Did and, you um, see those fights? They with a hook. What's that? Did you see those fights live or are they on what? YouTube? Um, I, that one I saw a video of it. Uh, video of it. Oh, good. But after it happened, because the high school were Vernon and he was in the gym. And um, so they brought it and we saw it and we we're like, why was that a knockout? Now he did lose to um, uh, Kostya Zoo in the amateurs, but I mean, Kostya right. Zoo. People don't realize how good that man was in the amateurs. We, we know as a pro, but he was at the top of his game when he defected, and he was amazing. Like, you couldn't even hit him. He'd have his hands by his waist, and you couldn't even hit him, and he'd counter his power shots all day long. But Vernon was only about 18 years old when that happened, though. Uh, uh, Kostya Zoo was 22. Yeah, that could make a difference, yeah. So just like, different. yeah, like Aaron Pryor against Tommy Hearns, a, a 23-year-old versus a 19-year-old. Not yeah, yeah. One of the... Two of my favorite right. fighters, Vernon Forrest and uh, and Kostasu. But you know, he got killed because he chased the robbers. Yeah. That's why he got killed. Yeah. yeah. He, he, they were trying to carjack him, I believe. And then he uh, pulled out. Oh, they stole his watch. son was in the car. They robbed him right. for his and watch. He was there in his tire. He was there in his tire on his, on his Jaguar. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Came, but, yeah. let's, let, let's, the official story, because I, I, I do remember he chased some. He chased somebody down, right? So, and and they I, I want to robbed his watch, and he was chasing them. All right, that's a big no no. First the, of all, the, the key factor was they were also trying to take his car, and he he was still friends with his ex girlfriend's son, who was in the car, and that's why he chased them off. They tried okay, to jack okay. with the kid in the car. Okay, okay, so that's the story. That, the that's the story station, that was right, the news where I'm from. What's that? They, they, they try to call Jack him in a in a in a in a gas station. In right? a gas station, yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. A gas station of all places to die. I mean, to get robbed in a gas station. That's that's the lowest. No, level already. that's what, in the south. In the south, anybody would tell you like just these uh big cities. That's what they call it. That's just real estate. Yeah, they they yeah. yeah they I saw somebody got killed. Else. I got somebody got killed in Georgia in the gas station. It, Jeez, well, you know what they call it? They call it uh they call it the fucking Boston. There's a in South in Mattapan, there's two gas stations. They call it brother tag. <laughs> brother <laughs> what the fuck that? Yeah, because they'll be yell a tag, you're it. They shoot at each other so much. Uh, by the way, shout hey. out to Mr. E who donated the super chat. He says Camacho pass characters in boxing. I c- could be a show. Are there any left? Mr. E, you read my mind because I've been tr- I've been planning on that, a show on the crazy characters of boxing, the all-time greats. And to ask the question too, are there any crazy characters left? Any any flakes out there? Because really, the boxing world needs a little bit of everything. Like I said, it needs the pretty boys like Ryan Garcia. It needs the, 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 the guys that the hardcore boxing fans like, like a Golovkin. And it needs the crazies like Nassim Hamed, like Camacho, like Vinny Paciencia, like uh, 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 what's his other name? Maromero Pais. Maromero Pais. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it seems to be more than. Your BDA. Go ahead, Richoso. Yeah, I just wanted to add what Precise was saying earlier, you know, about boxers being under the influence of stimulants. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was that normal, I, you know, now you got today, you got Wilder complaining and bitching about. Oh, my water was spiked, you know. Maybe Mark Brillian was trying to help him out, make him calm down. Even I don't believe in that <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, maybe they gave him something to slow him down, yeah. No, but you know what, man? Listen, the whole uh, Wilder Fury thing, I, I don't want to get into it because I'm waiting for... Mer- they keep saying they have evidence, they have evidence. Let me see the evidence. I'm open-minded. Why not? Um, but going back to the Werner Forrest thing. Yeah, so yeah, Werner Forrest, from all indications, he was a good guy because he was working with... Uh, um, yeah. mentally challenged people and uh, he, he was a good but he was another guy that makes you wonder wait wait a minute why did this guy become a boxer because he looked like very kind outside the ring and relaxed and everything but when he was in that ring 
uh, he could throw like uh, that fight against that version of him against Mosley in the first fight. He was throwing some f punches that were whizzing by him. What about when he hit Mosley with a body shot and Mosley? Yes. Said, oh. Hey, you know what? Recognize, you know what? Recognize. But, I used to. I I was on a website once when they, uh, he was in a chat room. Like it was a special chat with um, Shane Mosley, and you could everybody could ask him one question. And some guy goes, "Hey, Shane, when he, when Werner Forrest hit you to the body and made you squeal like a pig, did you think about quitting?" <laughs> It's like what the fuck? <laughs> the guy's giving his time. The guy's giving his time to everybody answering questions, and he, <laughs> this motherfucker goes, "So he made what you was squeal his like answer?" A pig. Uh, he didn't answer, but he just left. But uh, yeah, man, yeah, recognize that that actually seemed to have been more dangerous than the actual uppercut he ate in the second or third round, I believe. Do you remember that fight, recognize? Because that took place in New York. I don't know if you did. You go to that one or? All right, recognize on mute. But uh, I think that was in Memphis. That was in 20, 2002, man. Oh man, yeah, uh, the Vernon Floyd really shook up the welterweight, man. The undercard was Gotti Millet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first fight with uh, Bowdy McGirt, right? Um, yeah, Gatti it was. It was a good fight, too. In regards back to Vernon, um, he was a really nice guy. Um, I I was uh, on leave in the military, and I got to get to go to the um, Von Bean Evander Holyfield fight. And, of course, being young in the military, I was only an E3. I had shit tickets. and But <laughs> I ran into him there, and I introduced my father to him. And uh, he said, where are y'all sitting? And I told him where I was at. He goes... You can't see anything from there. Why don't you come with me? So I walked with him, and he showed his press ticket. He goes, these guys are with me, and we got to sit. We weren't ringside, ringside. But he moved me up a lot that's closer. Awesome. I mean, it's just, that's just the kind of guy he was. Can you imagine a hockey player doing that? I hear that shit. That's an awesome story. Can you imagine a hockey player doing that? on him, if I can. Is go ahead, that, go ahead. Um, When he signed with the Duvas, and he did that largely because he had connections with Vander Holyfield, both being Georgia boys. The Duvas only yeah. wanted him to be a chief sparring partner for Perno Whitaker because of uh, tall, lanky fighters like De La Hoya and, and Felix Trinidad. They didn't try to really manage or promote him. They mm. kept him around. They kept him on the leash. But they really didn't try and get him in with anybody. And when, uh, when it came time for him being ranked higher, and Daryl Coley was like the number one contender, if you remember, he sat for a year and waited for De La Hoya. Um, Daryl Coley told me himself that they were offering fights like Vernon Forrest. And he didn't know I knew Vernon. I said, so why didn't you fight him? He's like, oh, I wasn't going to fight Vernon Forrest. That wasn't worth enough money. So oh. a lot of these contenders didn't want to fight him because they were afraid of him. And the Duvas didn't yeah. manage him to try and get him in because they were trying to help Purnell. No well, kidding. And, and, Jed, and, and didn't like, uh, Al Heyman sign him to fight Mosley? And he told, he told Al Heyman, you know, I can beat this guy. And that was how Mosley got in. Uh, correction. That's how uh, Al Heyman got into promote, promoting, right? That was his first fighter. I can't answer that part because I don't know enough about what Al Heyman did or who Buddy kissed to that's get true, in. That's true. That's true. That's but, true. That was the first fighter. But I can. Yes, it I was. Can, that sounds about it right. Was Al's first. Hey, but it's yeah, it's Vernon interesting. Forrest was Al Heyman's first fighter. It's interesting I you bring up Vernon Forrest, Forrest told anybody that listened that he would beat Sugar Shane Mosley. He told everybody. Yeah, but yep. Shane Mosley never beat him. He beat him twice in the amateurs and the pros. Yep, that's right. Him. He it's never styles, yeah. Vernon yeah, Forrest he knew he had his. I guess Vernon Forrest just always knew I got this dude's number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Vernon interesting Forrest how boxing was his kryptonite. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. his kryptonite. That's why a lot of people felt that maybe Forrest, a prime Forrest, would have been Mayweather. He was kryptonite. Tarver before Tarver. He was the first Tarver. That's a good way of yeah. putting it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that's a good way of putting yeah. it. Hey, Jay, did yeah. uh, did Daryl Coley get robbed against Obakar? My opinion back in the day, yeah, I was watching that one again the other day, but didn't finish it. But um, it, that was that was two boxers going at it to hit each other hard enough to finally say, you know, screw that, go out, let's go out the window. We're going to go to war, and that's the best way to say that fight. That was just a classic that people forget about. That fight was awesome. It's on YouTube, but I yes. Think. I, I thought I know it took forever for it to get on YouTube because I looked for it for years. Found it about two years ago, but when I first found out how to um, borrow fights off of YouTube, if I may, <laughs> I looked for that one for years and never found it until probably about two years ago. And the second it did, I remember I, um, I was underway, but found a pizza shop and got some Wi-Fi, and it was like two o'clock in the morning and downloaded immediately because I didn't want it to be taken off. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the last time I saw that fight. What, there's a guy named Jace. Well, maybe I shouldn't say the name, but his first name is Jay. He's uploading a lot of fights. That's not you, then. No, no, that's not me at all. That's not me. At okay, 
Because I thought Actually, maybe though, Jay... I don't. I don't upload anything. I borrow fights. Do you have a lot of boxing tapes? I'm gonna uh, assume you do. Uh, well, I turned everything over to digital. I turned everything over to digital, and I have um, somewhere around uh, a terabyte and a half on my hard drive. Jeez. Listen, I know you're married. I think you're married, right? Don't ever yeah. piss your wife off. And if you do, don't tell her where your VHS tapes are because Reckoness can tell you a thing or two about what can happen. <laughs> if, uh... hey, Jay, I was just gonna ask you the one to help me turn them digital. Oh, okay. Hey, Jay, I, I was Jay, just going to ask about... you, did you get a his... Did you get oh. a Hispanic girl that uh, you bought a whole box of VHS tapes? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Recognize what about them? Man? It could have no, been, been my collection. Been. My collection on VHS used to stack from um, bottom of my closet all the way up to my shirt, and then um, eventually I just turned them over to DVD, and then from DVD, my wife actually turned them over onto digital for me. So I married a winner on that one. Trust me. Hey, yeah, good for Jay, you. I had about Jay. I had over. I had over. I would say roughly two th close to two thousand tapes. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have fights Long story. that people that that people wouldn't believe that I had uh, on vid on <laughs> a fucking uh, VHS. Like what? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, uh, I, said, I don't believe I had, you. I just uh, want an example. Week I had Winky Wright, Bronco McCart. I had um, just yeah, the name of two legends: Winky versus Bronco McCart. I had. Um, what was it? Simon Brown versus uh, uh, Petaway. I had, what about Tyrone Trice? I had, dude, I had like a bunch. I had like fucking Fernando Vargas, fifth fight. That fucker. Fifth fight. I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Why you, why you, fights, so wait a minute. So, why you hate Fernando Vargas, um, man? What the fuck? Okay, so in 1996, the Olympic team actually was uh, crowned in Augusta, Georgia. They fought for their spots in Augusta, Georgia. And they trained out of, out of my gym. And so Vargas was fighting a friend of mine named Brandon Mitchum. You may have never heard of him, but he, he was a top amateur turned pro, but didn't make much of himself, with all due respect. So he and Brandon had to fight each other. Now, Brandon went through the loser's bracket, and he had to fight Vargas, who was the champion. And so the fight's in, our, in, in Brandon's hometown. Uh, before I get to the rest about Fernando Vargas, put a thought in that real quick. I met Eddie Futch at the Olympics later, and he said that he thought that Brandon won this fight. No, but they gave it to Vargas. So Vargas was talking all this trash, and all I kept saying was, "The better man's going to win. That's going to be me." And so that that didn't bother me too much. But after the uh, the Olympics was was there, um, and the team was was formed, was, uh, we were uh, taking pictures, and he decided to take a picture between me and my girlfriend, now wife, and he has hand wrapped around her hip. And I was like, "If you want to keep that arm, you, uh, you might want to take it off of her." Oh. Like, Who do you think you are? I was like, it's going to break your fucking arm if you don't. Uh, so, yeah, we did that sure. Hell yeah. Damn, Jay was. Uh, uh, what? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Remember? Sorry, BD. That's okay, man. Okay, we got cut off there. For, we got cut off there. Go ahead, Gonzalo. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Hey, Jay, remember this boxer named Al Seeger from that area where you're from? Give the name Al again. Seeger. Al Seeger. Al Ziger from Augusta? From Georgia, from Savannah. He fought Ponte de Leon. Vaguely. I remember the Al name. Seeger. Sounds like a <laughs> rock and roll singer or something. Yeah. Uh, um, is, is, is it a white guy there, uh, Gonzalo? Yeah, he's a white dude. Yeah, I see him here. Box rec, 28 wins, 22 knockouts. Whoa, pretty good KO ratio. Five losses, four by KO. He fought Gamboa, Ponce de Leon. Cesar Morales, Cesar Figueroa. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So, so Fernando Vargas was trying to pick your 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 girl up, and just uh, how, what? How old was he then? 19, 17? Yeah, nineteen. Oh, well. He uh, he and Floyd were both nineteen at the time, and um, but I remember correctly, the Duvas were sponsoring Judah and uh, Zaire Rahim during that time, and so when it came time for uh, sparring. Vargas would spar Judah from time to time to get ready for the uh, the Olympics, and Judah used to take it to him. Judah used to give him some, used to give him lessons. No kidding. No kidding. He just popped the straight left, and Vargas wouldn't know what to do. He just pop him right in the face and move. And uh, at that time, he, uh, Judah was fighting an awful lot like Pernell Whitaker. So he'd land a straight left and then take that half a step and pivot over to the right, and Vargas wouldn't know what to do. Jeez, that's interesting to know, man. 
so, so the smaller Vargas was actually taking it to I mean a Jew that was taking it to him or, or schooling him uh, you know in, in, in regards to uh, the uh, VHS fights man that's what I, I, I kind of like the VHS aspect of it of being, having to be selective and not knowing which fight to record but I, I used to be like like recognized I used to just record a whole bunch of fights like just just in the hopes that something interesting was going to happen i remember i recorded a what was his name butler versus richard grant that, that infamous fight oh, yeah. I remember, <laughs> with ten, for, punch. for 10 rounds i was like all right so it was just a boxing lesson for richard grant and then you know the telecast is about to finish they're already because you know it's espn they have to switch over to the next thing the sports center and yeah they're showing the credits blah 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 they go to shake the hands boom <laughs> fucking clocks him and i was like man i'm glad i recorded this i mean it was it was just one of those moments where you go i gotta keep the but the, the tape got lost somewhere are you I think talking I about butler versus the alien predator yeah richard was it richard butler what was the guy's name again he kind of looked the like butler. Butler. is it richard butler or richard grant it was richard, no, it was grant, richard yeah. grant and um uh, he, got, he got charged too remember he got fucking charged with anthony butler or something like that James so Butler. Another funny thing about that. Is yeah, it's it was not James really Butler Brothers. and Alien, yeah, James the Predator, or whatever. And then what happened was after he got charged for that, he wound up staying with uh, what's his name, the guy on fucking Max Kellerman, Max Kellerman's brother. Yeah, Sam Kellerman. Yeah, Max Kellerman's brother. He wound up killing him yeah, or something. Nonsense. Yeah, he murdered him. Yeah, that's right. He murdered Kellerman's brother. Wait, I mean, you know, the odd thing about that is that Kellerman went to bat for him uh, on the air saying, "Let give him his license back. This is how he makes a living. This is how he pays the electric bill. And then not long after that, he ends up killing Kellerman's brother. Yeah, there was something. I, yeah, I, I, I think Kellerman, it's fair to... Sorry, Kellerman got, 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 got hit with hammers. Yeah, he caught him cheating. All right, man. I yeah, because he didn't, he didn't pay his rent. And so when he was trying to pay, you know, he was like, you know, he was basically like, fuck you. And then, you know. This guy, you know, hacked yeah. it from there. They so said that he that's where brutally, we fucked up, man. They say he brutally murdered him and then set the whole fucking place on fire. See, that's <laughs> the thing. If I'm going to get murdered, I would like to be gently murdered as opposed to brutally murdered. I mean, that, that, that's the best way to go. But uh, yeah, man, the guy was, I think I'm it's... If I'm murdered, I want a woman on top of me and then I get a heart attack. She murdered me. Be uh, G Boogie, the best, best way to die, the best way to die is to be smothered by like a ton of strippers or something they just lie on top of you burn naked and you're, oh, you, you you suffocate slowly but <laughs> at, yeah, <buddy. laughs> at least you go out they might with talk a... to you before you die <laughs> but yeah R richard no what was his name richard grant versus uh james butler that's the fight that's it that's it and there's a there's a lot of channels now on youtube because it i remember when youtube first came out in 06 sometimes you, th th there weren't that many good fights or, or some guys would put the recent fights but not the old ones now you can find like i'm looking at this channel the guy who's got the richard but uh, richard grand james butler fight he's got like fights from pong salik one john cam the ever exciting sven Otke. and and you know what the other thing is there were a lot of fights in the 90s that i couldn't watch from europe like miko mitchell welski i don't remember how, i never what you mean yeah, the guy that Roy jones dodged for years yeah, that guy. Miguel Chesky was a fighter. I I always found him to be a mystery because I've heard about him, but never could watch his fights. Exactly. I got, and that, like, that, I got like twenty of his fights. How did you get them? Like, did you get them back in the day, or? Um, well, uh, some of them I got through friends, and some of them I got through stuff that I can't say over the air. Well, okay, hey, Jay, well, not... dude, can you um can you email uh, BDA a copy of your fight catalog because he might be able to use that in some of his videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to share that kind of stuff, but I'm sure that you guys can oh. uh, help me out with what that. I mean, you don't know how to share it. You write it on a piece of paper, you put it on the internet. What, what's the matter with you? No, no, I, I can give you the info. No, what's what the matter with you? talking about giving you the footage. What's the you matter with you? Oh, the yeah. links. oh, that's easy. If you got, if you got DVDs, you can basically uh, format it to a lower, uh, uh, to a lower um, thing and then send it to them through a file in an email. Oh, okay. That, that's easy. Everything you just said, I don't think he's got. He, he's just saying okay because he doesn't. He he doesn't want you to no, continue I, talking. I get the concept. I may not be able to do it right now. I'm not <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. He's a military guy. He should know. <laughs> no, but you know I what? Was a cook. Uh, you know what, Jay? It's uh, but, but if you had satellite back in the day, I understand you could yeah, get that, those. Yeah, that's how. I, that's how. I, that's how I got some of those feeds. But a friend of mine uh, lives in Williamson, Kentucky. Had this huge freaking satellite in his backyard, and we used to. Um, that's definitely outdated now, but he used to be able to pick up some feeds from Europe and 
And that's how we picked awesome. up some of those. Yeah. Man, that's and, like uh, New York, you know what was my satellite? I used to take a a a a, a metal hanger and then put uh <laughs> make it into a satellite dish and then put some aluminum hanging out the window, yep. tap into the cable feed. And you can see all the fights, pristine. I don't want to. I don't want to. I think there's a statute of limitations that's passed on that. But I used to have the box, you know, the one that for analog. Yeah, cable. me too. Yeah, and then yeah, that's how yeah. I got those fights, man. But yeah, it was a power box. What bitch? <laughs> What'd you say, D? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, I gotta get ready to take off, fellas. Uh, all right, man. You have a good night, day. Be safe. Yeah, Peace out, easy, man. Sir. Take it easy, man. You have a good night. Now, right. yeah, the, the the satellite, man, that was back in the day. You could get yourself some HBO on that one. I mean, that, it was, but that's what I always wanted. Like, Reckon, I said, it, there was there was something fun about those days, too, because you would hear about some guys in Europe or, you know, like uh, Harry Simon. What, that was the other the guy that beat Winky, right? Like, I would hear about him, and I would hear about him in the message boards and all that, and people would go, yeah, this is the guy that legitimately beat Winky, right? Now, I want to see the guy. Like, wh wh where can I watch him? And, no. You know? You know who legitimately beat uh, Winky Wright was who says a Vasquez knocked his ass down five times. Yeah, but three of those were like slips or something, right? Mm. He flipped over. He flipped over Vasquez's fist is what he slipped over. I saw the fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way of saying it. Yeah, but yeah, man, that that was back in like you know the last guy that I remember reading about that I couldn't really watch him was Mikkel Kessler. But by that time, YouTube was coming out and I was starting to get good with the torrents and all that. So now that's that it takes the fun out of it a little bit now because now you know, like you hear about a guy in Japan and you can watch him. You know, you hear about a guy in South Africa, like um, uh, Doug Bowie. I mean, if this was in the 90s, we wouldn't have known who the guy was until he found the United States. But now you go to YouTube and you see the fights there from Ghana and all that. So it's, 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 uh, it takes the Imagine fun out of it. Imagine what Galaxy no, would have been like over here from Thailand if we could have actually seen him. Who? Kaushai no, Galaxy? But it's kinda... Yeah. Yeah. The Japanese. Oh, yeah. He was uh, from Thailand. Oh, he was from Thailand. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, Vichu, he and his brother. No, I just, I just wanted to say, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of interesting now. It's like you look up a fight, you know, on, on Box Rec, and then you got to go to YouTube, you know, to look it up, you know, see how the fight turned out, you know? I kind of like that. Uh, I think the best fight that I ever seen um, that was from Thailand, and then I, you know, got it from the thing, was uh, when um, mm -hmm. Rick Rufus fought that Thailand guy, and then they, they tried to. Uh, Rick Rufus was kick uh, American kickboxing champ, so they tried to eliminate some of the um, knees, elbows, and stuff like that when he fought against the uh, the champion. I forgot what was his name, but you can find it on YouTube. Man, that dude was tearing Rick Rufus' legs up. And then all of a sudden, his brother was saying, oh, that's illegal. He shouldn't be kicking him and this and that. But now they train that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, you got to update. They got to do what they got to do, right? They got to go with the flow and get in there, man. Yeah. And everybody but I, what, do you, you, what, what are you sipping on, BDA? What are you sipping on? Water, man. <laughs> Cause I'm getting dried up over here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on, Pete. I'll tell are you, you there, man? Was a beast. Cause he. Oh, hold on, hold on. Pete, are you there? Can you hear me? Barely, man. Pete. Yo, Pete. Good, huh? Pete, are you All in right. a trunk somewhere? Did somebody catch you? <laughs> <laughs> Tap on if your you... phone. Hold on. <laughs> Did you hear right. that? <laughs> yeah, I did. This is always the issue. Kenny's gonna give me shit about his microphone. You can you come in here. All right, I boosted no, no, your I'm volume. Just joking, man. I, know, I, know, I, I just know. watched a movie with some guy in a trunk earlier today. It was fucking creepy. That's all right. What's up? Yeah, boy? Uh, by the way, I got your volume muted up all the way. I mean, muted. Uh, I got it up, boosted up all the way to the top. So, guys, if you have trouble in the Discord, if you're having trouble hearing him, you can do the same. And boost his volume up so you can hear him. Uh, yeah, we're just going down memory lane here, uh, talking about past fights and about how fun it is that now that we can watch uh, fights on YouTube, almost virtually every fighter. Like, there's the guy that's going to replace uh, Nonito Donaire, who's going to be fighting Emmanuel Rodriguez. As soon as they said, this is the guy replacing him, I went on YouTube and I looked him up and I go, okay, now I know <clears throat> what we're dealing with here and it's going to be a good fight. But uh, I also, you know, so many good fights that I can't remember the names of it. Like guys who just <clears throat> never really careers went, went, but they fight one night on ESPN and gave a battle. Like Gene Hatcher. 
Yeah, yeah, like guys who just Gene you know, Hatcher one versus night. Yabata Soko. <laughs> yeah. was, hey, by the way, isn't that like, a bloodbath? It was amazing. Uh, one of my, of my friends, friends Fred, sorry. Go ahead, Gonzalo. Go ahead. Friday, Friday night fights. Pedro Ortega, El Guerrero Ortega. He was uh, for Tijuana. I can't find this fight. You know, Friday night fights. It was like fight of the year. I can't find this fight. I can't find this fight on YouTube. That's true. There's certain it's fights. There's certain fights that you can't fight. Like I know you guys, Gonzalo and Jerry, were talking about Bojado the other day. His his first loss against um, Rubio. I forget the guy's first name. I'm trying Marco to look Antonio for the Rubio. Marco Antonio. I'm trying to look for the rematch. I can't find. I remember Bojado box beautifully in that fight. And I, I never I never recorded it. So if anybody out there listening, if you have that fight, post it on YouTube or Daily Motion as soon as possible, man. Because I I need to see that fight again. But yeah, Gonzalo, there's some fights you, you can't find now. One of the underrated fights that I rewatch constantly is um, uh, Antoine Eccles versus Charles. <coughs> that oh fight, my God, man. That one was awesome. Bad yeah, stuff. that fight. Was a great fight. Well, Too didn't HBO punches. lose half their fights? They, they didn't catalog them, or didn't somebody? I remember hearing that you know because HBO started in 1976 and they ended up losing half their catalog. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, that sucks, man. That's There's probably got to be a guy there. Like the collected people, the collective of people that have recorded fights throughout the years. They, they, somebody has to have those those missing fights from that catalog. But Jimmy, you must remember back in the day when if you missed a fight, like before cell phones and all that. Let's say you're at a wedding or something, you have to be there. Yeah, There's you a fight it, you going. You missed it. You would, that was it. You had to throw a fucking VHS if you you know had a black box in your house. You threw a VHS and you you hope you know how to use that right. And then you recorded it. <laughs> but yeah, I never then, like I've, unless it was a wedding, I wouldn't have missed it. If it was a fight, I wanted to see, especially back then. Once I figured out how to set a timer on a VCR, I never missed a fight. <laughs> right, exactly. No, exactly. I, dude, I had crazy. I had hundreds and hundreds of hours of fights that I don't know what happened to those tapes. A lot of them sucks. Well, I had three sisters that like soap operas, so every once in a while I'd come home and go watch the fight, and Days of Our Lives would be where the fight oh, recorded over. Oh, uh, that was the worst. The, my Oh, well, you know, my dad was an FBI agent. He used to um, used to have to put a gun on the table going, if you even come close to one of my daughters again because it taped over a fight. I'm like, Dad, you, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, it was Camacho. Come on. Yeah, the father field not, agent? Yeah, he was a field agent. No, no shit. He was a G man. Yeah. When my neighbor, man. when my neighbor Hector Velasquez fought Manny Pacquiao in 2005, I think uh, Miguel Cotto fought Ricardo Torres. I think it was the same card because I got the I got the VHS sent to me to Iraq, and actually the the priest the, he delivered it to me. I forgot what they're called. Um, but he gave it to me, and I was watching it at his office. Me and the priest, we were watching <laughs> it over there in Iraq. And VHS. Did he try to fight you? Chaplain. Did he try to fuck you? Or? The chaplain. The chaplain. Right. <laughs> the chaplain. He used to talk to, to me about Mar uh, Margarito all the time. Fucking chaplain in the army, fucking city in the child line talking boxing with me. But yeah, yeah, uh, Gonzalo, that fight, the, the 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 Velasquez fight, I think it was on the undercut of Raheem Morales when Morales lost. The That's Torres... Okay. Co yeah, the Torres Cordo fight, that was on Klitschko, Peter, Mother Samuel Peter. Did you ask? Did you ask? Am I wrong? Did you ask him? Did he try to fuck you? <laughs> did I just? <laughs> I, 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 that just kind of spilled over after. <laughs> yeah, that one like right by. I'm like, did that just go unpicked up? <laughs> you need to stop smoking the ganja, Jimmy. I ignored it on purpose. Was <laughs> I got those two fights in now and one VHS must have been shortly thereafter. Those two fights. Oh, that's the box. thing. Gonzalo, you just reminded me. I used to buy the the big ass tapes. Well, not the big ass, but they were thicker. They had that the thicker roll of tape on, and so they're like you had the five, six hour tapes. I used to buy the ten hour tapes because I could cram as many uh, as many fights in there. That was the worst. When you're recording a fight and it's midway through, and all of a sudden you hear that the thing rewinding automatically because you hit the button. It's like ah, oh, yeah, you ran out of room. Yeah, because you ran out of yeah. a fucking. Tape, the only man. thing is, the longer the tape, like the more fucking t the quality wasn't as good. It was like those ten hour tapes. Yeah, depends on what speed you have it recording off of. I was never good on that. I would so, record the the big ones, the f big fights. I would recording them in high. What was it called? The uh, it was S high definition. Yeah, but there was you had name. you had high definition. You had SPC, and you had uh, LP. LP. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. Yep. 
Holy shit. I'm fucking memory. EP, on you, EP was a terrible. SP was good and LP was like right in between. Or is that yeah, the yeah. stages that I had? SP was the bomb, man. When you watch that and back in the SP, and you go, "Whoa, look at this!" There was a guy that was there was a guy on YouTube, but he just took him off recently. But I was able to uh, <clears throat> procure them in another manner. But uh, this guy was posting YouTube fights. I mean, boxing fights on YouTube, and he was posting them in sixty frames per second, high quality. So it was pretty good because some of the guys that post upload these fights, I don't think they know what they're doing. Man, the quality is compressed. It sucks. It's skipping frames. Uh, G Boogie, you seem to know a lot about this. You you should give him a, a crash course on how to upload fights because some of the fights that I'm seeing here they're 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 horrible and they're the only ones available on YouTube. So like it's because uh, they need a video editing um, uh, program. So if you got a video editing program in your in your thing, you can go into your settings and manipulate the the quality of the the whatever VHS, CD, whatever you, you trying to implement to tape. And then you make a different format and then that's when you upload it. But try to um, normal some of the high definition uh, CDs, they 4.7 gigs. So what you want to do is just um, l a lower resolution, but it still will retain the, the higher definition in it right but yeah yeah yeah. Play with it. yeah i know man, but they, 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 they could just get a video a converter too they don't need necessarily have to have the the editor to do that and by the way saint brit sports you know, in the chat says mr bda you have to upload like that sometimes to get past the copyright ah that that would that would explain yeah. it too you know the yeah. worst uploads are the ones that like they, they feel like the the like the picture was like on a swivel so it kind of feels like you're in a hangover or some shit like that i oh, think they were filming the tv it's because they have like to. Uh, it's because I think the tape is sh shaking, so they have to stabilize it, and that's what happens. It seems like it's moving it's in order to preserve the the best the best tapes that I used to have. Uh, they gone is when I used to tape them like the seventies, the early seventies fight and stuff like that. I had a couple of. I had a lot of them, and I used to program the the VHS to tape it and stuff, and. Uh, Man, I wish I had it. It was like uh, the Wild World of Sports or something like that. ABC. Yeah, ABC's World. Whatever yeah. channel. Yeah, when fucking Howard Cosell. This was Howard Cosell. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In the 70s, you were in the 70s. You, you had a VHS. Uh, yeah. You had a yeah, they came out in 74. I think they were beta, beta, and yeah, 74, 75. Yeah, they, they, came beta. Out. they were, they were expensive. Beta. They were fucking was... huge and expensive, but. Yeah, my, my, well, like I said, my dad back in the days was making big money. He was making like 70, uh, no, excuse me, 90,000 a year. He was a, a superintendent for a big projects in New York. No yeah. kidding, man. So he got those big bucks on, uh, to spend on the VCR. Yeah, that was going to say, cause a VCR back in the day, uh, well, not a VCR. Yeah, plus, but. He had, plus he had his like class seven boiler license. So. If you had a class, well, you know class seven boy brothers in in New York, you making big money on the side. Well, my cousin had a VCR back in the seventies, way before most people. He had his father, my dude. He used to set and record. It was only fucking twelve NHL teams back then, but he used to have. Um, he used to record all the fights. He ended up selling it for thousands of dollars to uh, NHL. Well, then another hockey dot com. They gave him thousands for his library. He had all kinds of fucking bench clearing brawls that they just didn't have. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah, there was a YouTube channel that I used to follow. It was called Hockey Fights. Yeah, dude. If you get some good old ones, they'll pay you good money for those because they're really. They are, every now and then they advertise. You know, we we pay for old fights. No they'll kidding. They'll run them through a machine to clean them up. That's interesting, man. That's interesting, Jesus. I mean, that's. Yeah, sometimes you, you have people with old tapes and they go, what am I going to do with this? Don't, don't throw them out, man. Some of those things got gold. Exactly. I, I used to remember the Tuesday night fights. They, there used to be the Tuesday night fights and, and they used to do the compilation of uh, best stuff. And here yeah. in Canada, here in Canada, they would play them because there's the, 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 the uh, English ESP, equivalent to ESPN 
and then there's the French equivalent. And the guys in French, it was always this old guy, these two old guys, they would rewatch the, the best of Tuesday Night Fights and they would dub them over with their commentary. And these guys were always laughing. <laughs> like, guys would get knocked out and these guys were just laughing at them. <laughs> and what they would do with the Tuesday Night Fights, the best of, is in between the fights, they would show a, like a, a ring card girl, but in, in the studio. Like, you know, like just real nice. quick to, to, to transition. And these guys were always giving them names. Like, all right, there you got Clarissa. She's studying uh, in psychology. But like they would make up these backstories for the, for the record girls. Those were the best, man. They, they should do something. They should do something like that. Like MSTK 3000 theater, but with boxing fights. But then again, you can't do it mostly most of the time because of the, of the copyright. But if somebody can do that on YouTube, did, man. They, go ahead, Gonzalo. Did you grow up, BDA, also watching the, the Mexican cards on Saturday with... Uh, El doctor, the doctor, Alfonso Morales. I remember back some of them, the yeah. I remember some of them back <laughs> in Mexico. Yeah, some of these guys, they used to fight with mullets. Some of these Mexican fighters. They, they, they had those weird Long Island haircuts and, and it was it was just fun. Like, Manomero Pais had those those uh, weird-ass haircuts when he was... Yeah, had the hair shaved in the side, right? <laughs> hey! Yeah, remember that's the, <laughs> the Great Western Forum on Monday nights? Listen, Jimmy. What the fuck is that? Yeah, Jimmy, what the fuck, man? Are you okay, man? Oh, it was Jimmy? Oh. Yeah, that was Jimmy. I was chewing something up. Hmm. Yeah, I Jimmy think he's has like a dog. Right. I, know, I, I, I know what he's. I know what he's going through. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I recognize. Don't you have like a little chew, like a little wimp, Paris Hilton type dog or something? No, man. No, man. I had. I, I had to give. Uh, I had to give away my rock wallet, man. Oh, it hurt me. Yeah, sorry man. to hear that, man. I had a little. I had a little dog. Not not that small. It was a. Uh, 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 a jitsu, you know what a jitsu is? A shih tzu, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. that one passed away two years ago, but my my Rockwaller, I had to I had to give him away because I couldn't take him with me because you know I moved. Yeah, yeah, I get you, I get yeah. you. Yeah, Gonzalo had three dogs, but uh, the neighbors ate one of them. Now, uh, now he's only got two. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, you... Wow, why did I no, say Chinese? Yeah, well, what did I say? I didn't say anything wrong. What did I say? <laughs> yeah, what did I do? <laughs> By the way, King Butcher in the chat room says uh, Jimmy's bad trip. And yeah, I think he he smoked too much ganja and he's seeing an imaginary dog in his li living room. Like, like, the, the spiders, <laughs> there's spiders all over the place. Like, there's no spiders, Jimmy. Take it easy. <laughs> give, me, uh, give me some of that. Give me some of that. <laughs> BDA, do you remember I told you about uh, one month ago I ran over a dog, I killed him, and then the neighbors ate him. They picked <sighs> him up and they took him. Yeah. But you know, I did, I did, <sighs> did a great thing last week. A car, a car ran over a dog to my old house. I went to pick up the last of my things, and he was falling into the canal. And I caught him right before he fell into the pit. And I rescued his life. And I, I took him over to my uh, neighbors, my wife' relative, that's building my house. Uh -huh. And we're, we brought him back to life. And his name is Bogar. He's a little dog. I saved his life. <laughs> Whoa, Gonzalo's a hero, man. Gonzalo, you're, Gonzalo, you're my hero. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, was, was I was I unmuted during all that? No, you <laughs> no, were not. <laughs> No, you were we not. Heard you, we heard you ah, telling geez. your dog, hey, sit down. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I have I have two cats, dude. One's the sweetest little fucking thing, doesn't fuck with anybody. She's sleeping. This other one, the fucking twat just attacked her. And the other cat comes walking up and watching her, and she just wow and just fucking suck her teeth into the kitten. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm chasing around the house, fucking throwing sneakers at her. <laughs> Give a little bit. Dude, every now and then she just does that out of nowhere. She just comes over. The cat was sleeping. Just literally attacked her, <laughs> like she owed her money. It was fucking crazy. Uh, I'm trying to. Just, I'm I, trying to find a cat sound effect. All I can find is like a somebody smoking wow. weed from a bar. Well, it sounds like women fucking sometimes screeching. Wow! I mean, they go. It's just women fucking female cats, female dog. Well, cats and female cats. This can be so nasty. Yeah, those, those, anyway, those, those, those little right. pussies could be out of control sometimes. No. Yeah. Dude, I, I, dude, I got dogs, and I've had dogs my whole life. I just, because my girl, and I'm seeing now, got me into cats. I love her and shit, my little kid, but I never had them. I didn't realize. what They could be moody little fucks, boy. They're nasty. Yeah, they're they're about that. I didn't mean, I thought I was on mute. I didn't mean that, sorry. Hey, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy. they can throw hands, hey, too. Jimmy. They, they can throw hands. Have you seen them? Have you seen them attack a little ball of yarn? They can throw oh, a good dude, yeah. Hands. Well, do you see that thing on video? Yeah, they make great boxes, um, yeah. Attack the pit bull? Did you see that Pat, the pit bull comes over and grabs the little kid and starts shaking him in the driveway? Oh, fucking yeah. literally got the little kid in the mouth, and then the cat comes running out of nowhere. Wow! Fucking attacks the dog. Oh, yeah. No, they're a lot smarter though, than I thought. 
But to be fair, that kid was misbehaving. So I think the dog was trying to teach him a lesson and the cat interfered. But uh, look, listen. <laughs> That's my take on it. Listen. You sick fuck. They also land on their legs. Have you ever tried throwing a cat in the air? Did he just land on their <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know they land on their legs, but like, why, why are you throwing them up in the air? <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Like, you talk, like yeah, you throw them over on the cat. Right. Yeah, but yeah. not with this one. This fucking, I've watched her fall off three feet and she lands on her side, dude. Swear to God. What? That's a I weird cat. Like, yeah, no, I do. No, I've watched her fall three or four feet. Never lands on her feet. That's why I think that'll beat you up because maybe she's retarded. Jimmy, my sister <laughs> used to have a Siamese cat. That mother mother sucker was crazy, man. You could be <laughs> sitting down, you you're not you having a conversation. Next thing you know, uh you feel something scratch you in your hand. And you're like, what the fuck? You turn around, you what can't about see his twin jib boogie? Okay. Was her, was huh? his twin crazy too? Was his twin crazy too? You said he was a Siamese, no? Yeah, man, that thing was psycho, <laughs> man. Yo, that cat was retarded. Siamese, he Siamese will, cats have a reputation of that. They're very you. territorial. He will attack you, just you not paying attention, and you don't see him. Next thing you know. He's up on you, scratching you. Pop, pop. He, he'll double well, because you. Were sitting pop, pop. And maybe you were sitting next to one of them. Because, again, they're very territorial, I guess. And you sit somewhere they want to sit or you're, you're freaking about they'll whack on. Yeah. I hate they guys. I remember you got to communicate with them so well, you know? Or else they just I'll fuck you over. I'll put my foot right dude, in I, his ass. <laughs> I hate I cats, man. Cats, dude. I see <laughs> oh, 10 pound cats, 12 pound cats, fucking jack big dogs up. They get they get on their backs, start kicking with their back legs and the back feet. They're like razor blades. But you know what that means, Jimmy? That's just indicative of how backwards uh, uh, a nation like the United States is. Because just like the men are being feminized and the, and the women being masculinized, that's an in indication that when the, the the cats start beating up the dogs, that means there's something wrong. Because in Mexico, I never saw a, a cat beating up a dog. I mean, it was always the dogs chasing the cat. Just like in the 1950s in the United States, the that's the way it used to be. Now it's all twisted and backwards. It's disgusting if you ask me. The, girls, the, the, the girlfriends beat up their boyfriends now. That's right. Go yeah. ahead, Boogie Boogie. I got a warlock. A warlock do Doberman. He's like, uh, oh, those I'll say motherfuckers you, will kill you. I'm five foot, <laughs> those I'm are great dogs. I'm five foot eight and a half. And if he stands on all four of his paws, his top of his head is right under my chest. The fuck? He's trying to fuck you or something? What? Yeah, so, oh, uh, wow. so he's talking about when he's up on his back paws, like when he puts his paws on his chest. Right, you got like it. Like when he stands it. face to face. Is that what he's talking about? No, if he's standing on his paws, all four of his legs, and his he's standing right next to me, his head is right under my chest. That's how tall Jesus, he is. That's a big dog. Because that's a tall he, dog for a dog. Because he's mixed, uh, the, the warlock breed is mixed with a. Um, is mixed with a Great Dane. That was the only Yugoslavian breed that they mixed with a, a Great Dane. The first AKC champion was uh, 1938 RC. So anyway, the cat, my son got this fucking, uh, I don't know what they call those cats. It's like an outdoor Man cat. Man cat. Man cat. cat. But he's like, he's like orange and shit. And he's... Yeah, they're the he's biggest, big. not they, the Bancoons? Yeah, so I don't know what kind what they call them. I don't like cats. I like dogs. There so he came, he came up to my dog. My dog just looked at him. He tried to paw. My dog got down on the floor. He paw. The cat was slap boxing him. Like, I mean, giving him check hooks, right hand, <laughs> all that stuff. Check and my dog, is just, my dog is just looking at him like, okay, now it's my turn. He went slapped him with his paw. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what the big dog's supposed to. That's what the big like dog's supposed. Hey, listen, G Boogie. Hey. That's what the big dog's yeah. supposed to do. Just like sometimes I gotta slap a couple of you guys here, let you know who the alpha is. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? It's a, that's just the way it is. Well, it's the total opposite in the fucking in the animal kingdom because you go out there, the lions, the wild dogs are fucking afraid of the lions. The lions are big big dog in the fucking jungle. Yeah, I saw a video on the YouTube where one guy he's got a, like a bull terrier. And he thinks it's funny because he's he's touting the the cat like a small a, a big cat a feline, but then the fucking feline he stares into the dog and they're like, oh, he ate my dog. Well, what did you expect? 
That's right. Hey, did you guys ever see a hippopotamus break break a fucking lion's neck? I believe yeah, I have. Dude, that shit is insane. But hippopotamus has one on, of the strongest hippo, bites. Man. Yeah, that's like canoes in half. That, that thing Pablo Escobar took them to Colombia and they reproduced out of control. Yes, you know, those fucking waters. Dude, there's still in the waters in South Africa, in South America. There's still hippos down there. They haven't no captured shit. them all yet. Really? I didn't know that, Swear man. God. Are, are they as you big? You should be a serious? You didn't know that? No, I didn't know. Are they as big as they are in Africa? Or? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, what happened was he, he brought in six of them when he opened up his uh, La Casienda, whatever, uh, zoo. But when it all fell apart, there was nobody there to take care of it. The government didn't have the money for it. So what happened, the hippos actually broke out. And it was crazy because they used, I'll tell you right now, a lot of people don't realize some of the best cowboys in the world are the fucking um, down South America. Like the right. Ricardos, whatever they call them. Those motherfuckers right, right. have horses. So what they did is they would charge the fucking hippo on the horseback to get it up out of the water to charge him. And you all see these Ricardos, they're like sliding. The horses are sliding like mm -hmm. with their feet. And they, just to get them to chase them, that's how they get them out of the water, kill some of them. But there's still three bull males loose in the waters in the fucking down in the Amazon. Damn, if they ever stop breeding, they're fucked, man. They'll kill a yeah, lot that, of villages. That's, they're uh, nasty, what's the name? temperamented uh, animals. Uh, Pablo Escobar's. Yeah, that's hippos, what Jimmy yeah. said. Yeah, and it's interesting because I, I remember reading that uh, hippos actually kill more people than lions do back in, in Africa. Everybody's always talking about, oh, what are lions? But they say that the, kill, the hippos. Kill, no, no. Yeah, it kills more Africans. Uh, mammal. It's the number one killing mammal in Africa. Second is that what is they the call? Uh, yeah. That's why they call hippos over there. They call them cops because they're always killing a shitload of black people over there, man. And so anyway, listen. The point yeah. is this: the hippos are fuck. Man, I didn't know there were hippos in yeah. Colombia, man. My God, yep, yeah. in, the, in the fucking in the waterways. Them, I don't know if they caught them all, but I'll tell you, that's the dangerous thing because that's perfect. That's their environment. If they have no natural predators, and if they're no. able to breed. Jimmy, they, they they proliferated. They became a lot. I think they got out of control. They haven't captured them all. They're reproducing, wow. man. Jimmy, yeah, of course. Jimmy, from a you gotta think Brazil. Sorry, you gotta think Brazil is uh, Colombia. All oh, that's like forest, man. It's yeah, areas that's that the thing, like right? They're vegetarians, dude. Think about all the water plants. Damn that! Yeah, oh, that's the water lilies. That's like that's so. That's the reason yeah, why you don't see you don't see that in Africa because the hippos eat it all. Jimmy, the if you're gonna kill a have hippo, high testosterone and they very territorial. Jimmy, if you're, gonna exactly. kill, if you're gonna kill a hippo, what? BDA, what caliber are you? If you're gonna kill a hippo, what caliber are you gonna use on that? Black, fifty black caliber. You're gonna use a fifty caliber or a fucking wind bag four ten. No, seriously, uh, or if babe, for killing a hippo, what would you recommend? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, my, no, she, my <laughs> girl <laughs> makes more bullets. What would you? Oh, she said yeah, a, for a wind bag like a four ten. You want you want something with stopping power because those fucking how things. A, how about a shotgun? Thirty out six. No, you would have, no, you would have to use a specialized slug. A, what, is a regular it cartridge so, wouldn't stop it. The is it because too so, thick. A shotgun yeah, okay. will piss him yeah, off. They, they, <laughs> yeah, because they're pellets. They're pellets. They spread out. They don't actually penetrate that. Like trying deeply. to shoot a tank with exactly. A yeah, yeah, that's a the special. There's like 50 caliber cartridge uh, shotguns now that they make so solid slugs, but I don't know if that would penetrate. So you'd want, you would have to use like a big fucking caliber, you know, big bore weapon without a doubt. Yeah. I know when yeah. those guys hunt elephant, hunt buffalo, they carry big bore weapons, 50 cals. The lions could kill the, the, the baby hip, the baby hippos, they could, but they can't kill the full grown one. That's a little harder. They have to catch them out of the water, obviously. Usually when they come out at night. That's, when, that's what makes them so dangerous. The reason why they kill humans, they don't eat meat. They don't attack you for that. What it is, they're kind of dumb. They have very bad eyesight. And when they're coming down to a path, and what happens when a human steps in between them and their water, that's the, that's the thing. They panic. And they run by you. They either stomp you to death, or they just bite you once and throw you out of the way. And unfortunately, those yeah, tusks usually puncture they, something vital organs, and they kill you. A male bull canine of a hippopotamus is close to nine inches long. Jeez. Crazy. Hey, you know what? And, and every time they open the every time they open close their mouth, they rub against each other and they literally sh they make so the self sharpening. So they like they they puncture boats. That yeah, crazy. That's what they. Yeah, they're 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 little bastards or big bastards. And uh, Chris Gonzalez, Chris Gonzalez, hold on, real quick. Chris Gonzalez in the chat room says, 
To kill a hippo, Errol Spence would use a Ferrari. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, man. Get Errol Spence down there to <laughs> just drive around and then crush a bunch of hippos. But yeah, I mean, that's why I wanted to ask you, Jimmy, because yeah, when you said that that the skin's too thick for the hippos, like that makes sense, man, because it's not just the, the the mass they have; it's that gosh darn skin yeah, of them. Yeah, their hides is as almost as thick as an elephant. Jeez, man, yeah, they, 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 found a, they found a male the elephant. Well, I was going to say, they found a male elephant the other day. They actually did it on, uh, they worked on him because I watched this YouTube live thing and uh, they found him. He had 17 bullet wounds in him and like 10 of them were festering. And I'm like, that poor thing's walking around suffering. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, it's terrible. Because they shoot them with guns that aren't meant to take down elephants. Right. So what ends up happening, these poor things suffer. They had well, wounds in his neck and his head. Maybe they're not suffering. They're tough animals. Maybe Maybe they actually like it. They go, yeah, all right, shoot me some more. Yeah, well, I can take it. <laughs> well, they, I know they cleaned out the wounds, and even when the elephant came through, through wasn't even aggressive, so it must have felt better right away. And you should see the oh, stuff that's coming out of these wounds. Yeah, they Shot right in the head. The most, dangerous, the most dangerous elephant is when it's in rut season. It musk. Yeah, they call it musk. You mm -hmm. see it. It's all dripping down the side yeah. of the temples. It, it, it drips it just from the side of the off the hook. Temple. Hey guys, in the Discord, I'm sharing a video of these guys hunting hippos. Look at the size. The guns don't look that big, though, actually. But evidently, they're you. Well, they're short barrels. If you're gonna hunt a hippo, you want a short barrel. You want you don't want a long rifle because they'll get caught up in like trees and whatnot. So you usually want a short barreled, usually probably double barreled, 50 caliber in case the first one don't drop it. Yeah. See, ideally, if you're gonna hunt a, if you're gonna hunt a uh, hippo as a hunter, you want it to charge you. You want to you want to hunt you want a charge kill. That's like kind of the manly way to do like it. Like what they use with lions, they use the the uh, I forgot what's that. It's like a shotgun. There's a double barrel. They, you know, the old um, hunters used to use octagon shape, octagon shape barrels. They, yep. yep. Yeah, it's like an elephant it, gun. It, they call it. Yeah, a lot of those guns were built in like 1890. They're still very sought after. The the, the German and Czechoslovakian made uh, elephant guns. And they they were unbelievable. That it still worked to this day if you can get them. And they're so you know, but you have to. The bullets are expensive because you have to have them custom made. Gentlemen, yep. this is very educational. It's not that I'm not enjoying it, but it's kind of. I've had a long week. I enjoyed this show. I've enjoyed listening to you guys. I'll catch the rest of this information when it, when uh, BDA posts it. But I got to head out for the night. Thank you for having you have me. A great on. evening, brother. You guys His take wife. care. Yeah, well, take care, Dre. We'll talk. Uh, hey, when's uh? Are we gonna do one after the uh, one on Sunday after the fight? Or we're gonna do it on Monday. Uh, jeez, I, I I'm not sure, man. I'm I, I don't know. It depends, Bucho too. If when he gets uh, around to it, maybe he can do a show on Saturday. I don't know, but uh, we'll, we'll try to do something as soon as possible, man, for sure. So thank you for being on, Jay. Now, uh, thank you for having me as always. Take care, take care. No problem, man. You know what's take going care, on, right? <laughs> you know what's going, what's going on, right, guys? Later, Jay. His wife is circling his VHS tapes, and uh, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to lose him. Okay, you, you you brought this. I'm going to go ahead and say this real quick. All right, just before I go. Yeah. In regards to my wife, it's not and it's not that you're talking shit. I just want you to know exactly how lucky I am when it comes to my wife in boxing. Um, and then I'll jet out after this. Um, in two was it 2000 when uh or 2001 when Vargas and uh, Trinidad were going to fight. I was uh, in the Coast Guard yeah. on my ship. We pulled into Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and. Guantanamo Bay did uh, did not put the fight on for the guys uh, on pay per view oh. for morale. So I had yeah. to stay up till three o'clock in the morning on ESPN to find out who won. My wife uh, goes back home. She gets HBO, doesn't tell me about it, records the fight, wraps it up, gives it to me VHS for Christmas. Oh well, look at yeah, that. That sounds like a, sounds like a heck a of a woman, woman, man. When I told you guys that I that I married up, I'm, I'm not lying. I, I got lucky on this. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look. Any, anytime, anytime no, your girlfriend, her. anytime your girlfriend has HBO, that means she, she must be able to afford it. So that's good, man. That's that. That is marrying up for sure. I don't sure. know how long she kept it. She just got it long enough to, to tape that fight for me. Well, there you go, man. All right, listen, Jay. Thank you for being on, man. Take Thanks it easy. Me, and you know what? Actually, I think it's about, yes, J J Gazello, Go ahead. Are you gonna say something to Jed before he skips? Yeah, we're gonna. Skip we're gonna go, he was just gonna. Yeah, BDA was just gonna shut the show down. I could. I heard him. Yeah. Yeah, he was I was gonna. gonna I have to jet too, man. I have to jet too. But go ahead, Gonzalo. Let's yes, go, man. I'm, I'm talking he, about. He says, uh, "Team Bucho said that all this hippo talk reminded him of Andy Dries. I sent oh, you a video of Andy Dries' oh, brother. I, I'm out. I sent you a video. I sent you a video <sighs> of his brother. He's like 400 pounds, sitting in the back. Can you put that up real quick? <laughs> but if you don't want, that's okay. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, for the record, I just want to say too, I don't, I'm not a hunter. Like I don't, I target shoot. I love shooting. I just don't like shooting animals just because I'm not Shut forced up. to. If, if I had to shoot a deer to, I don't eat, hunters to survive, either. I would, but I'm just not a hunter. I can't, I'd rather shoot it with a camera. That's just me. But anyway. Wait, so if you have to eat, <laughs> so if you have to eat and you're in the wilderness, you're not going to sh shoot an animal? I'd blow a fucking, I'd shoot a fucking, I'd, I'd, I'd shoot your poodle. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no but I would. I would shoot. I can actually dress an animal. I know how to dress animals. I can dress oh, yeah. a deer for you. I'm very good at it. But I, I just not. I'm not a hunter. I don't like shooting animals. Hey, to each his own, man. I, I don't, don't judge. Animal, All right, so I'm I'm putting up but the. No, if I had to, I would. Believe me. All right. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm sharing with you on the Discord. This is a video <laughs> that Gonzalo sent me of uh, uh, Andy Luis's brother. Hold on a second. There's the woman with the big tits. Is talking. Okay. This is. Hey, he kind of looks like Luis too, facially. And pretty quick hands too, man. But I got to tell you, it's easy to look uh, fast when you got the punching bag in front of you. If there's a guy moving around him, I... But it's still pretty impressive. I mean, look at this. Guy knows what he's doing in there. Oh, BDA, before I go, though, definitely, though, go check out this <laughs> bunch of videos on that. They made um, their documentaries on Escobar's hippos. It's mm -hmm. some really good dog. You should check it out. It's fascinating. I'll I'll check it out, man. Yeah, because I just I used to watch those uh, uh, hunting videos of people, you know, getting rid of uh, coyotes and all that with night vision scopes. That was pretty cool, man. So I'm I'm gonna definitely gonna check out some hippo hunt, hunting there. Anyway, listen, fellas, thank you for joining us, man. The guys in the in the in the stream yard virtuals, no jib boogie. You're good folks. I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna try <laughs> to do this. I'm gonna try to do he this. He looks like a hippo. Uh, he looks like a hippo, right? BDH. Who? Virtuoso? Oh, oh, I think Luis's brother, yeah. Like hippo. Welcome. <laughs> King Hippo. Oh, no, no, no. I, Pete's trying to say something. I can barely hear him. Hear him. Go ahead, Pete. Thanks for having me, buddy. No Appreciate problem, man. Absolutely. And, it, and I'm going to try to do this every Friday where we open up the phone lines in the stream yard and just let everybody in. But I do have to... Uh, Keep, uh, we're gonna have to keep the, the, the uh, what's it called Discord at a minimum. Otherwise, uh, we're not gonna never gonna get to the people on the phone lines in the stream. Anyway, fellas, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna get, hit the the bed now. It's been a pleasure. Some... God bless. All right, take it easy, fellas, on the stream yard. Take it easy, everybody in the chat room as well. Thank you for joining us. Everybody who called in, everybody in the stream yard. I want to give a shout out to the people in the from the uh, Discord as well. Talking Pete, Recognize, Precise, Jimmy, Gonzalo, D, and J, aka Boxing Chief. Thanks to everybody who donated via the Super Chat as well. I'm talking about One Foot Out the Door, Wesley M, Tony Boswell, Chris K, Julio Choa, and Mr. E. Thank you, fellas. Really, you 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 allow us to keep the, the boxing uh, block talk radio on on online so we can take calls. And of course, Spreaker to be able to put the episodes online. Don't forget, they're on... Uh, spotify as well and itunes so check that out and uh before we go of course give a, sh give a shout out to everybody that joined us everybody that listened in i'm talking about who's in here hold on kit top skull what did i say nella all right kit top skull get a little bit of info mr e ssb 28 get a little bit of info uh, precise cinder as well claudio monreal andres fernandez slugger sam shout out to slugger sam uh, Uncle Burnt Apostrophe, Mr. Wawa, St. Bridge Sports, Mr. Enoch. Who else is here? Mr. Wawa, yeah, Grievous, Chris Gonzalez, St. Bridge Sports. Did I ever mention him? Uh, people talking about Hip Hop DJ N1, T Tone Toledo. Shout out to T Tone. Gonzalo was there as well. King Bucci, of course, Ungar, and many more. Guys, thank you. Steven Schneider, guys, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Catch you in the next one. Take it easy. Have a good night.